thousands and thousands of hours of hard work lead to this moment. The Mutineers will go in with a small lead. The Mutineers will have the advantage. Now they're on your point. Look how close it is, Joe! A millimeter! What a round! What a round! The Florida Mutineers going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas in just a short moment. It's going to be a Ramaza hard point as we rock and roll into this one. Normally at this point, we'd be like, guys, you know the fist bumps. You know what that means. It means the game's ready to go. But a lot of these players are obviously practicing social distancing and they shouldn't be bloody touching each other. So there we go. Into the map we now roll. Phil, it's time. Finally. Whoa. <laughs> Let's get a show on the road, Miles. Let's do it, brother. I'm ready to party. Well, we're jumping into uh, Ramaza, like you said. We are going to be jumping on board with Blast from the Gorillas. Of course, new addition to the squad. We saw a little bit of him as he takes his position up top. A fan favorite for some of the uh, assault rifles to get that long range of sight. Quick Semtex out, and we'll see who gets those first bullets, who gets the all-important first points on the hill. No one as of yet, as everyone seems to be dropping like flies, but Ferro in and amongst the action now as he slips, slides, and finds himself a spa before he falls to Vivid. Yeah, not too bad start, eh? The Florida Mutineers getting up on top. I mean, we are going to be seeing a bit of a counter-attack now from the Gorillas. Not an easy hard point to get to. I mean, let's just throw that one out there straight away. This is not an easy hard point to access. So again, watching those lines of you know, travel up towards that bridge position. There's a ladder on the outside of that construction catwalk that you can actually take if you're really are feeling brave or if you have the support of your boys to get up there. But we are seeing Frosty. Oh, his spidey sense is tingling, man. He, I mean, we can see the x-ray. He can't. Maybe dropped in just a moment here. But great movement now from Frosty. I know able to get the second as Aqua now puts that MP5 to good work. But the Mutineers keeping a very clean sheet right now, not letting the Gorillas onto that point whatsoever. And yesterday when we saw uh, the Mutineers play, uh, I think we cast over them versus Toronto. It was this map, map one as well. So um, I don't have it to hand. I'm sure we can get the stats of who uh, Pigs and Bands came from. But this looks like a, maybe a favorable one for the Mutineers uh, to come out on. But 48 points out of the first hard point. They are going to lose that rotation, but I think they'll be okay with that after starting so strong. Now Frosty taking his tag onto Aqua and now pushing through the front. It's going to be Spark waiting for him, but he's only got 30 bullets in the chamber. He's going to have to reload. He's going to pay the price as we do see the players of the Mutineers flooding on through. But for now, it will remain in the hands of Gorillas. They've held this one quite well, actually. Blast is up next. Lane prone. Then the uh, M4 is going to do great wonders when the players coming round the corner. Even the ones at the top of the staircase, but good timing here on the push. Havoc's not able to do too much there as he finds himself too. Got Spartan Blast on the push there into the half point. Going for the next rotation though, and it's on the board to Vivid. As he makes his way in from behind, finds his first, his fifth in a row so far in this map. Do we can to catch any more out of this one. Mork's on the transition, cut down as well. Now, all this is good and well. Skies, however, on your screen right there, has managed to grit into the very, very furthest reaches of the map. Trying to get his teammates in a favorable position. If they start dropping around him, they should be appearing close by and not... Yeah, there we go. They have started to spawn closer to the hard point. So now on the flip towards Barbershop, favorable position in for the Mutineers. But again, Phil, it's a double-edged sword here on this part of the map. Yeah, certainly is. Frosty finds two, though, is having reign supreme up top as well. But actually, beg pardon, it's Pharaoh here on your screens there. Finds a double, and he almost starts to early rotate with, like, 40 seconds. When I say rotate, maybe not to the next hard point, but just into a bit of a better position. Those players now will be rotating to that first hard point will be spawning between the arches, and this is where you can really start to make that domino, that snowball effect, if you like, as Havoc trying to pre them. Now they flip the spawns, and what a smart move from moving in. They get the initial time, they then flip it, now they can hold the line, keep that pressure on, and start to work towards construction. Number seven just gone down, that's Aqua. He was actually on the flank as well, so even better now for the Mutineers. And as I said, that the Mutineers, as I've said it for the 15th time there, could lose <laughs> map number one. I don't think that's going to happen. They're looking so strong off the bat. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. Frosty gets that down there in middle, but again, the, the next hard point is going to be theirs in just a matter of moments, and bingo, there it is. Over towards the construction site, top left-hand side of that mini-map. Supreme play here from the Mutineers to start this one off. Again, you get early control of Barbershop, you find a couple of kills, waves come through, and you vacate. You move on out, and you let them take that position. As soon as they do, they get trapped on the other side of the map. Now as we flood over to the hard point, Decimate trying oh to find what he can down low, but Pharaoh just hops his way across those 
bottom pallets gets the kill. And now his teammates are rocking up Blast, not falling prey to those shots again there from Morks and Havoc. And here we go. The break from the Gorillas now doing what they can. Can Frosty find anything from upstairs? These players have managed to let him slip through. And Frosty, dead silence, pick of the litter there. He finds one. Here comes Havoc on the pinch. Good timing, but Aqua there. Nice turn and burn. He manages to clear out the bottom of the hard point. 20 seconds now going to be going the way of the Gorillas. Yeah, and this is when, again, rotation is so important with it. Interesting position. He's got to find one. Don't let it happen. My goodness, Pharaoh nearly got the turn on there, but Habit will clean up Vivid. And as we go towards the arches now, Blast setting up up top, looking to take down Morks as he does do that. Decimate finds one off screen. That's going to be Frosty here, but no one on the half point as of yet. Players starting to push forward towards the sandbags. Important position in there from Skies as he finds himself an MP5. And the kill feed in the ever so beautiful... Teal. Aqua, teal looking beautiful color of whatever like, the mutant like is. Turquoise. It's lovely. Turquoise. Though, isn't it? Isn't it I lovely? like it a lot. 128 and counting climbing though, should I say. As we do see the mutant ears take control. They have been kind of in control for the majority of this game, Mal. Yeah, they really have. It's not been a bad look for them. And the gorillas, uh, there have been woes when it comes to the respawn mode. Blast has brought this up a few times. I say this every single time I'm on stream in front of the gorillas, but I think. They have a little bit less practice when it comes to the respawn game modes when, as opposed to the, the search and destroys, but they are holding it together here. This is a solid look. Aqua Sally, 9 and 15, not the greatest KD for him right now, but he's doing what he can in the hard point as of now. Final 10 seconds going to be going their way as we're now going to see the slight reshuffles. We go back to square one, back to that first hard point. Up top is Decimate. Can he find anything on the corner here? Unfortunate situation to be in. Inferno, sweet child of mine, finds himself three and a hit fire there on a Decimate. It's disgusting. He keeps going. He keeps these kills a trucking and all. Oh boy, Pharaoh, there's another one around the corner. Turn your ears on. Crank that mix in, baby! He finds another one. Pharaoh is on an absolute rampage right now. Keeps these kills going. Dead. Well done, Vivid. And it's over just <laughs> like that. <laughs> but again, get taken down. Florida's Beautiful doing great. Now. Florida is doing great, and I will say, Pharaoh, they're having a, an absolute run of the mill here. 21 and 14, 30 seconds of objective time as well. But again, will it continue? We go back to the first half point now, up top of the bridge, and Havoc going a bit back and forth there as he finds the final kill onto Aqua. Quick reload and a nade out. We'll see whether that connects a little later. But with a 50 point lead, they're starting very, very strong. At the moment, though, we had a bit of a, a stale player just kind of soaking up that time, and that was actually going to be someone from the LA Gorillas. Decimate, try to think of these rotations, these hill swaps, and he's going to find one, but that's location revealed. Ooh, nice, though. Manages just to get away. Morks, though, with the penetration there through the box on a turned over the table. Find the kill. Finds more out of this one. What a nade that is again. Brilliant stuff. Not able to quite get the kill, but his team makes have shown up. The mutineers now running as a pack. The high seas, they are sailing right now. 183 climbing. And Frosty now over the top from up high. Bradley Burns from only able to get one, but still, that'd have been delightful. Buys his team a little bit more time, bringing the gunfight now to the hard point, where Pharaoh once again reigns supreme. 23 and 15 from him with 47 seconds of hard point time. Beautiful stuff from Mutineers. Again, there's still 30 seconds left, Miles, on the still. And we don't even see the gorillas anywhere near it. I think one player is going to challenge it, and that's an important part of it. It's going to be Spark who does find one. Will Ooh. find a second, and that is a huge kill before being traded. So, you know, that 25 is going to be 15 now. The barbershop does suddenly seem in control of the gorillas on the rotation. But you look at the mutineers now, and you think maybe one solid break onto a hard point, and they should be able to close this one out. It's a big lead, nearly 100 points, in fact, as Blast now. Taking control of the next hard points and decimate on a bit of a... Run out and he will find one. Can he find the second? It looks likely there as the head of Havoc just gets cleaned off here as Decimate not done yet. Trying to find another. Dead Silence Pop throwing everything at the kitchen sink at this game here. They are down. They're not out just yet. Yeah, the Gorillas have just started to slay this one out. Shots are out everywhere. They're managing to win every gunfight they've had for the last sort of 15 to 20 seconds has gone their way. So the Mutineers have been completely stopped. The anchor has been dropped and it's not of their own volition either. What can Vivid do? Oh, he's got stuck. That's nasty. Frosty gets the kill. Down low with Decimate still trying to maintain that mid-map presence. We do have the Gorillas still in control though. And this is the thing. The Mutineers have not fallen prey to the trap, which is being spawned by the back of the barbershop. They've already made their rotation across map. They've almost let most of that hard point time go. Now, while Blast soaks up the remaining time, as you said, like the spongy is, now we go over towards next. Frosty now on a mission to assassinate these two players below him. He can find one, which he does. That's all good, but he has to contend with the next player again. While those rotates still go down, nice nade from Spark gets it done. Well, Skies locks down the front of the map, and I believe that's it, Phil. The Mutineers have control of the hard point. Have control, and this is where they can end it with construction. Five players now flooding both down the side alley, which you see, and through the front, two kills go their way. Gorillas, this is their time that they need to break 
is a must break here as Frosty finds one. Trying to find that second. No one's on the hill at the moment. Flank around. He's going to find himself another on the stairs. It's Decimate who gets the better of him. Just 12 points away from the victory now. Havoc being very patient as he enters. Just dibbles. Wow. around. Finds another. Finds a third. But it's not going to be the kill. But the points are still going their way. Four points away. The contest finally coming through. But the mutineers swarming on. Nothing's going to stop him here. 250 is amongst us. Only 185 for the Gorillas and a strong, strong showing here as we do see a 65-point victory coming out for the Mutineers. What a stunning start for the Mutineers. Not bad whatsoever. Again, we expected some form of woe in the form of the hard-point gameplay there from the Gorillas, so nothing uh, tremendous so far. I don't think the campaign's over for them just yet. But again, you have to give it to the players of, of Florida. It was, it was Pharaoh for me, just constant rampages constant just slaying his heart out and again Skies just saw him in the right place right time maybe not necessarily as flashy those kills weren't really documented as well as um, as most of Ferris stuff but again the whole of the Florida lineup really doing what they can to uh, to lock down those positions we saw smart plays for the rotations were on point they were just winning the game outside of the kill feed quite a lot of the time leaving LA to basically just work with what scraps they were given yeah, uh, and again, it was just a very good, clean game. Everyone's pu pulling their own weight. 27 kills for Ferro, 27 for Havoc, and 27 for Frosty. You can see how it's distributed so evenly, it seemed. Morks had a bit of a slower game, but he was the one mainly on that objective as well, soaking up nearly 90 seconds of hill time. A great, great map there and mode combination, it seems, for the Mutineers. But going forward now, we saw this against Toronto. Will they be able to continue this trend? I think that was kind of, I don't want to say too much of a convincing victory, but they seemed in control of the majority that game miles i think you're right control is definitely the way you'd, you'd put it. it it was there was no moments where we we're like oh shaky seas here we're gonna start throwing right. the buckets of water out we're drowning here there was no moments like that you're right but now we're going to the search and destroy do you feel like florida are gonna have control here i don't i think this is where we see more struggles i think this is where you see the gorillas really come to life I, I think we see more from the Gorillas in the S&D, and I think, obviously, for these guys, I think this should be their kind of bread and butter. But, again, you know, this is a, a less experienced roster at uh, this time, and I hope, of course, they can kind of push back Florida and, you know, make this an even game, you know, push this to a game five, a game four, whatever it may be. My prediction of 3-1 towards Florida, um, again, I thought it might be that hard point that goes that way. But when you saw Ramaza come up, that seems like a bit of a favorite towards the Mutineers. Well, I mean, I think you're right, Phil. It might not be. It might still be a three-one, but it might not be exactly where we saw it, friends. The scuff play of the game. It's no surprise we lost, or I lost my mind over it. It was a really nice run, sitting upon top cafe. It was Pharaoh, of course, picking up kill after kill after kill. He's definitely going to be the recipient of our scuff play of the game there in that first hard point on Ramaza. Phil, I mean, is there anyone else you'd have given it to? He was just out of his mind. Oh no, absolutely not. I mean, we we. Shout out to the observers once again. These guys are doing a great job working with all the uh, difficulties with uh, with shifting to online, but they capture all the beautiful moments for you guys at home. Pharaoh up top cafe, and it was just the way that you kind of said it. I think you said crank your mix amp at the moment. <laughs> it was just like you could almost put yourself in that that game, and you knew what he was hearing. Those yeah. footsteps uh, kind of coming either side, and yeah, the reactions from him. But I think. Everyone has, obviously, you know, the same headsets as you can see right there in front of you. Uh, but it was just so well done from Farrah. But his positioning, very, very key. Yeah. And, of course, having it cranked up to the max. Good stuff from Farrah. That was great, man. It was a three-piece up top. He was watching over the players coming out of Barbershop as well. It was just wild. He should never have managed to get the, the third and final uh, spray down on a Vivid. But he did, baby. And then he kept on rolling, baby. Here we go. Into the search and destroy we trot. Now, again, Philip, I think uh, my advantage, it certainly my advantage, excuse me, not my advantage too, uh, my advantage <laughs> lies in the hands of, uh, of the Gorillas right now. I think that's where I'm going to go with it. And again, it was a, a loss that we saw the Mutineers take here against Toronto as well. Will we see a repeat of history or will things be a little different? Not so far, they're not. It's a lovely start now from the Gorillas. An opening three kills, Blast being the only one to fall for their side. But it's going to be Skies and Frosty going up against the four Gorillas. Yeah, and again, the Gorillas, interestingly enough, have uh, played Gunner and Search and Destroy three times. They've only lost it once, but who did they lose it against? It was the Mutineers. It's kind of a crazy imbalance, a triangle, if you like, going back, forward, here, there, and everywhere. Uh, but we're all ready into round number one. I say we're all ready into it. It looks like it's almost over, it feels like. The sky's uh, just chilling, hanging out as a few bullets penetrate through the back of his beautiful suit that he wears of course that you can see the skins the cameras whatever you want to call it. absolutely look i actually don't own the florida pack yet and why I is own, that miles can because you tell we me about that? because the way i had structured my purchases was i was going to buy the team 
Whoever, whatever event we were leading into, I was going to buy that team's pack and then okay. wear it as some sort of like living billboard in game. That was my plan. Um, but then with the move to online, I basically just started buying random packs. At one point, I was playing uh, Warzone with Priester, uh, and this was just after the LA event, so I bought the Minnesota skins in advance um, and basically started trolling and spraying that on the walls and being like, oh, what's that? That's really weird. What's that? Uh, I don't think he remembers that because he was too busy picking up 90 kills a game. I, I do remember that vividly. You turned a. Uh a car into a purple machine, it felt like. Um, the Minnesota Mobile! The Minnesota Mobile, I love that. However, back into the game, it seems like we've already lost Pharaoh in round number two. We'll bring it back into the action, which you know and love. Bomb has been planted at B here. As uh, Frosty makes his way out through the smoke, can't see too much. Trying to find something. Skies finds the head of Vivid. Morgs finds Spa, and suddenly the tables are turned, and now Florida have the numbers. Yeah, that's an amazing thing to get out of that close with the M4. It's just not easy to pick up those hit fire kills. Oh, wow. Decimate Blast Aqua. Everyone just on the back. Skies is like, guys, where did you all go? How have you all died in that such quick succession? The Gorillas have struck again. Two rounds, good to go. I mean, that's Gorilla Warfare, right? You've got no idea it's happening, and it's hit and run. It's all nasty. It's like, oh, mate. That's it. Blast with up top from Crates there, backing up Decimate. See those angles they have on each other as well. I mean, the Gorillas, they play the search so well. These are the search and destroy players you really want to be having on your team. Certainly so. And as we count down into the third round, the search and destroy, it feels like it's at a very fast pace, Miles. And at the moment, the pace is being set by one team. That is Gorillas. Three kills for Blast and Decimate. And Decimate, uh, we spoke about this, of how good of a player Decimate is. And it's not just kind of a a one-mode wonder, if you like. He's a, an overall fantastic player, but I do like watching him in Search and Destroy. He seems to really be so comfortable, if you like. And here he is, M4 in hand, bobbing, weaving. A bit further up is Blast, though. Shout out to our observers, always catching the action. Pharaoh, though, he's going to be taken out by Frosty. And I tell you what, the Search and Destroy not looking so great right now. As, as it was foretold. Definitely looking at an advantage towards the Gorillas, and they're not letting that one up. Frosty, though, Tooth nail as he just claws to life right now. That white screen. Watch out if you turn your contrast up, by the way, friends. I found this out recently. I hit the contrast really hard. So basically, when I'm like low HP, I can't see anything completely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> just, a, just a note to take away there. But 3v1 across the back. 3v2. Love this to would see technically it. be an ace as well if he manages to pull this off. This would be an ace 1v4, and now it's just vivid. Where is he on the minimap? He's absolutely nowhere. However, Ooh. on Did the truck. Did you see him, Frosty? Did you? Did you? Oh! oh my god! Clip it. Get me a replay. Pause the game. I need to see what has Frosty just done. Vivid. Oh, oh man. I've got shivers. I've got goosebumps. The snowman. Oh, baby. That's a nice round for Florida. I think that was a 1v4 ace. I believe. Could be wrong. I don't really care if I am at this point. That was incredible. <laughs> it was fantastic. How many okay. kills has he got? Okay, Florida. Now you're alive. Now you're kicking. What's going on? Are you going to bounce back in this round? Are we going to watch out for those opening nades? Because, let's face it, the Gorillas are gone. Hard wrap through A. This is an aggressive defense. Frosty's like, yo, I am feeling myself right now. Five kills back to back. Let's go. Pharaoh, back me up. We're going to push this one. The Sparks make the read. He pushes it. Oh, dear. Frosty could run into trouble. Nice nade up over the top. Not to be found. There's the kill, though. Frosty finds his sick. First blood frosty. Oh my god. Second oh. and third to Vivid. Pharaoh does shut it down and now a 3v3. Amazing stuff so far here as so. Oh, okay, we're back. And now Morks with that M4. He's got the reticle attached and he's gonna slide around. It's a tougher gunfight up close and personal, but he's gonna turn, not find the kill onto Aqua as a 2v1 all lands on Pharaoh. Yeah, brilliant stuff. Uh-oh. Pistols up. He's going for it, dude. He's just going for it. Chasing him down. Somehow finding one, but there's the trade again. It's a matter of time at that point. If Ferro can find that kill fast, maybe he can dip away. Maybe he can make that an even harder 1v1 to get in. But you can see Decimate. He's just hearing those gunshots come through, trying to find himself in a position where he can catch the trade. And there it is. A nice round to the Gorillas again. But you're seeing this adaptation, this confidence, this real surge of belief from the Mutineers that they can definitely do this. And the search is not lost yet. 3-1. 3-1, my God. And I tell you what, this is really going back to the, the picks and bans. We kind of talked about it. I didn't have it to hand. I do now. But the Ramada pick was from the Mutineers. This is clearly kind of a favorite for theirs. The LA Gorillas, obviously, after the bans have gone down, gone for a, uh, a bit of good runner. So right now, it's working for both teams here. It looks like we might have lost a player, Miles. Do you believe we've lost Vivid from the Gorillas? I think oh. that's what's up here. Uh, we may have to refer to the referees. Right now. I'm not quite sure what 
uh, the procedure here is, sadly, again, that does mean a player down. 3-1 up. That's very frustrating. Again, uh, I wait for an official word here from the referees before I start flapping these gums. But in the meantime, we'll keep going as though this is the way it's going. Frosty, with that bomb in hand, going for a quick one on B. Cleaned up immediately. This guy's not really in a position to really help out there. That trophy's not going to do a whole lot against the might of the bullets. The gorillas are throwing his way fair on the flank. Tasty timing. Finds himself two. And we find Aqua in a 1v2 scenario. Position to be in. Oh, okay. Oh, right. That is uh, an interesting final kill. you got to credit Pharaoh for that. Unfortunately, it does look like we've lost one player. We're going to get some information to you as soon as possible. We're begging for the information as well as I'm sure you guys, the Gorillas fans. And honestly, if you're Mutineers fan, you don't want to win like this anyway. But, you know, we'll, uh, of course, update you ASAP. As five rounds has passed, it is 3-2. Myself and Miles, of course, we'll just continue as the oh, players continue mate. as well. Uh, but Miles, how are you? What is going on? Do you know? I don't. Uh, not just yet, but we're still we're waiting for some news. I mean, it's a shame. Because it's it's technically 4v4 anyway. Lol, JK. Well, lol, JK. Havoc. 0-5. Oh mate. <laughs> sorry, Havoc. I'm <laughs> sorry. That's me. You put him on blast so hard there. Uh, speaking of blast, 6-4. Not bad from him. And again, it just is like a bit of a melee here on point. as the two remaining members of the gorillas holding out by back B. Uh, but again, a 2v3 scenario. Nothing unheard of here in Search and Destroy. Sky's up the top. Nobody get much. Decimate cleans him up. Now Blast trying to watch the back. Two M4s working away here for the Gorillas. What have they got? Oh, okay, cool. There we go. We have received word. The, uh, the producers in our area have let us know that it is all good and well. We're going to restart the game. Uh, I'm not sure if we'll be continuing on from the 3-1 scoreline when Vivid did lag out. Uh, but currently, I believe that's what's up. So... We'll, we'll go get an from update there. on the score, but a restart's going to happen nonetheless. So yeah. I'm just happy that we're going to get all 10 players back in the lobby. That's I'm also quite happy to see more Search and Destroy, because let's be real, it was a pretty solid run between these two teams. This was a good This was a good search. Ah, we are going to start at 2-3. So we are going to start at this scoreline, um, as okay. opposed to from afresh. So, so they're gonna... still in the lead. I know it's probably not what... In fact, I'm not even going to comment on it, but they still have one round in the bag. You know smart, what I mean? Smart, Whitfield. You know that? Three, you two. smart. Not many smart. people say that actually. Thank hey, you. Hey, do you remember? That, do you remember you and me, Phase LG, back at uh, London? Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah baby, we smart. <laughs> just let the let the let the other people take care of this one. All we have to do is just uh, keep the show rolling, keep the memes a flowing. But yeah, three two will be the scoreline when we return. So you have to be a bit creative, friends, when you're watching from home. Possible we'll have a graphical overlay to let you know what's really up. But uh, we'll keep you updated. Phil will be working on the quick maths. He's got his chalkboard out. Or your, uh, your oh, abacus. Going old school with the chalk. I like you got, it. You got an abacus out there, have you, mate? Uh, no, don't have one. I appreciate yeah. that, man. I've actually got, got... I actually have, have a whiteboard. Sure. I have a whiteboard right next to my setup, um, which I have yet to really put to good use, but I think today might be the day. So, LAG will be at... I'm not sure if we can cut to camera and see this, but... <laughs> <laughs> LAG We're looking at the teams three. right now. <laughs> and Florida will be at a two. I'm not sure how we can get that. Or if it's even going what to show color up. preferences have you got on your whiteboard, Miles? The color preferences? What the hell are you talking about? It's a whiteboard. It's a it's a old. Have you got any colored? Have you got any colored pens? Or, I've got one know, blue just... colored. I've got one blue colored pen. I mean, mm. my ring light, the great destroyer of glasses, is also <laughs> having a big impact on my whiteboard as well. So I'm not sure if we can see that. We may. I managed to get a Reddit thread about. Oh, there's Decimate. My properly, but there you go. I thought Decimate. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There it is. We should also uh, uh, we should also practice our fist bumps here. Speak yeah, great look. Time. So if you, I could you... put my hand through the wall right now and destroy your whiteboard, I would do. Wow, but yeah, we see right. it. Lag three, yep. FLA two. We see it bright, loud, and clear. Very bright, isn't it? It's really bright. Um, okay, well, as I say, friends, we're all having a giggle here, but the players are getting ready back into the lobby. Uh, while they get all this geared up, ready to rock and roll, we'll let them settle themselves. We'll let everyone repowder their noses or whatever the hell they have to do. But we will be coming back shortly, friends. Because, again, we're sitting here in map number two after a slight technical delay. When we come back after this very break, we will be seeing the search and destroy between the mutineers and the gorillas. Don't go anywhere. Here we go, back into the search and destroy, boys and girls. We are keen to get back into this one. And, again, the score is going to be 3-1 to the Los Angeles gorillas. Off the rip. Okay, so it's been a longer series than it probably should have been right now as we go into Search and Destroy. But Florida, of course, won map number one if you are just joining us. Are you a little late to the party? You've missed a whole day of crazy Call of Duty from draws in domination to one point, half points. But here we are. Five rounds, about fifth round here. Do you see some exchange 
Oh, sorry, I'm going to do this. The gorilla's coming out hot again, and it looks like they're going to clean up once more. It's 3 1, it could be 4 1 very soon. Today has been hysterical. Like, the games have been unreal. And I think this one is not going to be short of any drama, but it ain't over yet. They killed from Skies. Now it comes down to him in a 1v3. Technical 1v4, but let's see how he goes. Frosty can do it. So can Skies, right? See, seems simple enough. It does seem simple enough, doesn't it? Especially when you just walk around, like, just mopping people. But I think the gorillas <laughs> have learned. Is. Like, yeah, look. <laughs> where the bomb is. Where the bomb is, this chance. Yeah, so for the, for the reference at home, uh, Florida needs to get to the five uh, round count in order to win. Um, obviously, the Gorillas uh, need to get to three. The gorillas already on one, so a couple more, and it'll be all down to Dom. And I tell you what, Gorillas looking strong at search and destroy, meaning as they uh, seem to pick it up very, very quickly. No break, no hesitation. They're back into it. And honestly... I can see him winning the next two, the way things are going right now. It's a bit of a strange search and destroy, nonetheless. But bomb in the hands of Aqua as he starts to make his way, what it seems, towards the beat. Excuse me. Oh, no, I can hear you coughing. I know, mate. It's I was like, speaking. The way it is. Mate, where's my cough board? Well, you've got a cough button. We created <laughs> no, those, remember? <laughs> Honestly, I've got a We heard Joe. Something's going to go wrong. Joe right? in the last one. Anything. <laughs> Burp. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hilarious times here at the Cod League, but we hope you're enjoying the show. We really are. I the pressed pressure. the wrong button, Miles, and the whole thing has to be restarted. I'm <laughs> myself. Stay safe. Stay safe. Don't touch yeah. your face or your keyboard. Nice kills from Ferry there on the first blood. Vivid answers back immediately. I believe that was his uh, it's, uh, third kill in row. There it is. Fourth. There we go. Keep it running. That's what Can the gorillas are looking for. Off to a flying start. 4-0. Kill streak here, or two in the round, I should say. Bomb edging his way towards B, and Blast has found another double as well. Miles, yes, it's all over. The bomb ain't even going down. A very clean, concise round, and that puts it at what five to one? Yeah, that's five to one. This is map point right now for the gorillas. After Mass the reset, hard, so let's just hope it's quick, so I don't have to keep working this out. Sorry, I've actually got my whiteboard loaded up. Oh, so. thank goodness yeah, you have Miles, a whiteboard. Miles what Ross's, would we do without it? Miles Ross's whiteboard.exe IRL is running, brother, and uh, yeah, it's five to one right now in round counts. The gorillas are looking very, very strong indeed. Search and destroy is their playground, and they have licked all of the swings and everything. You can't touch nothing. Coronavirus scan around. So here we go, blasting your screen. Watch those opening tacticals come through. This is what you. This is what we're learning right now. These over-top nades, stuns, clusters, you name it. Clusters, Zemtex. The spot finds a nice kill there on the Ferro, cleaning out green. No. Was it ever called a cluster grenade? I think it was. It was no. in Black Ops 4, but that was because it was a cluster grenade, not a Zemtex. Right, of course, yeah. And it split up. All right, Idiots. interesting. Idiots. I'll tell you what, the long day is getting to our heads right now, but it's 3v4. The Mutineers do have that number advantage for now. Mort on your screen. Does connect with the stun, but the dead silence is only going to get him so far. Aqua finds himself snuck away into the boiler room. Now prone and waiting. 40 seconds on the clock. TikTok dance video over there by that tree. Havoc, nice shots. Push the tags. Havoc almost managed to get the tags on Aqua to deal with damage, but that's not going to be enough still. Mork's though, keeping the fight alive. 3v1. On down now for the Mutineers. Aqua, oh boy, a little windy over there by Pipes. The Mutineers get themselves on the board. It is now 5 to 2. Don't let the scoreboard lie to your friends. Listen to your good power miles. It's 5 to 2. Los Angeles in the lead. Update that whiteboard, Miles. I have, mate, don't worry. Get that beautiful blue pen out. It's a lovely blue pen. With an eraser on the end. Oh, wow. All right. Oh, Show yeah. off. Getting oh, fancy yeah. over here. Yeah, it's a weird flex, I know, but hey. Weird flex. You gotta take what you can COVID times. Here we go. Still map point for the gorillas. Been finding four kills so far, and here we go on the attack. To close this one out, it is gonna be Blacks. Vivid finds Ooh. one with the Semtex. Havoc is down. Maybe for the last time, potentially here, as we start to see. Let's push on up. I mean, guys, he's gonna throw off, but he's okay for now. Oh! Unfortunate timing here. Attacks go either side. Spot does take down Skies, but the rock is clear, and it's a 5v3. I mean, the way the fights work right now, you're never fighting one member of the gorillas at a time. You're always... 
so much you can do on gun runners. A lot of hard lines are blocked by buildings, construction, and whatnot. Ferro with a hit and run. Lovely work. But the bomb's going to be going down now, B. We just find one, the dead sound. Woo! So beautifully called. Sentry back as well, but still advances to the gorillas. Fall down to Ferro. Ferro dies. Mutineers go to map number three in a tie of one to one. It's Spartan what a Aqua. It's, oh my yeah! goodness, just Aqua. Where is he? He's close. He's only got a pistol and he's going to clean it up. It would have been a beautiful 1v3, but it ain't going to happen. Not today. Gorillas take the map. And maths is getting difficult, so I'm glad that one's over. It's one to one, ladies and gents, and that's all you need to know. <laughs> it's one to one. A five to two overall round count with the Gorillas taking it in the end. And... Hey, hey, I would be amiss to say if I didn't think Pharaoh had what it took to clean up that round there. Had he, ha I mean, give me half a second more and he probably would have been able to get that pistol up and put it to work as much as he possibly could against that crew in that 1v1. But hey, we are done and dusted there in the Search and Destroy. The series tied out 1-1. to -one. Phil, you're absolutely right, mate. Any, any passing thoughts there on the Search and Destroy? Uh, well, I said that this could be a 3-1 to the Mutineers. I actually thought Florida might be a little bit better at the Search and Destroy. However, uh, a great showing from the Gorillas. I think going into this one, we talked about how the uh, LA should really kind of make that their staple game mode with the players that they've got on their squads. That's how I feel anyway. I'm sure other people feel very, very different. Um, but overall, a strong showing uh, shows kind of grit, determination to kind of bounce back from that map number one and excited for the domination. Very, very excited for the domination indeed. We're almost there, friends. We're getting through it. Slight delay, of course, getting through this one. But hey, today has been an absolute roller coaster. I, I, we're going to look back at this one and laugh about it for a long, long time. Incredible games and plenty more to come when we come back after the break. Florida Mutineers got up with the Los Angeles Gorillas. It's a domination game. We'll see you in just a moment, friends. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> The U.S.
the US Army. What's your warrior? Tournament audio and team chat listenings are brought to you by Astro Gaming, the official headset and mix amp of the Call of Duty League. Join the Astro family and pre order the CDL A40 TR headset and pro team speaker tags today at astrogaming.com. Call of Duty League is brought to you by Mountain Dew Amp Game Fuel, the official energy drink of the Call of Duty League. Welcome back to the Call of Duty League, folks. We're here in game number three of the Florida Mutineers going up against the Los Angeles Gorillas, and we've got our US Army tactical play. And no surprise, it's your boy Frosty from the Mutineers with that ace. A technical 1v4, but he did kill everyone in the game on his own. The second we've received today, Phil. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, Envoy picked up the first ace, and you saw his second kill on screen there. A little bit of a jump headshot onto Spa. Beautiful up-close personal M4, which is a bit more difficult than a lot of people make out. Then he utilizes his equipment around him to uh, just kind of duck and dive out of this one, putting himself in more 1v1 positions. And yeah, he finds one, finds a second, trying to get away with his life. And then Vivid, in an awkward position, thinks all well is good. He's thinking, I've, I've sat on this power position. No one's going to take me off of it. Oh, well, there's Frosty. Whoa, I'm dead. And there it is. It's all over. Uh, incredible play by Frosty. But really, it didn't matter. Gorillas won the search and destroy. That was the, one of the only rounds that they did win. So they should have actually lost it. You know, that the, the point I'm trying to make is the mutineers kind of sucked at search and destroy right there. <laughs> The point I'm trying to make, yeah, it was a 5-2, uh, and one of the rounds was an ace. Uh, some serious heroics there from Frosty. But hey, man, they did manage to win the hard point, and now we're on to a domination. And if the trend is anything to go by, the idea that the gorillas are not necessarily as, uh, let's say, adept or uh, as proficient when it comes to the respawn game modes, you've got to be favoring the mutineers into this one. Again, this is a knockout game, uh, ladies and gents, so the loser of this team will be staying home. They will have to turn off their PlayStations. They will not be going home because they're already home because of the COVID-19 outbreak. But here we go. The home <laughs> series of Dallas Empire has been a humdinger so far. Uh, not short of drama, surprises, any good stuff. And Phil, any, what's your favorite thing that's happened today? You have to pick it's only gotta, one, mate. It's got to be the, the domination draw. <laughs> it has to be. It, the, a close second is the map after, which was a, a one-point hard point. But the domination draw, it wasn't necessarily what happened. It was more Maven's reaction. Um, just to see him kind of try and understand what was going on was incredible. Uh, but here's a highlight of obviously what's happened already. Chicago started the day with a 3-1 victory. Dallas picked up a nice dub there against Toronto. Minnesota, again, those first three games were almost kind of like your three favorites in the tournament, if you like, to go on and win this whole thing. Uh, but now we go down to an all-important must-win match between these boys. And again, Toronto is waiting for that team to, to come on up and to, to fight them once again maybe yeah it might be a rematch again if the mutineers can have their way with the gorillas here but hey the gorillas there's the young blood we touched upon it a little bit before when i try to hide and mask my burp can i i kind of take an aside here just to talk about quarantine life because you know not I, now that i've got a platform to talk about this one it's funny to think that in this day and age right right now when i'm in public i would rather fart to cover a cough than cough to cover a fart. What a day and age we live in. Anyway, we'll let that one sink in. Uh, but in the meantime, yes, the young bloods of the gorillas, they will certainly be looking to find a win here. Again, the, the tenacity, the kind of desire to win, I think it's got to be so, so high for that squad. And I really hope that they manage to get some ample practice in. And this domination isn't as closed shut as we think it may be, Phil. I, I agree completely. And I think going forward, it's just... We talk about these teams that potentially could upset, and we, we've said, yes, there's the front runners of Chicago uh, and Atlanta. Dallas for sure. Dallas. No, Dallas, but Minnesota is kind of that dark horse that could win it. And again, no one's really talking about these teams that are, you know, your, your Seattle and Florida for obvious reasons. You know, they are a few steps behind at this point, but I think it's important to still solidify those you know, not only top four teams, but who's in that top six, who's in that top eight, if you like. Because, uh, again, it all matters when it comes down to uh, the very end of the season. But Sky's taking a big stretch. I think I might join it very, very soon. <laughs> Pharaoh, I think, has gone to stretch his legs. But all is good. Uh, these guys <laughs> look like they're enjoying themselves a little bit too much. Relaxing too much. He's about to be getting into the game shortly, guys. We're going to take a quick break. After this, we'll resume with the domination. Muniz versus Gorillas. Don't go anywhere. Anyway, here we go. In the dom <laughs> what are you laughing at? In the domination, we roll now. Oh, it's on St. Petrograd as well. This is going to be so furious, man. All the subbies in this game. Everyone is uh, high-paced players, man. Between 
Havoc. You know, almost everyone on the Gorillas. Like, this is going to be a humdinger. Here we go, Philip. Oh, well, we're in. And that is the main point here. It is going to be domination. It is on St. Petro as well. I've not seen the St. Petro, or cast the St. Petro, Dom. We've certainly seen them amongst the weekend already. And don't forget, tomorrow we have three final games, the two semis, and, of course, the grand final. Will one of these teams be there? Stay tuned to find out, of course. But as A and C go in the hands of their home team heroes, we are going to see a... Semtex go out. He's not going to find anything yet. But the kill feed all white. Gorillas coming out on top. Yeah, coming out on top. Spark, blast, spark. Back and forth. Another one for Spark. We like to see this again. Mid map control now looking pretty solid. They're already going for the A poke as well. Trying to hit that home flag of the mutineers. And it's going to be Spark leading that charge, man. Slow down somewhat. Frosty from behind now. Just trying to cut the legs out of this play. And the mutineers have just managed to retake a nice mid map control. Beautiful bit of work there from Frosty. Now have it come up high off of the top rope. Straight on the beat they go, quick neutralization. Did they manage to secure the cap? Walks on, nice shots, nice two piece. Picks up the second. Mid map is looking a lot safer than it was a second ago. Confirmed the point capture, nice bit of work there from the mutineers. Yeah, strong stuff there, down by four here. Just, uh, you know, 20, 30 seconds at a uh, two to one negative on domination, of course. But Pharaoh now on a five spree here, closing the door, and it's going to be bashed back open, and something else bashed is the head of, of course, Spart there coming through. He's going to find himself dropping Aqua Answer in back, but the kill feed is going Mutineer's way. They're going to tie this one up at 20 to 20. But again, just look at the minimap here. Look at the pressure that they're putting on CB. Has been neutralized in the meantime. And Morks, I'm not sure where he's going right now, but he's searching for someone. He's doing what he can. Well, let's see uh, what Morks has to say for himself and who he can find with a quick Astro Gaming listen in. Florida Mutineers. One P1. No one behind me. I'm on C on C, bro. Go long, go long after the show, okay? Spawn P1, spawn P1. I'm gonna go with P1. Top has he. Yeah, hold P1. Hitting yellow van, hitting yellow van. Yeah, top has me and top kitchen, guys. Head long. Sure, the map I'm getting top has. Line going long, line going long. Yeah, one shot hitting C. Nice, back up C, back up C, one C, one C. Get long, long, long. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Got got one dead, one more long, long, long. I got him, I got him. One more beat, one more on me. Spawn day, spawn day, spawn day. I want to see one day. I don't see anything. Yeah, one, 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 Watch your long, watch your long, bro. On Z. Line, 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 Clean comms from the Mutineers and Pharaoh, 14 and 4. At one point, Skies had one kill. I mean, Pharaoh's hoarding those kills like toilet paper right now. Skies couldn't buy a sheet. Didn't have a chance there, man. He's running around wet. Brilliant stuff there from the Mutineers. That was a trip cap for quite some time, Phil. Not something we've seen for too long, but the Gorillas are certainly struggling here on Petrograd. Yeah, and I think that's something that, again, if well set up, teams can do that. You can really start to pin them back in those arches, and the Mutineers were doing just that. Vivid, the last alive, actually, the only person to do anything there for a second is going to find himself a B, but it should be taken back shortly after Blast may be able to rechallenge this, but he's going to go for the height advantage, and Mox is going to shut that one down as soon as it was brought up. Three kills back to back. You can see him trying to get that spawn trap, trying to just shut everything down. How many times during this actual half of a domination have you seen that kill feed just full of Mutineers? Like four, five back to back. Yeah, they're definitely on the uh, the production productive end of the kills, I should say. Uh, still though, we've got an A and C control now now for the uh, for the gorillas. Oh, but Morks just kind of nice there. Blast off the rip. There's him. Great awareness right now from the They're just sort of picking this one apart. Desi just gonna come through there, clean up, managed to get a bit of safety up there towards that A flag. C's looking a little bit too safe right now for the Gorillas. It's vivid actually, he's managed to get back on the A. So A now in the control of the Gorillas, as is C. And it's looking quite safe at this point. They can collapse on a B very, very quickly. They may be able to get a trip cap for a few seconds here. Just help the points cause the final 10 of this first half. It's not been a bad look thus far for the Mutineers in the Dom. 
Yeah, just a bit of uh, awkward timing there. You finally start to dominate and start to really put something together. And, you know, the half ends. And we're going to go in there with 82 points for the Mutineers, 59 for the Gorillas. So a nice lead here. And again, this is where... The Mutineers can count themselves lucky. You know, if this was a, a six-minute round like it used to be, that could be a very different scoreline, Miles. Yeah, very, very different. Give themselves that trip cap for the remainder of that round as they start to heat things up. I mean, even the fact that they have to slow down now, that it's just that, that round change may have hurt the Gorillas. Who knows? Let's see how we go. As we swap sides, they now spawn A side. Not a bad thing still, but you want to see them push right on through to B. Watch for that overextension down that water street. And it looks like Blast may be the guy to do it. He's going to run into a lot of opposition, though. It looks like two, maybe three members now of the community is heading down that long street. They're going to do what they can now to try to play mid that control. Decimate. Good timing. Just about able to save his teammate. Brilliant stuff now. Are we going to see that mid map control come through? Skies! Ooh. Wow. Wow. And also props <laughs> to our observers. It looked like we just got like the, the punch changed the POV. We just got the perspective knocked out of Decimate there. That was unbelievable. Farrow keeping these kills coming up high, Phil. And it's again, Newton is slow and steady, but they've got that mid map control for now. Oh, yeah, no. 20 kills for Pharaoh, only 10 deaths as well. Morx has really been kind of that typical assault rifle player, if you like, just distancing himself from the opposition. Pratt's in, of course, the social distance. It's stay away. And as you see him there, he's probably going to find another. It is onto Vivid, but we're jumping on board with Havoc. He's going to go top building. And the interesting thing as well, when you've got this 20-point lead, you really don't need to push for those flags initially. You can just kind of sit back, pick up those kills, force the opposition into making the mistakes first. And that seems to be the plan for Min uh, Minnesota Mutineers, should I say. B has been secured, or will be secured, as we see Havoc jump on and off that flag. 94 to 74, a 20-point lead though, Miles. 20 points is good enough for now, but watch them try to extend this one. We're going to see Havoc try to find a couple of kills, make his way onto that A flag as well. Just at least make it move Stop the points coming through from that AG. Across the new screen. Trying to make it work for these players down that long street. We call it the river street or the water street. And a very, very important place to control to at least you know allow for a fast highway of movement for players from one flag to another. Lovely job there by the observers. Of course, that heavy yellow truck. A physical moment into the area of the map to find your kills from. But speaking of kills, Morks the Skies, they come in pairs. Now B being made safe, made neutral, and now flipping over to the hands of the Mutineers. Three minutes on the clock. A in question, it seems here, but it's just going to stay with the Gorillas for now. 113 to 84 as we do see the Mutineers. You see them on the minimap there, setting up around these flags. And again, when it comes to St. Petro, there's so many positions that you can be in, whether it's a window, a door, a nook, a cranny, whatever it can be, it's very, very difficult. You've got to utilize those smoke grenades, the trophy systems. They're all so important. 22 and 8 for Morse. Real standout performance from him. Solid work in the mid map, though. You can see the Gorillas now. Brilliant job. There's at least two of them on that flag. You can see how it captures so quickly. Because they taken down. Vivid with a quick response now. Two for him. So they're trying to make their way forward. Go for that C cap. Go for the trip. That's what they need to do now. Two minutes. Point. I don't know what happens if they hold a trip cap for that long. For two minutes. Holding a trip cap for two minutes is basically impossible for, I think, the team right now. They'd be very, very <laughs> impressed if they could, but they're going to try. Blast, if you can take the, uh, if you can take that C flag, at least make it neutral. But his teammates have got to watch out for the push towards A. You may have B control, but you've got to watch A as well. Morks is about to find himself possibly his 24th kill. There it is. 24, 25, and 9. It all looks good for now. He's going to get C back in the hands. And I tell you what, a neutralization on C and a 2 cap would have been great for the Gorillas, but it is going to change hands. And you see there, Frosty just waiting and anticipating that push there from Spot. He's going to be rewarded with that kill. And as the time ticks away, 90 seconds on the clock, we see about a 25 point difference here as Frosty eagerly just awaits on the roof. The MP5 it can do the damage at range as well. He's searching for Aqua, but. His teammates are actually on over by B as well. So if B does change hands, which it will, I think a neutralization at least does come through. This is looking very strong here. It's almost impossible here for the LA Gorillas to take this. That's tough. It, 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 the, the map may be lost, but the series is far from over. I mean, it's still tied up one to one. The loser of this one will be leaving the tournament, however. So again, it's essential. Every map counts, truly. I mean, every map counts always, but more so than ever in a knockout game. B in the hands of like, neutral at this point in time. The C is being uh, overextended. Well, A is being overextended very, very quickly now by the Los Angeles Gorilla Gorillas. Here we go. Straight on towards A. Trying to find some map control. She actually is going to overextend right around the back into the gun of Pharaoh, sadly. But his teammates have not really been able to purchase much 
of the rest of the map. They're all contending towards those players in the middle. So Havoc, I believe, was causing a bit of trouble for them. Slowed that push down for the meantime. Now Sky smashed to reinforce that E-flag. It's a very delicate balance for when it comes to Dom. Overextending, trying to find those kills, maintaining your own flag defense. It really is, and I think balance is, a, is such an important thing there because a lot of people will always push or, you know, play a little bit too defensive. And it, it is having that right balance. I don't think always being kind of super aggressive is the is the way in domination. Yes, it can reward you, but it's high risk, high reward. Sometimes you can overextend, push too much, and have the incorrect balance, say, and then you can end up maybe losing your home flag, getting a spawn to flip. So when you've got 10 players in the lobby and everything, the communications all go in here, there, and everywhere, it's very important to keep that balance and a really good point. But uh, game three over goes to the Mutineers. The respawns will stay with Florida, 159 to 138. And a strong show in there. That domination early on in, uh, in round number one was... Uh, a big catalyst of that. Yeah, it really, really helped. You know, they made a comfy bed for themselves to lie in there in the second round. Padding the stats, getting what they can. But 159 and 138, as you called it, that is going to be the second map win in the series for Florida. They need one more to advance further in the tournament. For Los Angeles Gorillas, this is it. Do or die time for the boys in the purple hoods. Hashtag hoods up. Heck, what have they got now, Phil? As we go into another hard point. Now, this is again... Something we think about, we've talked about enough in this series, the respawns, man, they're just going the way of the mutineers. The first hard point of Ramaza was not a good one. God, that feels like a long time ago, doesn't it? It was not a great <laughs> one for the gorillas. Obviously, when it comes to search and destroy, the gorillas are insane. Like They've got that game type down pat, but Dom, hard point coming up next. Quick look at the stats for you guys. Tough scenes for the gorillas. Can they bounce back here? Can they make some sort of recovery? I think they can, but... I'm not sure if the Dallas Home Series is exactly going to be their tournament right now. They do have a little bit to work on when it comes to those respawns. Yeah, they've not actually played Ramaz at hard point as a team. They've actually played Hackney, which is coming up next, uh, three times. Unfortunately, losing it twice. They did win once. That was against OGLA, of course, in uh, the LA Series. Uh, and interestingly enough, it, if it does go all the way, it's S and D Petro, which again, not too successful on. But it's a it's a brand new team. It feels like you know you're not going to find success straight away. And I think it's important to you know look at stats, but also have an open mind about things. You know, a lot has changed since LA. You know, not just around the world, but these guys have had so much time to practice um, and improve. So I am I am keen to kind of give a little bit of leniency towards the gorillas and just kind of give them a chance to show us what they're made of because they really did in uh, in map number two. They were great at search. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I mean, I think you're right, though. There's that, I think Mevin brings this up all the time. But it's like, at what point can we be too lenient? And at what point in this series, you know, in the league throughout the entire season, yeah. is this going to be in trouble for these guys? Either way, quick look at some hard point stats here. RST sitting up top there, 1.53, but Sky's there, the 1.34. Exciting stuff to see there as well, Phil. Yeah, I think it is obviously important. I mean, stats aside, I think when you just kind of take a couple of steps back and look at the series, respawns have been pretty dominant uh, from Mutineers. The Search and Destroy is certainly dominant uh, in the hands of Gorillas. But we are going to a hard point. This is the real test. And whether this is a win for the Mutineers or, you know, a win for the Gorillas, I think, you know, just to kind of showcase what Gorillas have got in respawn, I think that's really important moving forward. Um, this is something they'll be watching back on VOD review. This is something to kind of take away. I uh, really hope we can get another game five. Honestly, we've had so many of them so far this weekend. But this is a do or die. Remember, this is, you know, winner goes on to play Toronto, loser. Uh, I want to say goes home, but probably just changes your room and does something different. Jump on the couch and uh, see how you go. Here we go. And watch, it. you know. Maybe play Warzone, dude. Loving it right now. 50 million players. Unbelievable. Here we go. Straight into the hard point. We're up. Having to hold that up. Very, very quick. I'm just getting a little faster here. But having. Oh, boy. Through the smoke. Finds one. Walks in his back. I thought that was an assassination from him. Spark just shanked him. Absolutely shanked Imagine. him. Imagine. I mean, it would have been a terrible time to do it, but... <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you do it being by accident. It'd be terrible. <laughs> it, it, it happens. Sometimes you hold it down for too long and it just, you know, you, you wind up flipping somebody over and hitting them with some jujitsu. You never know, mate. There we go. Though he's still on to the hard point. He's going to be the gorillas. You touching it before, Phil? I've got to win on this map against OGLA. And they repeat here again. Yeah, for me, it was more the fact they've just got experience on it, you know, uh, on a competitive situation. But so do the Mutineers, you know, this is a team which have uh, come prepared. It looks like they're holding the line for, of course, the spawns, which I think is a very, very smart thing to do sometimes. Uh, again, bringing up the balance is very hard to kind of gauge. You know, do you push this for once more? Do you just set, sit back, give them the points? It looks like they're going for a, a, an important balance here as 13 points have been collected by the Mutineers. They are going to retain those spawns. And Frosty up top is going to be deleted there as he gets took down by Spa. Very back and forth the kill feed here, as you can see. 
But all said and done, the tyre shop is open. Open for business here. And 20 points and more are going in favour of Mutineers. Yeah, really going to have to see the Gorillas burn some rubber across the map for the tyre shop right now. Come on, boys. On you go. David made his way through the middle. He's going to pass the player. So here comes the AO and Skies. What have you got? Not a lot, dude. He's in from behind. It was Vivid. Vivid actually going to get cut down in the end. Nice push. The timing has worked out from the Gorillas. It's not a clean break just yet. They've still got a couple of players on point, hoping for a few more kills. Not enough time to get it done, though. Ferro and Co. now just mopping up the advancing players there into the Gorillas. Frosty trying to do the same. The push has been held back for now, but 50 points of climbing. The Florida Mutineers have held on second half point. Yeah, what a great time to go off as well. Havoc, a play which we've really not talked about. We spoke about it at the very start of this series, Mars, of kind of which names kind of come to mind when we look at the Mutineers. Uh, you obviously labeled Frosty. I think you, and Morks as well. I kind of talked about Skies. Havoc, 10 kills to his name as Skies only had one. Skies turning things around here. But Havoc, again, people will label him as kind of that X Factor, maybe the, the person to change a series. He really can be that kind of... Uh, <laughs> influential person on the map. I think of Zed, I think of those kind of fast, aggressive players, and he's, uh, he's turning up here in game number four. So Spark, though, seven and six for him. Hard point time is relatively close. Top shots to clean that one up. Not able to get the job done, though, as Frosty comes in and finds his second there. 30 seconds remaining now. Smokestack. Vivid just absolutely close. Mort's on his back. Wow. And the fight raging is still there in the warehouse. Frosty somehow goes down again. Vivid keeps that run going. Now they're going to be over towards the opposite here. He's building the Pharaohs in just above him. That room will be below them for a moment, and they're going to do all they can on the hard point in 10 seconds time. The battle now raging as it looks like Decimate has managed to slip on for a moment. They're going to come back outside to mid. So the Florida Mutineers, they are holding them back. They are keeping their distance. This is truly 6 feet or more right now. As they keep these players away from the hard point as best they can. I think they need to, and again, this is what you can really see going so well for the Gorillas. 92 points here, but they're not in control of this half point. I think for 45 seconds, they will need to start to push this Havoc. Frosty, Pharaoh, all laying up that kill feed. They're taking down their own players, but my goodness, the Mutineers. Pharaoh on a five kill streak. Frosty on a three is looking so, so hot, but I think Frosty might have just ran out of bullets there. It could have been Pharaoh, actually. Could have been even more, yeah. There we go. Mork's finding one there and the kill back, but again, playing Amp, those nades come out so fast, so, so, so speedy. Uh, but again, he's really good there if he gets hit by stuff. But that's what you get, mate. Ferro still up top, just mopping up these kills. He's really going from there. 11 and 14 for him. 5 and 9 for Skyzo. We talked about this previously in the uh, Empire vs. Toronto map, where those main ARs on this on this map in particular, they just get slowed down so much, and it really becomes more about picking up hard point time, hitting those rotates, you know, locking down those lanes of sight, especially on like one second point on tires. You want to be making sure you've got that like, top right hand corner in that open window. But right now, this is working out great for Mutineers. They're locking this down. They've got to hold the line a little bit more while the Gorillas have maintained this lead. But what have they got, Phil? A couple more pushes left in them. This is a good hold. Mutineers have just locked this down. Yeah, it certainly have. And again, half point hack in the yard. I kind of touched it then. I was just looking at the stats here for uh, the Mutineers. They've played this five times. They've beat Chicago. They've beat London. They've beat New York. These guys have kind of done the rounds on this map. However, the Mutineers are being tested by the Gorillas right now. 114 to 107. Frosty on a five kill streak as well. Quick check at that minimap though. Look at number five. It's Havoc again. He's had a great start to the game, but he's trying to go for rotation. He's not going to go too well as he is going to be taken down. But the last 20 seconds, looking likely to go towards the Mutineers. We're going to get another lead change here, Miles. Frosty, 22 kills. Sky's only eight. I was talking about Mr. Consistent. He's had a bit of a rough couple of maps here. Uh, it's a little rough. I mean, again, I think we can let it slide for now, maybe. But for how long have we battled towards the next hard point? Pharaoh and Sky is what a run that was two members there of the gorillas cleaned up and this is the turning point right now this is do or die for the gorillas the backs are firmly against the ball right now they have to win this map to force the game five if they can get that game five we could be seeing the gorillas moving onwards but here we go this guy's just taught me a new jump up there i had no idea he could jump up that ball out, so that's <laughs> that's going in the playbook the Dude, that's I was thinking how straight. useful really is it, but okay. I tell you what, Vivid is going to find a double, and myself and Miles learning something different. I hope you guys are at home as well. Frosty pushing up quite far, though. Of course, not wanting to flip any of these spawns. He's going to be going in from the back, taking down, though. And it is, of course, going to be flipping over to the tire shop. Again, it is going to be in control of Florida for now. Just singed 
to the eyebrows, right up his face, that explosion did Havoc, cleans up upstairs. This is the pace you want to be talking about for, again, a player that can rip a map wide open. Havoc right now, 18 and 15, but these are powerful kills. These are annoying plays to be had. He's going to grab himself another inch of fire. That's another 20 odd bullets to be working with. Frosty from up high, nice bit of work again as he finds his second in a row, and this is good for Florida as they start to walk away with this one. So the tire shot we go. Yeah. The, the Gorillas got to break this, man. They got to break it now. Yeah, they are. Sorry to interrupt there. I was ready Drop to it. just go in depth here. You guys have just been sat at this top window, stopping everyone pushing through green. He wasn't picking up the kills as Frosty almost stealed them away from him. Or stole, should I say. But the assist most certainly going to Skies. Now Pharaoh, unfortunately, he's going to find himself on a ladder. Of course, he's going to be pushing into an interesting position. But the lead's starting to climb now. 50 points here. A break would be ideal for the Gorillas, but we know how hard it is to break through here. Frosty, again, you've got to be screaming, shouting if you're blast, thinking, why are you top L? Why are you there? But he's been a nuisance, and I tell you what, Frosty's going to be rewarded with not only kills, but time as well. As still, Sky is soaking up all that time over a minute of hill time for himself. Yeah, so good. Watching the Gorillas just intercept those pushes from... Oh, sorry, watching the Mutineers intercept those pushes from the Gorillas as they come in on spawn. I mean, they're, they're, and they're anticipating where the play's going to be coming from. They put themselves in a position to cut them off, and it's just been brilliant so far. This hard point has been a full 60 for the Mutineers. Not a problem whatsoever as Pharaoh has begun to light things up at 30 and 18. This is his fourth. Nay, almost fifth. Kill in a row as they have absolutely started to take this one away. There is going to be a solid 20 points now for the win and they can get it done <laughs> as smokestacks. Oh, this game just was Whoa. so close, and it just all started to unfold. It was like a 20, maybe 10-point lead. Now over 100, 250 is looming. They need to get on the hard point. Pharaoh might be called into action for some objective work. No, -uh, not today, Pharaoh. Again, eight kill streak for Pharaoh. He's an absolute machine. Welcome to the Mutineers. Pharaoh takes the victory as well as the rest of the squad. But what a showing. Respawns to the Mutineers. S&D to the Gorillas. LA will lose out to Florida. Florida moving on to play Toronto a little later tonight. But wow, Miles, what a way to end that one. Just domination. Yeah, it really started to fall apart there for the Gorillas. They, I mean, that, that sort of, I want to call it inexperience, showed a little bit where the game just gets ahead of them and they just have no answer whatsoever. They can't anticipate the play there from Florida. They just end up running into their guns. And hey, they will learn, they will improve. These are fantastic players. They've got long careers ahead of them. But until we get to that moment, we are going to be seeing maps like that where they're losing out in big, big score margins. You know, this was not a close hard point. The first hard point was not a close hard point. But again, plenty of time to go back, learn look over the tape and come back swinging next time. Commiserations again to the Los Angeles Gorillas. They will be departing the Dallas home series. We say goodbye. However, I think the Mutineers, I said it at the start of this, I want to see something. I saw something, but it was the first kind of four or five minutes of that game, and then it just started to unfold and collapse, and the Mutineers ran away with it. But hopefully they will come back stronger. Uh, a brand new team, it feels like, but a long way to go. Tough competition, two miles. Yes, tough, tough scenes, man. Tough scenes. It's just what happens. But there we go, dude. That's that's the way of the war. That's the way of the road. That's the way of the warrior. We will be saying a little bit of a farewell now, friends, as we roll on to another series. Again, commiserations to the gorillas. Congratulations to Florida. When we come back after the break, there's more Call of Duty action, friends. Don't go anywhere. Hello and welcome back again. The day Do you two. Want Oh, the CDL broadcast. Yes, it did. I did. I did. I did. <laughs> okay, we didn't check right, in. I got right. a little I didn't bit tell nervous. You, but I did unmute this time. Joe, Joe, what's loading on your screen right now? Azir Cave Hardpoint, mate. I am so excited, Woo! Clint. I cannot wait Woo! to watch some Call of Duty. Let's go. Let's get into this game, Joe. Mutineer. You want some stats, Ultra. Clint? You want some stats? I've got to just spew them at me. Drop those stats on my forehead, Joe. <laughs> Toronto is one in three on this map. Florida is two and two. It's Florida's map pick. All right, here we go, Joe. Off to the races. The winner of this more than likely going to get smoked by the Chicago Huntsman tomorrow, but they have to get to that point first. And you never know what can happen because this is the Call of Duty League where dreams are made, where dreams are destroyed. I ran out of stuff there. I didn't, I didn't really have a very good speech lined up for that, Joe. Yeah, I would say, yeah, dreams are made, dreams are crushed. I mean, yeah, that's just competition at its finest, yes, it honestly. Is, that's, that's what it's about. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That is what it is No about. problem. But uh, nice little start here in the hard point uh, for the guys in the Florida Mutineers. This guy goes hunting, finds a kill outside of Spiral, and snaps right back to yellow. Woo. Yeah, Florida right now just, oh, okay, he continues. I mean, Skies, we know how dominant of an AR he could be. 
He's going to watch over his teammates, but Florida, they're just trying to get all this time on the middle of the hill. You see number three, that's Frost. He's starting to work through outposts. Good pick up by the OBS team. I love that. Skies, he's watching the cross. Frosty, though, just a little bit too many players to deal with. And Toronto, they're just trying to make sure they can lock this rotation down. Yep, they've got it locked down. You at least get, what, 34 points on that opening hard point for Mutineer. So nice job there. But can they get any kind of an early break on the cave side east? Ultra are set up. Who's that still lingering towards me? I believe that's Bans. That was still in a position to get Nine across, more. but he's going to drop. They're going to get the safe spawn, I believe, at least one more time. But now comes the wave that is the Mutineers. They try to get closer to this. The good thing for them, Ultra shouldn't be set up quite in their power position. It's three or four of them were coming off a of spawn. Frosty, though, going to run out of ammo. Skies, though, finds three before he falls. And they've at least got Ultra out of the hard point for now. Yes, you're not getting any time yet, but they've cleared them out. They've made it a little bit sloppy for Ultra. Yeah, and I mean, the good thing is, is they should be able to rotate first to field, but you can see where Ford is actually spawning. This could turn out pretty darn well for Toronto as we rotate to hill number three. But overall, great stuff by Florida. As you said, they kept that hill sloppy. I mean, they've kept their lead so far, and they will keep it as we rotate over. Yeah, I mean, we've seen full 60-point holes there. You're going to get about 35 for Alter. So 25 of those points were dis disrupted by Mutineers. I take that they as a four win. go down, and they win rotation. Yep. Yeah. Even though we don't see a whole lot of points usually earned, Turned on field, you'll still take that early rotation, but typically one one break into broken, and it kind of becomes a contest fest. We haven't seen, like, at least in my eyes, a lot of, like, you know, 40-plus second holds at this particular hard point. But let's see what Mutineers can do. So far, so good, but there's the broken control now for Ultra. Now it just becomes so difficult to get any kind of time once this fight comes, you know, kind of at that 50-yard line with one team controlling each side of the building. Yeah, methods and metals with some nice shots. Going to take them down. You do have Frosty working in the middle of the map. He's going on a big flank. Cammy's on the other side. Frosty gets taken down. Both teams fighting for control, but on rotation towards Cave West, it is Mox. Skies right now, 10 and 6 on a 3 spree. Mox just making sure they could lock down this rotation. Has Pharaoh to help him out. As we go to Cave West, another opportunity for Florida to, to have a nice hold. Minimal lead for Ultra. But as you stated, Florida set up. Slow start for Frosty as he's, what, 3 and 8. But who's going to pick up the slack? We're going to have XPOV with the MP5 as he's going to try and take fight, take fight to range. But your two ARs, they line them all up. Look at that. Mox, Skies, take down four. Frosty finds a fifth and a sixth as one comes off spawn. And that's a, a nice hold in the first wave for the Florida Mutineers. Yeah, I mean, maps where these two can run double ARs, it's going to be great for Florida. I even think you have Farrell on a third one. So, yeah, the, the more of them fours, I think, the better for Florida just because the, the play styles on these teams, when they rotate early on the hills, they should be able to lock them down. And you're seeing that at Cave West now in rotation. Frosty's able to win one. Can he win the second one? He tries to smoke himself out. I like that play. Just make it chaotic. But Classic, he's sitting there up top ready for it. So they're going to give up. Toronto's going to give up the final 10 seconds, or will they? As Cammy continues to put on some pressure, the rest of his teammates are going to rotate over to Outpost. Yeah, to be classic, that has to be big. He's got, you cannot have an early death from this position. He's going to get dropped. This could spell disaster for Ultra early. We've seen that position. Who'd be watched from there? Like God or X on Rock, where we watched multiple times today, where he got to that position by the little hut and he dominated that brain, uh, that that bridge lane. He was so good from there. But his classic gets stunned and aided, maybe a little bit over aggressive from the front. Look at that. You get in almost immediately if you're mutineers. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about the two hills that Florida, or sorry, not Florida, Toronto has rotated early to, KV, so now Outpost, Florida's done a, a great job breaking through and dis disrupting this. This is where that 60-point lead comes in, and you see the kill feed. You, you see the stats right there, Mox on a five spree. They have them pinned in. That is great for our next rotation when we go back to, to the center of the map. That first hill, this is exactly where they want them. A nice first rotation out of the Florida Mutineers. That's fantastic. Now, can they compound upon this lead when we get into the second set? Is everyone will start to track back towards mid map? Havoc's going to try and get the cutoff of multiple players moving over from the last hard point. He got one, but then ended up dropping his three Mutineers players fall. Into the hard point goes Ultra. KV's control for the next will be set up for Mutineers. Methods has to try to stay alive. Oh, does get taken down. He was the only Toronto player over there, and he was in a nice position, but there was just too many Florida members for him to deal with. A 
lot of time so far at this point for all these early in it, but now everybody gets cleared out of mid. There were like four or five players that had just dropped in and around the hard point. Spawn still safe for Mutineers in Cave. Method's doing what he can to disrupt that action inside of yellow, but it's only one that's going to fall. And we touched a lot on Florida, taking a look at the Toronto side. Yeah, Method, who is right where he usually is, right around the one classic leading the way, 18 and 15. You, you want to slay maybe to step up a little bit. I mean, they're still in this game, but here's going to be the question. You have another setup hill for Florida. They hit the early rotation. Now can Toronto, are they going to be able to disrupt it all? And you know how difficult it can be. You have to get that first set of kills. The one thing that did stand out for them, like Metals is double negative. And I'm pretty sure the map one they played against Florida last time, Metals didn't do well. Like he got smoked. I know it's tough yep. to come filling in for Looney, but for now we'll focus on this opening hole. Cammy coming in from the top. This could be the break. He's going to get vision towards the back. Can't finish the first, but finally will be able to track down the kill. You still spawn safe if your mutineer is deep. But the pressure already there from Ultra. We are not going to see a, a clean KV through the first set of two sets of rotation. Uh, I will say, though, I, I think Frosty as well is struggling a little bit. I, I just think from a stat side, in terms of your submachine gun players, it, this is a tough it map is. to play. That's true. That's I mean, true. right, especially when there's six M4s on the map, that is just tough to deal with. There's not a lot of cover. It's tough to finesse. You're going to get caught a lot. So for a guy like Metals, I, I, I get it. it. This map can be tough sometimes. This time through the field, it'll be Ultra here first. Their player broken will fall, so it should be early pressure from Mutineers. It was five in a row for Vance before he dropped from that position. They're trying to do a split push as one player, I think that's Havoc, has tried to hit through mid-map and go in on the flank, so they're gonna have to pick him up Spiral. As soon as he hits Spiral, they push from the front, clean break on in, and that's, a, that's really just Havoc and Skies, right? Two from the back, two from the front, four players from Ultra drop, and there's the tank. Yeah, 25 seconds left. We'll see what both teams opt to do. Toronto, they go at this one more time. They have the spawns for Cave West. And there you see those Aqua arrows start to move into Cave. They're going to have the numbers advantage inside. But look at look at number zero. That's Vance. Is he going to go on a wide flank all the way around? This could work. They can set up the outpost spawns as well for the hill after, but his team has to get the kills. And now this is a little bit scary because you want that rotation. All of his teammates go down and now Florida set up. They're set up, but how long can they hold on? Bance trying to be the difference maker now. He had the big five spree and transition to the last hard point. Can he make some noise now? Metal still hasn't really picked it up, sitting around double negative as we go over to Metal's POV. He's going to be the one on the pinch attack. He's going to catch a stun, but his teammate... There to hell. Who got that kill, actually, on the player in front of him? Did that sh... Metal's got it. Oh, okay, okay. It's because the stun came out. He was just stunned. Oh, he was just oh for stunned. a second. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. For a second, I was like, like wake up, Clint. No, I was like, I was like, nobody has the angle on that. I didn't see any hit markers. <laughs> like, who got that? Yeah, I forgot what the stun. That's because you're stunned. <laughs> I was, I was, stare, oh I was staring at the minimap like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it worked out great, though, for Toronto. They were able to break in. And then, like I talked about, right at the beginning, because bands flipped those spawns, look at the setup they have now for outposts. But this is where Florida was able to get in early on. Frosty's going to find that opener. Farrell's going to find another one, and that's going to open things up in four dead. That just, oh, it's a five dead. It just can't happen, Maven. It literally it can't happen. If you were going to rotate that early and invest that early, th that play right there cannot happen. Who was happen. the first one picked at that outpost ho holding bridge again? Was it Classic again, or who, who got... I'm not sure. Who got but it can't this happen. time? Yeah, it's just way, 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 way too easy. I mean, you're not even making it a couple seconds into the hard point before they're getting into it. It just cannot because happen. Even if you still have these close spawns, what makes it tough is Florida still spawns relatively close. And when yeah. you don't get a guy front outpost, that just means that the hill is going to be spammed by grenades over and over. So you're not going to earn a ton of time. Now you see the position. Look at where the white arrows are spawning right now. They could not be further away from Center Village, which we're about to go back to. So this is huge for Florida. Especially when they're already up 24 points right now. They can put it away here. Havoc is going nuts, by the way. 38 and 26. He is on a 7 spree. He's got the MP5, M4 combo. And he is doing it all. Can he keep the streak going as he gets back to mid? It's going to end there as he drops. So what a map out of Havoc. 
leading the way. And I mean, we've seen that a couple times this year, but more often than not, statistically, it's been the Frosty, it's been the Skies. More recently, it's been the Pharaoh. When Havoc puts up bombs, you've got to think they're going to be winning maps. It's Havoc big streak yeah, ends. It's Skies now on a five streak. He's 34 and 19. You, you just got to imagine with Persini on the bench right now, the first guy in for them is going to be Havoc, right? Just with the pace that he plays at, because the guy who is as fast or faster than him on the roster is Pristini. So now that he's out, it's Havoc first yeah, in. Yeah. So the fact that your entry guy has 38, 39 kills on a map like Cave is great for Florida. But can they win the map now? They have the rotation. You can't One play player, fast that was bench, Frosty. Yeah. That, that's, that is correct. Yep. Yes. No, you, you you can slide around on the on the wood pine, but that could hurt. <laughs> There's a splinter in my... All right. So, <laughs> Ultra, 41 points needed, 25 needed for Mutineers. Florida looking to deliver the knockout punch here in map one and, well, potentially end Ultra's tournament hopes and a hope of their first semifinal. But Ultra are able to burst in at least for a moment. But to trade that out, it will be Skies. It will be a lovely double yet again for Havoc. 30 seconds remaining on the hard point and not many points needed for Mutineers. They have to pick up one final push from Cave, and that should be it. I mean, right now, I just took a look. They are plus 30 in the kill. Is it kill really that drastic? In. Plus 30. How is the game even that close? Like it, That's it's... what I was I, about. That was literally about to be my point. I did some very quick math, right, with my big head. And, uh, yeah, plus 30 uh, when it, when I when I saw that scoreboard. So, the fact that Toronto were in this game the way they were, I mean, that, that's a story in yeah, itself. Yeah, some old Red Florida, Reserve stats, bro. Get out slayed by 30, have a close game. <laughs> yeah, Florida, though, able to, able to close it out. Uh, they'll get the map one done. I think it's uh, hard to pick them. I mean, they're, they're absolutely the favorites in this series, even if it's a new look roster with Pharaoh in place. But there's a map one win. Skies, 37 kills. Havoc with a 41 bomb. Pharaoh not far behind with 35. Uh, it, you see the slaying power is there. Maybe they need to tighten up a little bit on, I, I guess, positioning around the objective because you would think it'd be a little bit more of a blowout with that type of slaying edge. But... Usually, Joe, hell, you're going to fry like that. Uh, the objective becomes <laughs> secondary. More often than not, you're going to win. Yeah, I, I mean, and, it, and it's similar to what we saw yesterday, you know, between these two teams. Uh, Florida, they control most of the hard point. They're able to take game one. But what was Toronto able to do? What was our game field key to victory for Toronto to, to win this series or at least get us to the distance? They had to win the search and destroys. And we're going back to a game two, which I believe is Ramaza. That was the game five yesterday. This is a very strong map for Toronto. They're sitting at 4-1. and one. What did Florida learn from yesterday? What are they going to adjust? That's the big story going into map two. Yeah, it's interesting, though, because I feel like with most teams, you can take their map stats, and it applies to this. Like, they're 4-1 and one on this. Mm. Great. They should be. But there's been so many changes to Toronto. How much does that 4-1 on one apply when who knows who was even on the roster when they were getting those wins? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's still like... Well, at least they played them yesterday and lost. So 1-0, how about that, well, no, Maven? 1-0. That's, true. One that's true, but you know what I mean. Like 4-1, on one, it's like they, they might have had four <laughs> yeah. different rosters for like, those wins, but... They probably did. Yeah, we'll take a look at the scuff play of the game, though, before we get ready for the search and destroy. Um, I, I, remember, I remember watching them, actually, on Ramaza a couple of times. I think the guy that really stood out for me was Classic, but... The guy right now that went off on the side of Florida was Skies. Well, Skies, Havoc, a bunch of those Skies will be our scuff play of the game as he made play after play. Yeah, we'll see what he was able to do. I mean, there was just so many multi-kills that, you know, these these players were able to define it. And we talked about the, the ARs for Florida and why this is a strong map for them. Here you see Skies find three kills just watching over his teammates. He's been so good for this team throughout this season. Yeah, I think we all knew he was going to get to this point. It's just, I guess I'm wondering when, you know, he's obviously on the Mutineers team. He's kind of, in a way, been their superstar, but I don't know if we've seen him peak yet. Like, is this a guy that, I don't know, how far can he go? Uh, I, I just think he's only going to get better from this point, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I, I don't think we've seen the best of guys yet. Well, I mean, listen, Florida better lock him down before TikTok takes over, right? And he becomes a TikTok star. Well, that, we, we want him to stay that, in Call of Duty, see, right? Well, what I was going to say, and no disrespect to Florida, that or a top team in the standings goes after him, which which might not happen anytime soon, but you want to lock him down, yes, from his TikTok career and potentially getting poached by another roster down the road. Like I, I think, Unless I think they he's been throw that him that super max. Yeah, be throwing him in the bag.
Uh, doing what you can to make sure you lock the him Duffy? in. The Duffy? The double <laughs> bag? You get in the war zone? Yeah, yeah. They gotta get that super max. But end of round one is Ultra. Get right in towards the A site. They're able to take down two. Frosty, Pharaoh, Havoc left up for Mutineers. Trying to bring it back in a 3v5. Yeah, this was just a fast A hit. They just go right across the bridge. They find the first two kills. And I mean, this is going to be a very quick round. Uh, not much for Florida to do. Uh, it's all up to Frosty now in a one on three and a pretty tough task. A one and it's over. They had a 1v4 and an ace, I believe, earlier today, or 1v3. He had some absurd play just a few hours ago, but not going to happen here as medals will close yeah. out the round. Yeah, I mean, we talked about medals and maybe his struggles in map one, but yesterday when they played this map, he took over. I think he finished on 11 or 12 or 13 kills. It was a lot of kills and led the way for Toronto, so we'll see what he can do in this one. I'll try to bounce back from that map one, see if he can do it. Ultra looks so clean on offense. Now to the defensive side. Nice start from Methods and Vance as they'll tally up four of the five kills. Classic around so Cafe there, is yeah. what stood out for me. The last time I, I cast these guys play. He just was entry well, after entry go. after entry around Cafe. He'll end up dropping, but not before he gets two. He was just a first Ooh. one machine. I don't know how he dies before the second melee gets off, but that's the MP5 for you. He just gets obliterated. Massive numbers to yeah. hold though, still. <laughs> like you said, Classic's just locking down the Cafe. I mean, they flew on in. It was a very fast split towards this B site from Florida, but they are just depending on cafe control because that opens up different lines of sights near that truck. Pharaoh, though, he's going to back on up with Mox. able to find a fit a pick. Forces a two on three, but Bomb is down, and it's in a tough position. It certainly is. How are they going to try and work back to this? Well, Probably not going to happen. Pharaoh, but Pop's though. steady. He, he can make the play. There's a, I mean, this is an open. They are split. He has two one-on-ones right now. And he might find the timing for methods. Got, this this could be it. Less than half of his daddy left. Oh, oh no! Oh, he's on the other side. Oh, he's on the outside. Okay, he's on the outside part of it. That's. I felt the same oh, way geez. for a second. I was like, yeah, dude. Me. The X-ray. It messed with me. Yeah, he's on the outside part right here. Ooh. And he's able to find. Ooh, that was a snap. Mm. That was actually a nasty snap from Pharaoh. Uh, unfortunately, still no amount of snap can uh, account for methods pre-end here at the corner. But almost gets it done. Yeah, no, the X-ray totally screwed me up there. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> 2 0. So ultra. Yeah, I mean, so far so good. Again, we we touch on how difficult it is to, you know, beat a team twice on a map when, you know, they have a night to go over film, make adjustments, but hey, you can make some adjustments as well. What is uh do you have the stats in front of you? Like what is Toronto overall in search? Overall, yeah, is that is that in the email we have? Uh, I did not have that. Okay, no, not a big deal. I was just curious. I could find it. I might have some there. Hold on. Oh, no, nope. these are stats from hours ago. I take it back. Toronto is six and four overall. Six and four. So, uh, yeah, this is their shrine. They're four and one mode. on this one. Yeah, it's got to be the strongest mode. This is their strongest map in mode. So oh. wait, they, they've won this. They've got this fifty percent of their searches. Dang. More than that. We said they're four and one. They played ten total, right? Did you say they were yeah. Six and four? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I just meant so wins. But classy oh, with a huge play. Oh, I mean play. like overall of their search. Like they played. They played this half the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's too late for this. What are you saying? It's it's too, you're still going. Tri trigonometry. <laughs> and you missed the Nikki D special. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, Nikki D's a beast, bro. Seven and two. He he is he is the cafe. He's one with the cafe. He's in there making <laughs> an espresso, just dump it on the opposition. I like I could go for an espresso, but then I'd be up all night. Yeah, no, I already am gonna be up all night. I had to heavily caffeinate for this final series, Joe. I like that. That's why I, I love about you. You're dedicated. Yep, I'm going to make you FaceTime me till I fall asleep, too. Uh, I have no problem with this. <laughs> 3 0 Ultra. But they're going to be down a man in this particular round. A, a chance for Mutineers, you think, have to get a round victory if they're going to start to get back in this with the numbers. Do they know Cammy's here? Do they know Cammy is in the position that he is? Skies is able to pick you up on it. Methods found one, so it's going to be a 2v3. Bants with Dead Silence trying to make the play, but guess what? That's going to run out. Now they're going to hear you. 
But he's gonna find Mox before that happens. Twenty seconds to go. Two v two. Frosty able to find the angle. Just I thought he was just gonna hold it, but he goes for the push. He's gonna get caught. I like this. He just jumps on it. He just jumps on it right away. It's, uh, he might have it. He he might have this. He didn't finish okay, it. Okay, Florida got it. Okay. Oh. Yeah, no, didn't, didn't finish how, it in how time. Close I got a little nervous. How close? Oh no, I'm gonna bring so up our, our. I know I'm gonna bring up our program. Oh, uh, it was like point five seconds oh, it had away. To be. I, I, I was waiting yeah. to see who won that. That reminded me of like that gunless play where you got the kill and I wasn't sure like who had it because it's so close to it being done. Unbelievable. Well, he got like straight headshots too. It's a good thing, guys, because he has melted him. But wow. That was a close one, but a much needed round victory for Mutineers. Breathe some life, life into the squad in this surge. And there's that split B push coming out of Toronto. They take Cafe control, but Pharaoh's able to find the first blood on the Vance. Pharaoh's able to find the second one. But Cami and Metals quickly turn this into a 3v3, but the rotation is here. Now, how do you get the bomb down? You saw he was trying to pre-fire that window to give him cover. He didn't have the angle as Mox was playing deep from it. And Mox stops the plant. But now 2v2, one wrapping through ruins, one holding cafe. It's Havoc with Dead Silence looking for the angle. Should have a free kill in front. Almost slid directly in front of him. But there he'll pick up the kill. Metal's now 1v2. Chance for Mutineers to rip off two rounds in a row. And he's working up towards Deddy. I don't think he's going to get it before this round's over. Havoc still has his. He's going to peak once again, wins the gunfight. And there, as you said, two rounds in a row for Florida. They're right back in this one. Good use of uh, Dead Silence there from Havoc. He gets the key kill. It also gives him position to really easily look over the bomb. Nice play from Havoc, who was a monster in that map one. Toronto, maybe feeling this map slip away a bit as they were looking to run away from it. Ha uh, Classic started at what, 7 and 1, 7 and 2, and then he's been first blood or like dropped early in the round. See if he can get back to dominate. Classic not going to be a cafe this round. He's going to play towards B with methods, and there's he gets first blooded again. So that early round impact he was having not going so well for him. And well, oh, that's been a big part of why I think Mutineers are getting back into this. Yeah, I'm surprised he stayed away, you know, from Cafe because Florida goes right back to Cafe and then Metals tries to get inside. He gets taken down. And Florida's just playing patiently. The rotations come in from Toronto. Skies is sitting there waiting for Cami. They're not even playing the bomb yet because they know they're going to have to peak. And that is a fall this round for Florida. That is three rounds in a row. We are all tied up. Yeah, and it's, dude, I tell you, Classic went from what? Getting two to four kills basically around in the early going, especially around mid map and since then nothing so i don't know if he was trying to mix up the position because he just thought he was being kind of a predictable read and toronto was starting to pick up on it or sorry or florida was starting to pick up on it i'm not sure yeah it's one of those things where like cafe is i think for both sides a bit of a gamble because it's not necessarily needed to defend the bomb site right like you don't have to have cafe to defend b so it's just one of those things where if he plays in there alone and he gets traded or you know, gets taken down in a 2v1, that just ends up bad. But with how strong he was playing, you oh, thought no. he would be there. Skies, oh, though, no. right right behind him. Wait. Oh, but Metal's found it. Oh, I Snipped thought, him out. I thought for sure Skies had a free kill. He used Deddy to get to that point, which is laying prone. I thought for sure he had at least one. But he gets caught. If not two. <laughs> Barrel with the challenge. What was that? I think a 5v3, now a 3v3. Nice win, though, by Metals and Bants. Pharaoh left to try and clutch this. Not going to be able to do it. Ultra for now. Stop the bleeding. Yeah, I, I mean, I love Pharaoh's play, right? He's able to win the one-on-one. -on -one. He forces some other gunfire, able to stay alive, just hoping his teammates can win gunfights on the other side of the map. But Bants, I, I mean, listen, when you give up construction, the plank goes down. There's just so many, like... You know, you know, nooks and corners to check. That it, it's just tough. I mean, he's all the way top three with that MP5, just peeking it. That is a tough bomb site to retake. This 
standouts right now. Pharaoh. Still kind of methods in classic. Classic is not a four, three or four rounds in a row. What's been impressive for Pharaoh is just how many first bloods that he's gotten in these past couple rounds as well. Sure. This time it's classic. He gets aggressive. Him and Cammy, they push something out. They go back to their to their special. And they're able to find three kills. They take that gamble that we were talking about. So it, it seems like so many rounds where a team has had like two man advantage, and then suddenly it's just the odds even out almost instantly. We get down to a 2v2, 50 seconds to go. One player defensively on the site. That's gonna be Metals in a position to deal with this. He's got dead silence to use to make a play. Frosty's is going to run out, and he's going to work to get the plant down. When does Metals pounce? Does he wait he's for now. He's, he's going to pop the deadie and go, but he Doesn't can't finish the kill. the kill. Can't finish the kill, and now his teammate's going to track across the map, but that element of surprise is gone, Joe. All right, they, they know where Frosty is, though. Like, they, this should still be a kill for them, and it will be. But Havoc's there for the trade now. Where's Methods? We have a one versus one. Havoc slides the corner. A nice little pre-fire with the MP5. Able to win a huge one-on-one. -on -one. I think he finishes it right before the stunner flash hits. Like, he finishes this, and then pop. He's going to get yep, hit right by it almost him. immediately after. See how battle hard. If That's it's true. a stun, though, as well, he can still shoot still through it. And finish it. Yeah, it's true. I mean, that come, that Metals gets that kill. The first one on the cross probably doesn't get traded out in that scenario, and they likely win the 2v1. Can't finish it. They end up losing it. All right, Toronto. I mean, Toronto, they take Cafe. But what does Florida do? They just go right up to the half wall, and Frosty's able to take two kills. It's like, all right, we'll give you this, but we're going to take this from you. Frosty with this third does get taken down. It is left now to Cameo Metals. And like you said, this is the, these rounds at the beginning have been so fast. Oh, they're it, I, I, I've, I've been watching Classic on the minimap, and he, he is just sprinting until he fights fly. He's just hitting, until he yeah, he's just hitting doors. He's winning it or he's not yep. winning it. He's just going. And he's not the only oh, one that is a person. That, but... just saw his head. There's a pick. 2v2 now. Because typically what we, we've... I feel like the trend that we've been seeing is that teams have been like stacking A and, and retaking it's like stacking a bomb set on defense and, they, and they're okay with retaking it but these teams have just been bull charging each other a couple of bulls only one bull can be left handed Joe and they're both seeing red <laughs> Cammy, a lone man looks like he'll be able to get this plant down then what can he do from the post plant he's gonna be very close to daddy but pharaoh's already got his popped as he starts moving on through Emmy's yeah, got it popped, but obviously he's defending, so we can't really. Maybe he can find the 50 50 timing. He can reset it. He's able to spot Pharaoh, but Pharaoh spots him. Now, what's the play? Moss is going to hold. He re challenges. He plays Ooh. it so well. The 1v2 from Cammy. Oh, that challenge on this first. Then the set. Look at this little snap. The movement. Oh, Pharaoh's reloading. Oh. He's reloading and that time. You no, know, Cammy is so weak, but he just hits him with the hop, hop. The hip hop, hop. Oh, what a play from Cammy. And that that's a that's a painful round because that would have been what five four edge to Florida. One round away from taking this. Without one V2 though, Cammy and Ultra back in front. And well, Pharaoh switches it up. Another first blood for him. That is his third or fourth. He brings out the sniper. Classic. He's not in cafe, but he's watching it. Pharaoh finds another pick on a cami. And that will open up the A site. We haven't seen a ton of sniping here, right? Like, so many maps where we've seen it make its mark. Like, you haven't seen nearly as much, but Pharaoh. <laughs> I'm just laughing at Clyde. You were talking about Classic. He just Dude, goes. He's, like, he's, just, friend, no. he's just trying to find random timings. 100%. And hopefully, he gets multiple 100, kills. 100,000 percent. I love it. I love he's it, dude. He's just going, bro. He's winning it or he's losing he's it. Just like, he's like, you know what? It's a 3v5. I'm going to try to find two. I'll be right back. It doesn't matter yeah. what the scenario is. He's going. <laughs> Uh, yeah. The man wants to go fast. Round 11. Game 2. Huge for Ultra as they're already down 0-1 in the series. I like that from Pharaoh though. Pulls out the sniper. Little sniper, switch it up. Picks. Yeah. He's 11-9 and nine now. 
I would imagine he doesn't have it, but can we just take a peek? Maybe he kept it out. Worked out so well. Ave, talk about oh. timings. He might have found one. Oh my. That should be a first blood, and it will be. Oh, yeah. That's going to pick a pork. In a second. Pick a pork. They set up completely. Vance wins a big one, but Frosty gets a kill as well. Waiting patiently on the other side of the smoke will be Frosty. Three versus two now. Numbers the Mutineers. They've already thrown away one 2v1, though. And Cammy was the hero that made the play. Cammy might be the one to do it again. Cammy with two kills turns it into a two versus two. Mox and Frosty. Maybe beginning to panic a bit. Ah. Florida Mutineers will get it done, though. They'll get the final couple of kills. I thought for a second that Cammy made the play to get the win for Ultra. But Florida, go up 2-0. Yeah, and I mean, I, I didn't see much of the Game 5 yesterday, but it feels like Florida just sort of adopted, you know what, let's just start hitting some timings. And you saw it there in Round 11 from Havoc. You know what? I'll tell you what, it, maybe we see that if we're on like a main stage, but maybe that like well, online environment, he's just sort of like, no, screw it. Uh, but I, I, I think if it was a different player, yeah, but no, it's Havoc. I don't think it would have mattered. Yeah, that's Havoc would have done that anywhere. At least that's how I that's see it. That's <laughs> true. But he, he found the timing. Yeah. And that's why I think some teams, you know, a good amount of teams stay away from Ramaz at times. There's just so many openings. There's so many, you know, different levels to it. Where you give up one lane if you don't execute fast enough, that's exactly yeah, what happens. Yeah, it, feel, it feels to me, and I don't have the data in front of me for it, but it feels like the least played search. At, le at least, especially for when you and I commentate, yeah. like we get very few yeah. Ramazes uh, matched up between these squads. But that will bring us to 2 0. Florida Mutineer is going to be in front. This is our final series of the night. This is finding our fourth team to make it to CDL Sunday. Four teams will remain to battle it out for one victor but we need to get uh we need to get our final squad but coming up next it will be the domination ultras tournament lives in the brink they've got to get this victory to extend this series we'll be right back after this quick break we're going to take a look at the u.s army tactical play uh right as we get ready for this domination but joe where you think about Ultra where they've got to get the map with victories. It has to happen in Search and Destroy. There they're going to fall short. Now you think they're really, really in trouble because Mutineers, they've been pretty solid and dumb. Yeah, they're they're a solid domination team. And, you know, we just saw this yesterday where they were able to win this game three. So, yeah, what we talked about, the, the keys of victory. We felt like Toronto, you know, they had to win the Search and Destroy, you know, extend this series, put the pressure on Florida. It doesn't happen. I mean, they've been close games. You have, what, like a 25-point hard point, around 11. I mean, Toronto's been right there, but that is literally the story of their entire season. They have been right there, just have not been able to execute when it matters. Absolutely. And Mutineers, I mean, maybe this is their chance to, to make a run again. Uh, you know, they did it in an unexpected fashion last time around to get that second-place finish a couple of events ago. Mm -hmm. um, they've already shown that they can beat a team when you don't think they will, I mean, yes, with the Huntsman thing and Pristini versus Arsides, there was maybe a little bit more to that from an emotional standpoint and an energy standpoint. Well, I mean, London, I'll tell but... you what, though. If she, if they do end up playing Chicago tomorrow, I think that's going to be a bit of a, you know, I think Huntsman is, they're going to come out with a little bit, a, a lot of energy. Not a little bit, a, a lot of Huntsman, energy. Yeah, because, if I, Huntsman would yes. come out and try to destroy them and make exactly. sure they couldn't compete again, I beat them so bad. Yeah, I, I, would, I would think so. Right. Well, Joe, uh, I think they're into the game. I don't know about you, but on my screen, I am seeing a multiplayer lobby suddenly. Right. So this, yep, I am as well. So we're going to try to get that worked oh, out. Oh, there we're we back. go. Okay, okay, we're back. We're back. <laughs> we just wanted <laughs> you guys to check out this yeah, season three our background. Second, I was like, Joe, I don't know how to cast this dude just standing here. <laughs> yeah, it's no problem. Just check out. I mean, all season right. three is out. There's a lot of new content. Yeah. Check it all yeah. out, baby. Oh, I thought it was just me for a moment. I was like, whoa. I could put skins on my vehicles in Warzone, Clint. Yes, you can. Big Bertha's coming for you. Oh, uh, I hate Big Bertha. <laughs> uh, She's a bully. Trying to get B control. How are the mutineers? They're there, but there's a one-on-one -on -one happening. I think the one-on-one -on -one goes to metals. He's able to hit the grenade, take out Pharaoh, and make sure B does not get done. Frosty, yeah, Vance actually made the play, though. Vance, Vance was the one who neutraled C, and now he's just trying to play his life. So while, while Florida had a big push towards B, Vance was able to sneak through neutral C. 
Cammy was trying to do what he can, but with that gunfight going the way of Florida, that should be C back to them. But again, because Bant was able to neutral it, Florida had to wrap back, and AB hold is coming through for Toronto. They got that preferred hold. And what can they do with it? Trying to push through, I believe, towards green and back towards mid is Skies. So on the other side of the map, kind of bottom is Mox that's working up, maybe working towards an A neutral. Skies keeps doing the dirty work with the MP5 inside a vent room. He's going to end up dropping. Mox still looking for an opening towards the bottom side of the map. Now he's going to end up going for it. Can he get this neutral off? It looks like he's going to be able to do it before the pressure gets there. That's going to turn two heads, though. That's, I was going to say that's the big thing. It turns two players around. Unfortunately, his teammate, though, lost the gunfight at B. So instead of you know having a one-on-one, -on -one, winning it, getting B, while Mox turns heads to A, they don't get either of the points. Yeah, and Pharaoh spawned like mid crates. So Pharaoh is able to immediately put pressure on A. He's able to win that. So Toronto get B back. They're also putting pressure on C. They have to be careful here. I feel like you don't want to give up A. Bance is rotating back. He's able to win the first gunfight on the Frosty. And with that gunfight, you see all the white arrows come up. So well, I, I like that. I got a little bit nervous, but we're able well, to hold on A. I think they were good because I think it was two and four. It was Skies and Pharaoh that spawned up, and they, they spawned really deep towards C. So I don't think they were at risk of any flip happening until they were able to get up the map, and they just had to trek so far because they got really deep. Maven, we spawned. have seen players spawn back train, front train. I do not trust that. Well, they just had one back. That. They had one back bottom, one back top. So I... I don't all think I'm saying is this, is if Vance loses that gunfight, that's all I'm saying. We've seen it happen yeah, quite a right. bit. You're right, you're right. It's possible. It might have. We have seen uh, just about everything here, haven't we, Joe? Everything. Even a draw, Joe! Yeah, we we saw a draw today. We, we did. Yeah. I know you want to see another one. You love this. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, Joe. At this point, wait, well, hey, just hit midnight for you, right? It's technically Sunday for you. I, yeah, Championship Sunday. Hey, CDL Welcome Sunday to Championship here. Sunday. Woo! Welcome to Championship Sunday. How, what? How is he 16 and 5? Because he's a beast. Skies is nasty. They haven't even had two flags most of the time. <laughs> yeah. You watch it. Yeah, when you're a TikTok phenom, you know no rules, Joe. You know no rules. All right. I like that. CB control for mutineers. Who's working up for the neutral? That's going to be Cammy. He's going to be able to hop on it for a moment. Nobody's even close because that deep spawn they get top right of the minimap. The grenades will come through, though. They're able to double nade him off the site. They should be able to retake C. Nice one-on-one -on -one win there for Metals. He actually takes down two, and he'll be able to neutral B. I, I, what's weird about this for me, though, is like I feel like... If I wasn't paying attention to the score, I, I, I you, you know, we kind of stare at the minimap throughout this, right? We just sort of stare yep. at the minimap when we're commentating. I guess I sort of feel like Ultra should be winning by more than they are. I, I don't know well, why. There was just a lot of neutrals going yeah. on, huh? Yeah, Honestly, they, there's been a lot of neutrals that have been happening. Florida have done a good job that just continue to put pressure on, right? You, you neutral at the right time, you, you waste a tick for them. I think the start is too, the start as well, Florida had a much better start. Yeah, I think that's the plan. Just try to neutral as many flies, oh, and heck, true. why not go for, uh, for the CB hold that they're able to get? Well, you know, really, a few yeah, more ticks will neutrals. come in, and they're going to take this down to, what, six, seven points? Well, the neutral kind of speaks to how low scoring of a half it was, right? Like, no yep. one's going to... Oh, I think you're going to hit 70. That's it. You got one... I mean, I mean, listen, Toronto had the AB spawns most of the half, which is exactly what they wanted, but they didn't control AB the way they wanted to. They weren't putting pressure. They weren't neutraling that C flag. Now into the second half. Can Florida Mutineers get into another semifinal? Or Toronto, can they show something? I mean, they've, they've been to so many game fours, so many game fives. You don't usually see them go out in a 3-0 fashion, but Frosty and Skies lit them up in the first half and, and i think for florida to be like consider to be can you know continue to be considered middle of the pack can they move their way up into like the, the top echelon of teams uh -oh. this has to be uh -oh. a, a group that they uh -oh. can get out of it does but i'm saying i don't know because the flip has already happened you've already got a side control for ultra that didn't take long at all joe no, it didn't. I think it was uh, Metals who was able to make a few plays alongside 
his teammates. And as you said, now Toronto, they're just going to hold AC. Continue to grow that lead. You don't see this too often, but hey, why not? Just have one player, well, two players camp C, three towards this A side. Well, yeah, it looks like Mutineers, like we haven't been in this spot this off. They're trying to figure out what they want to do. What they want to do is let Skies get killed. Let Skies get to work. 21 and 11 now from Skies. Problem is, is you have had two spawns at both flags. Like you just had Metal spawn up towards back A, then you had Cami spawn back C. Now you have Florida spawning back C. You never know what you're going to get on Gunrunner Dom. I thought Skies was about to kill the entire team, though, but I think he had four in a row before he dropped. That lead, though, now up to 18 for Ultra, but there's CB set up for Mutineers. And with three and a half to go and down 17, they, 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 they've got to hold this for the next 90 or so seconds at least. they got to get back into this. Yeah, we just haven't seen a lot of crazy, you know, long-term CB holds. Uh, because they can put the pressure on that C fly so easily. You have to control pipes for those easy rotations. That's what Havoc's trying to do right now. Has the help of Frosty, comes up off spawn, and you see he has three players to deal with crate side. Toronto, they continue to fly on through. Cami and Classic, double C is able to find those kills. Classic with a nice snap on the Mox, and here comes that neutral again. When you have this lead in the second half, the clock is your best friend. It is just been all. All oh, Ultra, Cami and Classic just cutting through. If we take a look at the stats quickly, I just want to see what kind of Terra Classic is on right now. It feels like he's had five or six in a row. At least it seemed like it. Or maybe it's them getting the Cs all mixed together as they were pushing through. Oh, yeah, he definitely had five or six kills in a row. He had to have. They just mowed through them container side. 15-point advantage for Ultra. I mean, he's only 15 and 14. I don't know what this streak got to, but man, he turned him and Cammy turned their games around there. Cammy now 19 and 17 as well. Finally, some kills for Mutineers, and back to CB we go. They can still yeah, win this game back. in the hole. They can still win it, but it's so hard. Like it's so spread. That CB two hole is so wait. spread. <laughs> two players just spawned back C for Toronto. <laughs> that what just happened? I think mean, that's what just happened. Okay. I was. I'll be honest with you. I was looking at B. I didn't even notice. Okay. Yeah, two players from Toronto just spawned back C. So uh, they're able to pinch towards B, and now they have a neutral on B. Okay. And four go down. Okay. They spawned back B, like at the top, or back no, 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 C? No, they spawned back C, like like to the to Mo like towards B side, like right right like where Mox is going right now. Oh, where Mox is. Oh, okay. All right. I'm trying to think of why that happened, but all right. Don't have the answer for you. Yeah, that's okay. Well, We're going to try to bounce back now. now. Yeah. Desperation time. They got to get B control and a neutral. If they're going to take this win, ultra win all the fights around the B cap. More than likely, that is going to cement it. Everybody from Mutineers coming off a of spawn. You get a strong game out of a couple players on Mutineers, but also a couple of duds as well. Mox can't get anything going. Havoc can't find the rhythm. He found the hard point on Cave to start off this match. And on the other end of it, I mean, really where it turned around is when Classic and Cami turned up. And Methods has been consistent throughout. 40 and, seconds and this was big to to for Toronto because, you know, we got a Hackney Yard hardpoint next. And that's when they were able to win yesterday against Florida. That's how they got it to a game five. So the fact they're able to seal this down away is big for them. I mean, we could, our, we know, we could have ourselves a, a series now. I'm going to be honest, though. I, I'm going to go back while you talk the last 20 seconds and see why that happened. You gonna pull it up and see? All right, yeah. No, I'm curious because it. I, I wasn't really focused on that. I, I I just thought they were all lumped around B. I don't even think I realized they popped there. And just, okay, so I, I found it. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna guys know this for you, so you can see what yeah, I'm talking watch about. Watch it. Watch it in point two five. Oh no! I I just you'll see. Okay. Ultra. They get the win. They stay alive. They get to a hard point. Not done yet, Joe. Not done yet. We're, we're gonna, gonna put, we're gonna put this so I can look at it. Um, I'll put it in our team speak. Okay. All right. You know. I'm ready for it when you have it. All right. So, skies plus nine. Not quite enough. Consistent, really, across the board for ultra. But that'll get mm -hmm. us to another hard point as they get what a 28 point victory.
excellent stuff. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna d I'm gonna DM it to you. Okay, that works too. I can open that. I've got multiple computers in front of me. Let me hop over to my other one so I can. Yeah, I just want to show you what happened. There we go. Yeah. All right, cool. All was right, it, so was yeah, it like exactly I said. what you thought. Y yep. All right, so oh. hacking yard. Oh, I thought you were saying closer to B. So you're saying all the way deep C. I got you. Well, yeah. You had nobody deep. No, you, you had, can't. You can't. You can't make well, an argument. You had nobody that one. deep for mutineers, but still, there there wasn't anyone pushed up really either. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's the the now beauty of YouTube, right? We can go back. Yeah. No, that was that was the turning point where they had to the, they had to hold on. You're like they have to hold here, and that's where they didn't hold. That's tough. That is tough, but it does give Ultra a chance in this game. Where are we headed for map four, Joe? Hackney Yard. We saw it yesterday. Toronto was able to win this one. It was a very close game. So, uh, yeah, we'll see if they can win it again. And who do you know who's spawning allegiance for this? Um, I can take a look for you. Yeah, if you have that. Up. Oh well, uh, this is this would be Toronto's map pick. So okay, so Toronto yeah. should be allegiance. Well, coalition. Oh, yeah, no, they'll have coalition, the better side. Coalition. Yeah, so they'll have the weak side. Okay. All right. Well. We'll see if they can do it again, playing from the weak side. As you imagine, they'll be looking at a pretty big hole to dig themselves out of early. Got a shot of the Mutineers as they're talking through their inability to close it out in a 3-0 fashion. But at least they got a couple maps to work with due to the hot start in the series. Yeah, they do. And uh, I mean, uh, again, it was a close hackney yesterday. I'm sure they, you know, found a, a few mistakes that they had to fix, and maybe they'll be more prepared for this this Hackney Yard. Just trying to see if I could read lips to see what they were talking about, Joe. I, I'm not able to do that. You don't have that talent? No. Um, that, that would be impressive. No. I mean, you could have made some up, and I would have believed you, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was trying to see what Skies was saying. I got nothing. But uh, you see there, for the bracket... Empire Rocker Huntsman lying in wait. Winner of this is going to go up against the Huntsman. Is Huntsman looking to get their second win? Empire looking to get their second win. Rocker trying to get their first on the board, and then potentially the winner of this looking for a first tournament as well. But this would be a first semifinal for Toronto if they can do it. Mutineers, no stranger to a semifinal or grand final so far this year. Not like it's been the norm, but no stranger to it. Yeah, and again, I, I mean, I, I think I was talking about it in the middle of that game, but like when you looked at this group, this is one of the weaker groups that we had when you just talk about Toronto's performance, right? The Gorillas' performance. Yeah, well, this had to be one, I think, for Florida. You, you have yeah. to make the point to get out. So, sort of like I said, for the top teams and phases in here, you really need to take advantage of that to get a win. When you narrow it down to the groups, yeah, for like the weaker. Not not the weaker teams, you know, the more middle of the pack or even weaker teams like a Toronto. Like when you have that easy group, take advantage. I mean, that with this format, it's all about taking advantage. It is not seated every single weekend. That would be that'd be crazy. With this format, you're gonna have great groups. You're gonna have tough groups. When you have the ones that look good, you need to get points. You've got to. Now you gotta take advantage of it. We'll see if they can do that here. Will it be Toronto? We get themselves into a semifinal for the first time this year. On board with medals. Able to take down two. The trades are there, but Classic with a nice nade. He's going to get on this hill. Florida just making sure they control that tire shop side, the right side of your minimap. Well, medals. He <laughs> just got to get through there. And Frosty just hammers right off past him. Junior still. Good job controlling. Ultra, just trying to soak up as much time as possible. They get plus 40 on the board. That would be great. That's a nice nice reason up from behind. Now the push in from Ultra, though. They're trying to push all the way to the top side. Dance and Metals are going to get through. Can they win all the fights? They've got to win about 100 to get the spawns. Doesn't look like they're going to be able to do it. By the time Cammy gets there, the action is already done. Frosty with a nasty triple to hold that side of the map. But it was a valiant effort there from Mutineer, or sorry, from Ultra. Just couldn't quite get through. But the other thing, though, by trying to make that push, by sending two, three players to try and get through, you give a lot of time on that point to the Mutineers as well. I, I thought Cammy was going to try to make the play there. He, he was trying to sneak through towards the hill. You see how really deep 
Florida is going. Like, look at how far the middle of the map that they are. We typically don't see this. They are staggering the push for Toronto. Look, you have medals go. Where are his teammates? Like, why, why are you so staggered? This is where you have to wait for one another. In, in Florida doing a, a, a very good job. Toronto has not been able to touch this hill. Toronto not able to touch this one, but they got to get some action on the next one. We'll head over to Smokestack. Ultra battling for their lives, trying to get to a map five, which has been their domain all year. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listen in with the Toronto Ultra. I got nade again, Mark. Yo, one's gone shit. Top three, top three. He went top three, top three. Top three, top three. Top three, top three. Top green, top green. Top green, top green. Top green in here. They could be top out. Top yellow, top yellow, I think. Top yellow, top yellow. 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 Top
And I don't. I, Metal's oh, just doing no a good teammates. job what's staying he here right now. Yeah, he's he's gonna win a gunfight. Not able to do that. You win that one, maybe you can get some help. Or well, maybe you just sit there for a little bit and hang yeah, out. Yeah, the problem is the help is even close. Like, even if he wins that, he's dead. Yeah, well, like, then, then right. you sit there. What's what's the difference? Just sit there yeah. and wait. Yeah, I mean, what's the difference? Yeah. I just looked at the map when he got there, and I was like, there is no teammate anywhere. <laughs> Just about well, these 20 seconds. Yeah, these 20 seconds after this, you're going to be, what, 220? Down about 100, and you go to smokestack and office where a little bit more contest heavy, a little bit easier to break. This is going to be, be tough for Toronto. This could be their tournament life. They're going to do something. They got to do it soon. They can't give any any time to mutineers right now through smokestack because if they're going to bring this back you think it's got to somehow be a clean office in the docks but you got to get there first somehow so far so good i mean they're dominating mid, mid map right now benjamin bant's doing a great job as he's going to locate a double yeah I mean, he's going off I, he he's almost at 30 kills that might be the 30 bomb already for bants now bants has been nasty in this map but they had no one getting time throughout that entire sequence like he's roaming around dominating the bottom L, then he has to get to the hard point. You'd much rather have him fry, like running around frying with the way we see him flying, but he had to get into the hard point as no one else is in position to do so. So despite the fact that you... Well, I guess the good thing is you only allow Mutineers to get, what, they got like one point throughout that? Not you a lot. You, you didn't really get a ton of time if you were Ultra, but Smokestack, not exactly a, you know, a money point where you're usually getting a lot. But now this now, is now where comes that tough part. Yep, here. now comes the tough part, right? You, you're going to have to put off his control and worry about spawns to Doc's building. Cammy does inside. get inside, wins everyone. a gunfight, but everyone else gets taken down. Inch by inch they go. Florida now 20 points away from winning it. And now you'd love to in this position have somebody sit back and make sure you keep the spawns, but you can't. You just have to go. There's still 35 seconds on the hard point. You only need 13 points if you're new gears. So everybody from Ultra has to invest into this point. You just wonder at what point does somebody from Mutineers try to sneak on through and flip these spawns? Or, or do they, they? Just go for the jugular here and try to close it out? It looks like they're going for the throat. You still have Metals in a position to make the play. He is going to fall. Ten more points needed for Mutineers. The last wave from Ultra now coming in. You think at some point they might slip somebody through. I, I they think they got it right they now. Can here. They can win it here. If no one spawns close, that's ball game. I, I got a little it, scary, but I having thought, with the flank, he drops I behind thought, him, yeah. able to find those kills. So Mutineers will be our final team to get into a semifinal. They set up for a rematch, a date against the Huntsman. The last two times, the last time these two teams battled in a semifinal, you know, it was the Battle of the Brothers. RC's Pristini go up against each other somehow. It's Florida that's able to take that match. You got to think Huntsman are excited for this one, even with Pristini out of the mix. They'd like to get revenge on the other four players that were there. Uh, and on the other side of it, Minnesota and Empire, as expected. Yeah, I, you have two rematches, right? Two very fun rematches. You, the one you talked about, and then you have our LA Home Series rematch where, yeah, I mean, it goes to a game five, but the Dallas Empire, you know, we, we crown them our champions. So, you know, Minnesota wants revenge. So, Sunday is going to be a beautiful day of Call of Duty. It should be. I mean, well, it's going to be a, a, a it's going to be awesome because it's just it's just four teams. It's three matches. That's all yeah. we got. You know, there was so much stuff we had to get through today. So many different rounds of the group play. So many different teams. But now we just isolate these four squads, the best four teams this weekend, and I think it, it pretty much what is expected. I mean, I, I know at least on hard points, like these are the four teams that I picked to get through. Um, three were easy, obviously. I think the fourth is the one where maybe you could have uh, taken a gamble on some different squads, but Florida end up being up to the test. And yeah, I mean, despite the fact we switched from land online, I think the results are exactly pretty, what most of us thought. Yeah, pretty pretty Shocking. darn similar. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's that's usually how it works. Uh, at least at least in my experience, I've been a commentator. The results are typically pretty close to what you would think they'd be. Um, yeah, I just I just wasn't sure. Like, I, you know, we saw gorillas in that scrimmage, and I, I thought they looked a lot better. And with the different environments, I thought maybe one team with their roster changes that kept practicing would be gorillas. So I just went with a gamble, like you said, and I wasn't sure exactly sure how Florida was playing with their roster changes. But yeah, I mean, they proved me wrong. They're able to beat both of those teams today. They, they move on to a semifinal. You like what you're seeing from Florida, but do you see enough to have them take down Huntsman? 
No, but my answer was also no in Atlanta, and they proved me wrong there. That's true. Maybe they have what it takes to prove you wrong yet again. We still have to wrap the show tonight, but that's going to do it at least for our final match of the night. We'll be right back after this quick break. A slight change to the roster, but a very formidable team nonetheless. They didn't have a bit of a journey getting here, but nonetheless, they've made it. And a rematch against the Chicago Huntsman is not probably the team they wanted to face, but it's the one they've got right now. The Mutineers, though, they have looked formidable online. We have talked enough about Pharaoh, the newest addition to the squad, replacing Pristini, who's now sitting on the bench, watching from home. Preston, we hope you're doing great, mate. We look forward to seeing you soon, whether it's in Warzone on your own stream or back here in the CDL. But nonetheless, the team has been looking good Phil it's a well-rounded unit it's all fine it's a, it's a great team honestly I think these guys are still finding their feet they're not at 100% for their capability not as many team you know but I think these guys are, are still learning how to play with Pharaoh and mainly in the respawns but uh, you know I was talking on social media to some of the guys we were trolling saying maniacs coming in for skies and skies was saying you know what if bows jumps in for Huntsman like there is some uh, storylines to be made here however we've got our core five of course Plenty of great substitutes. you got General, of course, uh, for the Huntsman as well. Coaches in Sender. There's so many people involved in both teams. But this is another semi-final, Miles. It's Dallas. It ain't Atlanta. I am leaning towards the Huntsman. They've looked fantastic all weekend long. They are kind of pipped to be in that grand final. And I think it's going to be a super hard challenge for the Mutineers to overcome. I think you're right. I, the biggest concern I have for the Mutineers is the respawns. Um, their search and destroys were funny enough was something that I saw them struggling against other teams. Of course, we saw Toronto yeah. 6 0 them. Uh, and Nameless brought this up in the pre show again, which was that you are going to be leaning towards the, the, the Huntsman definitely when it comes to the respawn game modes. But I think that Florida has a shot here. I think they do have a chance. The, the bigger concern is are they going to find another 6 0? Does the Huntsman have what it takes to cut them out entirely there in the search and destroys? But hey, man, we'll see how we go. Let's get into this one our first semi-final of the day here at the dallas home series online coming at you live across the entire country of the united states of america i don't know where the entire production crew is but i think we're touching a lot of states right now friends let's get into this one formal on your screen running an ar of all things there's a bit of a change up again he was running the uh the mp5 exclusively yesterday things seem to have changed off we go to the races now this first hard point as always phil a bloodbath yeah, it's interesting, obviously, touching on that assault rifle thing as we uh, see both teams battle for the middle and we'll, of course, break that down shortly for you. But Formal, obviously, has been notoriously way more comfortable with M4. He's been given a challenge in the fact that, you know, maybe he has to run an MP5 on some maps. But there are some maps and mode combinations where they can get away with running two ARs. And when that's Formal and Arsties, it's going to be very hard to push back. And when they'll lack the pressure of not having that third submachine gun, uh, or fourth, should I say, in this case, we'll have to wait and see for that. But uh, on your screen, we are looking at none of the and Seth is, of course, Skump here. He had a phenomenal uh, game yesterday. I believe it was 45 that he dropped. He's got three to his name already this game. And the last 15 seconds. Rotation looks like it's going to be favoring the engineers here. The Pharaoh gets his fifth kill in a row. Six of the game. Yeah, there you go. Six kill in a row. We talked about RC's a little bit as well. His uh, his twin brother, Pristini, sitting on the bench for the Mutineers right now. A little bit of love hate there. And of course, nothing but competitive vibes. The second hard point now of Gunrunner, the way right hand side of the map now in the hands of the is Florida had lost the man up top though that was going to be Sky now it falls down to the play around low trying to lock down the doorways Havoc trying to find a bit of an opening here on the outside of the map and he does he pushes around the back Skump though however manages to clean up the pair of them so that means the back door is wide open Skumpy now in a position where you can actually make this play from behind cleans up Frosty from upstairs nice shots and here we go Skump continues the run four kills in a row and a solid break now from the Huntsman they've got one player left cleaned out there we go it's Chicago side yeah, Chicago break that with 20 seconds left. And of course, keep your eyes on that mini map. The rotation towards the cars will be going down very shortly. We're going to see Frosty drop to Scum. Envoy takes out Havoc. But this guy's battling for that final 15. Is he going to get it? I was going to say he's going to be rewarded with it, but Gunless going tooth and nail for these final points here. Quick check on that rotation. There's one player, and that one player has been more just in and amongst the boxes, but he's going to be taken out by Formal MP5. Who'd have thought it? 2020 is wild. <laughs> he as well, he? Over towards our third line. We are going to see B and Boy, another player we've highlighted incredibly well recently. This Dallas home series, he's been a standout player. He's been in the search and destroys. He's going to here in the hard point. Formal MP5 and finds his first hit fire. Can't get Morks though, as his MP5 gets the job done there. 
line of sight. Most of that assault rifle sadly cut down in the hail of gunfire there as Bork makes his third kill known well and truly. And he may be able to find a few more as the push now from Florida has been quite decisive. They're managing to push everyone from Chicago back out of boxes, Phil. Yeah, certainly so, and I tell you what, with a 30-point lead, it's a good way to start here. Gunless finds another double, as does Envoy. A uh, quick stat update for you, of course, going into, you know, CDL Sunday here. Sky is the player really to watch. He's number two on the leaderboard of 40 players, of course, coming at 1.27. But just behind him at number six is RPs. Again, they're the kind of the standout ones in the slaying department. It's, of course, going to be around four players. And they do it up against each other, of course. But still 50 points to go on this half point. Huntsman in control. Formal drop in 12 and 13 and 9 for Envoy. And honestly, Envoy's been playing incredible all weekend long. He could be looking at another MVP like the whole this weekend. As they lock down the remainder of the rotation as well, they will need the gun fight, so this is looking like a solid chunk of time for the Chicago. It's not on your screen, it's a problem. The cover is still there, the hard point is still in the hands of Chicago for now. It's a bit of a point. Ferro trying to cut his players out through mid as they now transition across the map once again to that left hand side to the warehouse, the final hard point in our rotation. It does look like Florida's initially. But the Huntsman breaks have been very clean for it. Can they hold on? That is a really good point, Miles. Again, it kind of the way this team breaks, it seems almost effortless at times. And let's just have a look at it here. Four five players now set up for Florida. They're pushed out in the right places here. Havoc's going to go down. Ferro falls as well. That's going to be to scum. RC Gunless picks up a kill. And I said it was at ease. It just looks like taking candy from a baby. Florida, they're spawning out. It, it shouldn't be that easy, Miles. It that shouldn't. So easy. That is on like a challenge whatsoever for them. They've reversed the roles immediately. Now you have to see Florida attempt to make the break. Envoy up top. Scott's watching the doggy door down low, and this is what you want to be seeing. Communication flowing. RCTs with multiple kills. Envoy locks down the box side. This is brilliant stuff from the Huntsman. This is absolutely clinical hardpoint gameplay. You break the hardpoint, you force the enemy team to spawn out, and then you hold it down for a solid chunk of time. 140 seconds and climbing as Envoy keeps the kills going. His sixth kill in a row. The man is 20 and 12. Disgusting <laughs> stuff from the Huntsman. Uh, I mean, Envoy, known for his S&D this tournament, sitting at the number one search in his short KD 2.6. Right now, he's respawned dominance here from him. As he, as he said, points out 20 kills, 12 deaths, incredible stuff all around. He's on a 6 kill streak, but Miles, most objective kill time as well. Not only on his team, but across the board, he's getting up one second of kill time. He's trying to get in and amongst the kills, but all is fine in his death after death, it seems. Destruction for the Huntsman. It's a one-sided affair so far, and I pointed out Skies. He was the X Factor in the hub the one to really slay out and right now you can look at the stats numbers don't lie They're not lying so slow slow starts for some walks and skies see though this was the the same sort of scenario we saw when they played each other in atlanta reverse sweep the huntsman took an early lead before falling can they repeat it here, though? I mean, this is a very commanding scoreline that is certainly being felt right now as the Huntsman just cut swathes, they rip and tear across the map. That first half point is almost done and dusted as we move over towards the second Huntsman. They may not be in their first in best dress, but you can bet that they're going to charge through and break it as they always have done. Here we go, though. Can history repeat itself twice? So it's going to be bigger. Three kills, four, nay, on the back and make the break. And oh, good golly, Miss Molly. Gonna do it again, Phil. Here we go. He On the back, finds one. He's gonna keep going. But he just keeps going. And uh, again, it just seems like the norm almost for them not to win the rotation and just brute force knock down the doors and take back what seems to be there. But for the first time in what seems forever, it is gonna be Florida holding on to a half point. Morks with the MP5 and nice double. That's gonna be 12th kill of the game. And now trying to close that gap. They're down by 115. Bull with 25 points. This is where Chicago, they've got a lot of leeway, a lot to play with here. So they can give this up. They can rotate early. Formal on your screen, just going around the boxes. RST set up, watching that forest as well. And it looks very comfortable here. But can Florida do what Huntsman did? Can they just brute force, knock down those doors, and take back this warehouse? Yeah, shoes on the other foot now. Will the Huntsman be able to hold the push? They've not really been in the first in this rotation previously. They've managed to break it on the first time. And now, as the kills start flying through, Floridians have cut their way across mid-map, slaying their hearts out. Now they meet the fortified position here of the hard point. They can still by the Huntsman. And the kills have worked out, but they have managed to find a weakness. They have managed to find the hole there. Down that main ramp, they've broken through. Florida has the hard point. Florida with control for now. Havoc hopping and skipping across the map finds himself too. 
third kill in a row now, but you have to watch that scoreboard though. 30 seconds remain on this last one. We have to see Florida do this again and again to reach that 200 point mark and eventually win it if possible. They have to do a lot here. The 120 Ooh. point lead though has gone down to just 75. We've seen some strong stuff coming out of the Mutineers in the last minute. Can they keep it up? We're going to be rotating over, of course, to uh, the crates and we see first or is going to be Frosty, but interesting enough, Sky's still locking down that hard point, and now the cutoff. This could be looking nice for Frosty here. He's got the whole boiler room, the whole room is that as well, and they're fighting for what is actually one second, it looked like. Something. Maybe a little lack of concentration here, as we do see this change hands, and we are going to see the mutineers take control, of course, of the next half. Yeah, they were basically trapped there in pipes. Now we go right over the shipping containers, as you said. Hard point time is really what we're looking for now. Solid work. The Huntsman have not been able to get a whole lot of hard point time in the last few sets. They were stuck at 200 before Minecart started, and now they're only at 201. Here comes the push. The Huntsman trying to make something happen. Their Envoy breaks in, finds Skies. He can't get the second as well, though, but Morks, big shots, not quite enough. And a great run there from Formal. Three kills, have it getting caught on the reload. He's now been put to bed. Three kills for Formal. Now you've got a solid chunk of time, able to be grabbed here. And it looks, it's uncontested for the Huntsman. Yeah, and this is Arsty. He's basically dealing with the whole of the mutineers. He's saying, come at me. I'm ready for you. I've got a power position and you ain't going anywhere. They're going to swoop up the last 10 or 15 seconds and hit roughly around 2.30. 20 points is all they need and they've broken this hard point already once before. 29 kills for Formal, looking to breach into the 30s. But so is everyone else. The slain side of things across the board is there for the Huntsman. However, one break is what they need and Sneaky Sneaky is on boy up top. Good night, Skies, as they push around the back. They're going to try and flip these spawns. Get that control and Envoy once more, only 11 bullets left, but it seems like he only needs three or four for a kill. There's another for Envoy, a quick reload, he'll be looking for Skies as well, ain't gonna happen. But the half point is in the hands of the Huntsman, and again, it goes back and forth, but the Floridians are not giving up. That was a break and a half once again, but yeah, you're right, Florida's not given up. They didn't concede enough kills to lose the spawns, so now you've got another chance at holding on the time. Chicago, one more swing, and here we go. Guns in from behind. That's a big shot to get it done. Second kill goes his way. Havoc, though, in from the boxes. He finds two straight off the rip, and now we're going to continue the pressure. Havoc is still going. Florida hasn't given up the hard point yet, but now you've got to rotate. Now you go back to mid map. You have to win all your engagements, which so far so good, and control spawns for the second hard point. I mean, so Florida, it's got to be perfect. It's got to be perfect. <laughs> it's got to be perfect. A heavy hit in hard point from Havoc, though. 33 and 35. Just the sheer amount of interactions is impressive alone. But can he step it up once more? Can he go even bigger for his squad? Down by 35 points now. Trying to break on in the Huntsman. They can win it here. So, again, early rotation is not acceptable for Florida. They've got to challenge this, Miles. Ferro tries to make it through mid. Austin has to bait him out and make this place happen. A couple more kills and you can see the Huntsman now on the point. Now you got to go, Florida. It's do or die time. You've let enough time slip, but this time is going to be absolutely crucial for the win there. Nice job from Havoc. Gets that kill. Austin's now in a position to clean these players up. He can jump on it now and potentially win it for his team. They still have to worry about that next 20 seconds, though. This is going to be big. Huntsman are back on the point. The gunfight's still going through. There's two seconds for the win now, and there it is. Straight on the point. The Huntsman go. They... Whoa, it's not over yet. One second left. Gunless. He will net that final crucial point. And it was a drama-laden hard point to start the series off here, but the Huntsman reigns supreme, 250 to 199. Incredible, incredible hard point. It started off so one-sided, and you kind of said how this was what happened in the previous episode almost, but that one was on his ear cave. It was like a nine-point game. This one was looking so much more convincing, dominating, if you like, from Huntsman. But again, Mutineers, they put up a fight, but it's not going to be enough. Whew, good hard point though. Nice plays either side. I mean, the breaks there coming out of the Huntsman was so clean. It was interesting to note though, if the first break didn't succeed, they basically had a bit of trouble sort of getting back to that one, but still very, very exciting stuff. And as you can see the teams on your screen there, everyone's looking pretty chill. Everyone's looking kind of, you know, composed at this point in time as the tournament gets more and more serious. Now in the semifinals, it's one best of five and then you're done, my friends. Anyway, Phil, uh, let's have a quick look at the Grubhub picks of the day. We've done this on every day so far. You and I have had our picks of uh, players we've been excited to watch, whether that's for our own nefarious <laughs> reasons. Let's be honest, mate. Uh, I think this. I think I picked Envoy because he's a bloody unit. I can't remember who you picked. Or who did you I, I, I picked Skies, and I think it was because, I mean, you picked someone from Chicago. I wanted to pick someone uh, from Florida to kind of have that head-to-head. -head. And I think these are two players which... A very different, first of all. Envoy is that kind of hard-hitting assault rifle player who 
I feel he's a very well-rounded player, you know, from mode to mode. That goes for Envoy, though, as well. I mean, not to just jump on your bandwagon, but this guy does it all, both hard points, search and destroy, domination. He's just kind of a sheer amount of talent in one. One little kid, you know, frying as it seems. Frying as it seems, and we both play with a scuff impact, so how about that, mate? We both you do? use the same kind of controller. Not a lot of people wow. do, actually. You know, I, I, in the pro scene, as far as I'm aware, and he's one of my he's one of my faves, so I love that. hero, both is have, he? We both have big, manly hands. I think that's what we're going here. <laughs> uh, don't forget, of course, that grub Hub, if you spend $30 or more, you get $10 off. Don't forget to check the perks section of the app from 5 p.m. till 9 p.m. Boy, howdy, what a good day this has been already. Phil, we only had one game. Uh, we do have our scuff play of the game coming up as well in just a moment, mate. Uh, any guesses to who it may be, Phil? Uh, I think you might have won this one as you picked Envoy. Uh, Envoy absolutely frying there. <laughs> Let's focus on the scuff play of the game though. Uh, that's Envoy of course taking the map victory. Brian back here in the west. Instantly in the lead. Roughly. See the kill feed of course. All that army green lighting up. But it was just double kill after double kill. And there, there was probably two or three moments you could have picked from Envoy during this. Uh, I was going to say series. But it's only one map. <laughs> Envoy really just starting to heat up early. He's had his game fuel. He's ready to rock and roll. I'm interested to see what he brings for the S&D. <laughs> And you think of that play as well. That was uh, the start of that clip was at the end of him breaking the hard point from behind. So he managed to like, right. fight his way through the front, get in from behind, <laughs> pick up some more kills, and then he's in the hard point. Like I've got time, and I'm gonna get three more kills on top of that. Brilliant stuff, man. I mean, really, really strong stuff from Chicago so far. Uh, we can also show you. Uh, we have a, another clip coming up. It's, it's the Envoy show right now. I mean, I don't call the shots here, but if I had some kind of stake in the man, I'd certainly be racking it in right now. Envoy, we've got a clip from his ace from the other day as well. So he's had a fantastic Dallas home series. Envoy has just been tearing it up so far, Phil. Yeah, I mean, incredible stuff. I, I pointed out during that, that map there, I even decided to touch on Search and Destroy, um, the top three S&D players this weekend are Envoy, Blast, and Luca. Luca at a 1.6, Blast at a 1.8. Envoy is at a 2.64 ratio. Uh, but across the board, Envoy's 11th. Uh, overall, KD, you go across the hard point, he's right, he's near the top as well. Like, he, he, he does it all. Uh, but his Search and Destroy is definitely something watch out for and guess what ladies and gentlemen we're heading to s and d it's probably my favorite game mode it's the tense one life rounds and i will say let's get into it do you like that one cod fans we didn't give you the going on we broke the mold there friends we got you straight into the game off the rip though frosty that first blood for the florida mutineers not to be sneezed at as well we've seen uh, piccadilly a few times now again a, a favor the huntsman definitely one of the maps that they're uh, more in depth on, but at the same time florida plenty to play for now. It'll be a difficult one for sure but again piccadilly very very powerful kind of play now again the of the board we saw in uh Atlanta, these two teams go all the way to game five. Search and Destroy was actually played on Arclock Peak and Gunrunner, so we didn't actually see anything on Piccadilly, so maybe we're going to be treated to something different here, but as the kills do unfold, it's P2P, Formula and Scump versus Pharaoh, Mawks, and Havoc. Numbers are against them here, Miles. Away there, but the trades came through. So now it's a one v one. Morks versus Scum. Scum's on the aggression though, looking at making the rap. He's actually going to be coming in behind Morks any second now. But Morks lane prone down the by that concrete bollard. Scum's made the noise. Oh, peekaboo! Morks finds the kill. He was just a little impatient there. He took the shots there to top scaffold, trying to catch the player there through that sort of mesh. And Morks. <laughs> I didn't have to do I, uh, too much there. He heard the shots come through, stream. stood up. Scumby made a fight of it, though. You know, he don't worry, I'm all caught up, guys. Uh, there, I don't know how that Mork happened. I was talking about T2P, and it was Good a 1v1, stuff. but all that matters is uh, Florida took that one, and it was Morgs with two that wins the round. Anyway, forget <laughs> the past. It's all about the present and the future. 90 seconds back on the clock here. Morgs on your screen now. I'm hoping I'm watching the correct <laughs> feed here. And Sparrow, not one, but two. As he does his job for the round, he'll be happy with that, even though Formal takes him down. He did that from top buses as well. It's such a risky spot to be in. If nobody looks for it, because everyone's trying to watch the crosses in and around the buses, that player up top, he really did have a great chance. 
did get on point scuff. So, answered back straight away. Formal was this man that managed to get it done. Ring out. Maybe a bit of a skies. Somebody else is running a snipe now for the Florida Mutineers. We don't have access to that information just yet, but the sky is doing what yeah, you can. Beautiful stuff, but Three, again, four, the Susan is sure he's sitting close. Kill. He's feeling himself uh, right now in formal downrange. Uh, Bingo the finds the end. snipe, but traded out immediately. Very efficient round there from the Florida. Two to nothing. Oh, sorry, from Florida. Close it out six to two. Uh, Piccadilly, I'm interested to see how this goes because those first two rounds have been pretty solid here from the Mutineers. We did, of course, get to see the Mutineers play uh, throughout this weekend and they've looked pretty, pretty hard at this S&D. You know, these guys have clearly been scratching up on their strategy, working, of course, with uh, what they have to play with and that's what you want to watch out for here. But three set grenades are going to go out as well as smoke here. Have it finds one. He's the one that we're watching. That grenade connects with Envoy and pushes through the smoke now. Getting up close to the He's got skies right by him. Frosty finds one. He's going to be traded. Though as Havoc will fall. But again, Newton is for a second there. Having the numbers, they still will. It's 3-4 for the Huntsman. Make it 4. And it's all up to Skull. Um, I mean, that position from Gunners on top buses, he made what he could of it. 1v3, though. He's on bomb. Comes to shots from Morks. Tough spot to be for Scum. Here we go. The nades out front of the front. The tag with the nade, and the shots were there, but Frosty just managed to catch the angle, slips up and about, gets the kill. Nice stuff there from the Wait, what Their third <laughs> round in a row. Okay. Well, it. yes is the answer to something. Uh, Merc, the answer is yes. I know you're However, watching. moving I forward. The round ticks down. Worry, We're going to get into worry, round number four. Huntsman, though, they've started slow here. I know we've been uh, treated to a lot of fantastic s and plays, but so far, these three rounds go, it's all viewing in. Ooh! Florida's nades are so good. Florida man throws explosive device across busy London street and destroys man at car, I suppose. Envoy trying to level the play. He and Gunners do a bit of work there. Formal's out. There's no snipe now for this round for the Chicago Huntsman. They are going to be on the spot. So, here we go. Over to B. Arsty's trying to watch these players in the crossover. Pharaoh should have looked twice before crossing the street, my friend. There was an Arsty's right by the arcade. Envoy's about to do the same thing. Have it though. Great job. Subway there. The time it's taking bomb it down, all down to kill. Now we're going to ground the Huntsman here. That bomb three in Florida. Don't try to make an upset. Right now. Trying to do something a little bit wild play. on a five killing spree. As the time starts to tick away, I think he's kind of settled in for the night here. And he's actually going to get taken down by the MP5. It's the first round on the board for the Huntsman, and he much needed one of that. Okay, so. Hopping into the next round once more. The Mutineers will be on the offense. 90 seconds on the clock. Trying to wait for something special. Plenty of snipes going down. However, smokes are coming through. First blood always so Staying prone, Arsties is going to find that first blood. That's going to be onto Frosty. That's Arsties. A little bit. Havoc, sneaky, sneaky, will find another gunless trades things out, though. And as we do see, all the dead sounds to work with there. It wasn't to come through, and Mork's trying to almost penetrate through that door now. On the minimap, you can see the bomb this time edging towards A, number six, though, formal. Out of position. He's of course just sat defending B, but he'll start to rotate round. That quickly. This could be strong for them, but a pick up position for Chicago potentially. Long shot from Formal. Assault rifle in hand. Pharaoh does the exact same to Scum. 30 seconds left. Arsties and Gunless versus just Skies now as Pharaoh will fall. I tell you what, it's good to see Arsties and Gunless back on the same team. Bringing the chemistry back together. It's Arsties who closes things out and a beautiful round back to back here for the Huntsman. Five rounds done as we go into the sixth as well.
you guys at home. I'll be directing you through all the action here. I believe Miles is just making sure everything is up and running. But don't worry, we'll get the bearded Australian back for you on your screens as soon as possible for now. Just stick with me. My annoying English accent will hopefully not be too much to uh, make your ears bleed as we hop into the round. Quick stat check across the board though. Everyone pulling their weight with three, four, or five kills. But that's going to be number five for Havoc Gunless. Shutting things down as soon as the trade comes in. Now at 4v4, smoke goes out. Formal with the sniper. It's Ferro. Puts one in the top pocket of Gunless. Formal does not find anything with that sniper as Skies will shut him down. With the number advantage here. Mutineers 4 to 2, make it 3 as Ferro revealed. Scum's gonna find another in this 4v2. He's down to a 2v2. Ossities oh, finds another, and this could be a 2v4 clutch here. This would be incredible to see from the Huntsman. Moves around, slips and slides, and the 2v4 from Scump and Arsites does come through. That could be the momentum swinger in this game, and now tied at the three. Incredible stuff from the Huntsman. And Kind of wild to see there. I think Arsenis was actually stuck in a position. His location was revealed, but manages to come out on top. Round seven coming up next here. As it goes back and forth, it seems. Three for the Mutineers. Three for the Huntsman. Let's just see how this one pans out. Smoke goes down. has already found that first blood. Ferro will find the second explosion in the city of London right now. That's another fantastic start here, but a 2v4 just went down for the Huntsman. They're in another 2v4 now, and guess who it is? It's Scumpanastis again. Will his history, excuse me, repeat itself? Surely not. Be a great grenade. Not great enough. 2v4 to 2v2. Deja vu. Hello? Have I even woken up? Groundhog Day. Is it a real thing? I don't know. I'm losing my mind a little bit. I'm missing the Australian man himself. Miles, where are you? Come back to me. 30 seconds on the clock, though, as Pharaoh will fall. A 2v4 for Scumbernasties in round number six. And a 2v4 potentially in round number seven. Back to back. Will the skies have something to say about it? The bomb is down. And Arsites clutches up. I am never ever gonna try and break to, to break T to P. But for the past two rounds, it's been Arsites filling in for formal. My goodness. Those two, the redheads combine. For two rounds, 2v4 and incredible stuff. And I don't know what it's going to But the huntsmen are upsetting the mutineers. Just a quick first blood check for you, by the way. It is six first bloods for Florida. Only one for the Huntsman. He can play full pass, put that sniper away. Let's see what the two players of the Huntsman have today, and one of them has a bomb which he seems to be going down alongside a trophy system. Bomb is down, and objective work has been done. However, his life over that. In fact, did the bomb go down? It didn't. Bingo is his name, Owen Farrow. Takes the head clean off the gunless. Now, they've lost a 2v4 twice in a row. I know I've chimed on about it. This is going to be a 2v5. Mutineers, if you can hear me, hello, answer the phone. Don't throw this around the way. You've thrown two already. They are now set to go to their name. Ten... And they are going to close out eight, this round. Yeah, seven, Arrow, Skies, and six, Havoc each five, up two first four, bloods. Three, which really two, should be the deciding one. factor in the game. We all know why it's going for it. Scum and Arsties going clutch when it matters. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fun fact for you guys. About five years ago, Solar Castle was a real thing. Thank goodness it isn't anymore. However, <laughs> Miles is going to be getting back on board us soon. We're just getting some tense difficulties. May your move slow down. You'll be able to give 
your ears and my ears. Say that again, man. Sorry, Phil's going over here. One second. Has strucken Giosiat as 25 seconds passes. Copy. So you'll move me across. Number nine. One boy looking down those sights, trying to find someone on the cross. It looks like it's going to be a B push for the mutineers. Third for skies. Florida somehow don't win this early. Chicago, of course, won the missing, you missed a great one. Envoy taken out by the team shot. Skies is gonna find another and surely this is a clean sweep here. The Buenaires shutting things down. Skies, headshot after headshot. Haircut after haircut. We all we all need one right now, but the mutineers. A clean sweep in round number nine and push it forward. They need one more round here to go. One more round, you say, mate? Oh, one more here round. he is. Oh, you decided to join me, have you, Miles? Well, <laughs> better late than never. What, what, what round are we at? Well, Give me a recap, it, it, quick. It's round number, t <laughs> round number ten. Mutineers yep. have got eight first bloods. Scump and rc has got two 2v4s. Incredible game. Have you got your beard oil? Whatever you disappeared for? I'm kidding. I know there was technical difficulties. However, Miles, we're back. Can you see what's going on? You are a rancid troll, and I love you, mate. Let's go. <laughs> this has been a cool one. I've watched every second of it. This has been a great series. Off, mate. Four and nine, sadly, but hey. Uh, I'll let you play for a moment, mate. Skies, 11 and 7. How's that gone down? I mean, Skies, he's got three first Ooh. bloods. He's been taking heads like it's candy. 60 seconds left. I, I think this is a search and destroy in all honesty that Buneers, they deserve to win. The clutch factor's been there for the Huntsman and the Redheads in particular, but apart from that, it's so, so solid. However, these round 11 looming. Or are we going to see this closed out by the Mutineers? And the bomb. It's going to be tight with guys and it's going to have to wiggle away with his tail between his legs for now. Fine, Frosty finds that first blood. I'm all good to go now, friends. There's 20 seconds left on the game. As that bomb's going to be quickly going down here. Gunless covered close, though, by two of his teammates. Frosty and Co. now making their way forward. So that's slow and steady towards the bombs. Not a lot of room to work with for them. Quickly. And here we go. Have it go straight in. Finds that first one onto Arsty's blistering speed. Cuts him down. Gunless is trying to back. He does indeed. Envoy finds a kill of his own. Envoy with a second kill as well. That's absolutely tremendous. Morks now. It's a 2v1. Envoy has to back on up with 20 seconds on the bomb. It was a 2v5 okay. and it nearly <laughs> did it. But it ain't going to happen. I, 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 I want to see the better. I want to say the better team won. I think Huntsman had such incredible moments in that. But every single round was started by... Mutineers, I feel like they threw two rounds away, and honestly, Huntsman were gifted a couple of those kills, but the Mutineers search and destroy and Piccadilly, I tell you what, Skies, Pharaoh, these guys are nuts. Yeah, insane. I mean, this this is kind of the Huntsman, oh, sorry, this is the Florida Mutineers I do want to be seeing here in these search and destroys. I do want to be seeing them popping off like this. This is, uh, it's it's been a bit of a surprise to nonetheless to see that sort of 6-0 come through yesterday, but I feel like that really, you know, it shook the cobwebs out. It really got them back into the swing of things, and there you go, friends, the Chicago Huntsman. They lose the search, 6-4. to four. Florida bounce back, and now we're at 1-1 one to one in this series. And, uh, hey, man, I feel like I missed a very cool search and destroy. I'm not going to lie, Phil. I'm a little disappointed. Not going to lie to you, mate, but you handled it very well. Thank you. I appreciate that, Miles. I will say <laughs> it would have been kind of crazy casting through those incredible 2v4s with Scump and Arsties. Uh, but all in all, it just means we've got a series on our hands for the semifinal. Last time in Atlanta, it was a reverse sweep. However, here... At the Dallas homestand, it is one to one. Coming up after the break, it is going to be domination. Hopefully, Mouse has sorted all his tech issues out. Guys, get a quick snack. We'll be back after this quick break. We'll see you then. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League. We have our U.S. Army tactical play, hot to trot, locked and loaded, and ready to roll. It was, of course, from that last search and destroy, and it was a hum. Dinger, friends, and uh, for those of you wondering what the numbers mean, you'll have to DM me to find out. This was, of course, a Scump and Frosty play, which was a, a fantastic run of things. It was Frosty's win on that round, which really made the difference there for the Florida Mutineers, who, of all things, Phil, have managed to bounce back in a big way here in this series. Yeah, honestly, Miles, play the game, whatever you want to highlight. I'm just glad you're back. That's really difficult doing that on my own. I went quite a few times.
And then honestly, it was, uh, it's nice just to have you back. I'm glad you've sorted out whatever those numbers may mean. Who knows? However, from the huntsman to the hunted, uh, a couple of stats and more numbers on your screen here. Of course, Florida leads in the head-to-head -head series 1-0, and that, of course, was in the semi-final at Atlanta. Technically, got another semi-final right here. Are they going to be the hunted once more, though? After watching that, after seeing the dominant search and destroy miles, what are your feelings over this series so uh, dominant, far? Dominant, dude. Uh, my feelings are of of elation, uh, of of slight uh, disappointment, missing out on the search. Man, it was a banger. But at the, at the end of the day, I just think that we've got two teams who we've got a clear cut favorite in the form of the Huntsman. But Florida have just continued to prove time and time again that you can't look past them. You cannot like let anything slip. And I think that's one of the the greatest downfalls of the Chicago roster is that they know they're they're top of the mountain right now. They know that they're a very strong team. They've got wins under their belt yeah. and they've got high expectations for themselves. If they give anyone a chance, if they overlook anyone, I feel like they let things get by that really shouldn't. So that's one of the worries I've got right now is that they think they should be taking Florida online, especially with this new roster with Pharaoh. Now all of a sudden you're looking at a situation where they're tied up once one in the series. Straight into the dom we go, baby. Let's get into this. And who knows, man? This could be very, very different. Yeah, look at that route. Uh, more than they can hear it, Jesse. Oh, no. Salt Rifle just trying to cross over, not watch anything mid-map. As we jump into the domination, a uh, quick check here that I wanted to do was the actual domination stat between these two teams. Um, but last time they played it was St. Petro. Uh, and yeah, it was Florida who took this one. This was kind of almost the swinging map um, in, in the series, it felt like, obviously, with the, with the reverse sweep happening in the semi-final. 45 lead, I believe, at the end, or 46-point lead. We'll see if Chicago can do anything different on Hackney. And again, we're going to Hackney. Interesting to see how formal plays, of course, whether we'll be rocking that MP5 or that. Changes, Phil. Ch -ch 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 -ch. We're going through changes. We are, Miles. I tell you what. <laughs> It was very like, different. We've got plenty of songs that feature changes in the title. That's a lot of fun to work with. Uh, still, though, as we go towards uh, B and C now in the hands of the minutes of the time being. Sneaky Asties just waits for the house to be empty before he slips in. And he's grabbing that B flag slowly but surely. On boy, just winning that guy. A flag. So it's a player to take care of from up high. Pharaoh takes care of it. All now trying to reinforce the position at B. And what do we see time and time again here on Hackney Yard? We see in an A and a B. C is the sort of. I want to say, obviously, the red-headed stepson, but that's not something I can say these days. It's more like uh, it's, it's the unwanted love child of the other flags that you don't really want to be sticking around. So what we're doing is we're aiming for an A and a B hold. We're trying to keep the opposing team trapped in there at C. Make sure they don't rotate through green. Do your best job, right? Do the very best you can, Phil. Is that what is happening right now in Florida? Uh, I think so, and I think, obviously, Sky started off so, so strong. So they killed to his name in the in the kill feed along with Pharaoh adding to the fifth, and his M4 is just on point. Uh, going into CDL Sunday, though, the two top players in domination are sit with RC and Dunlops. Um, in fourth, though, it is going to be Morg. So, again, we've got some high caliber players, and that's why it's the semi-final that you see today. These players have been going off all weekend long. However, right now, Florida have two flags to the good, but a 15-point lead is looking very, very strong here. But the mute is, they're going to break 40 shortly. Envoy trying to get onto B. Double here, double here on me. Got 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 he spawned there. He spawned there. Two A? Yeah, one's, one's green crate. Green crate. Uh, green crate. Green crate. Green crate. Green crate. Green crate. Green crate. Green Green crate. 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 Green Yes, I think right. Up scab. In two and hot, two and hot. Wait, just wait, just wait. Just two and hot, Add your I'm going to Put the side. Bottom help, bottom help. Got one bottom help. So one. Two bottom help. Two, two, two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we're good, we're good. He's flashed my top off. Flashed my top off. Top off, top off, 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 top off. Top off, top
Yeah, one's bottom right together. We're good, we're good. Uh, oh, in bottom. bottom. The only thing I know for absolute certain for hosties is disgusting. 12 and 8. <laughs> and you saw that two piece from top hell. That was unreal, man. Yeah, I mean, certainly showcasing his assault rifle skills, and I know there's been a lot of talk of who should be running it and what the team has decided. Alan is a man. One thing I will say is domination, it's a very punishing game. We, we both know that with these short five minute rounds, if you can hold a two cap or a two neutral for a minute, you know, that can almost be the win right there. You, a, a team and the rotation is the way you've got five professional players going at it. You've got to trade a lot of these kills. It's very hard to kind of flip a game on its head. So I will say credit to the Mutineers. They broke 90 points, which you don't see a lot of the time in uh, in one side of domination. But Huntsman are going to end the half with two. That's going to be B and C in their control. However, going into the next five minutes, they are going to be a deficit. It's going to be a tough ask to, uh, to see them come back in this one, but they certainly have the skill and the willpower to do so. You're so right in the skill and the willpower department. The shame is for, for the Huntsman right now is, man, they ended the way they really meant to be. In that as well. So hard to break the two cap, but Florida, man, start to the scoreline really shows it. Proper skies, skies, skies. We were talking about it during the listening amongst ourselves. He is such a disgusting player, whether it's online, whether it's on land. I mean, he just has this game down pat, my friends. And second half of domination now underway with a sizable lead to work with for the Florida Mutineers. If they can maintain the pressure now, spawning on the favorable side of the map, spawning on the A side, where they want to be here on Hackney Yard, this could be a good win for them here. Again. Here we go, five minutes on the clock. And what Huntsman needs is a strong start. What have they got? Not that. We've seen Florida <laughs> reach in, and I tell you what, it, it is kind of known that this side, of course, will kind of be rewarded with that positioning of Skies up top now with that M4. But down by around 30 points, it is still doable, of course. A long way to go in this. A triple cap for a minute, and you're right back in this one. But the M4s of Mulks and Skies laying down the law right now. The Mutant is. They're running away with this competition. They're looking fantastic at it, Miles. I will say, these guys, whether it's a semi-final, a huntsman, whatever, something is working for them right now. Definitely working out. Guys, right. working out. Eight, 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 eight. Eleven and eight for Morks. Fourteen. Going their way. Another slow one from Formal. Thirteen. He's got the guns. Will sort of slam the brakes on right now. Pharaohs having to be on top of here. This is a great position to be in again. They know the defend that B position from the inside and the outside of the warehouse, as you can see. Handedly. Now the play starts to develop towards B. They're trying to clear out Havoc with Havoc made safe. Now you've got a clear lane to run through from mid map. However, on the other side of the board, Pharaoh's just spawned out like courtyard side by yellow. So has Havoc. They're now spawning on the bottom left hand side of the map, right next to the C flag because of the flip now happening towards A. It's going to be a change of flags, Phil, but it doesn't matter too much right now because Florida just seemed to be in so much control. No one's dealing with the C push. They're having a bit of trouble handling the, the Floridians over there towards by A, just underneath the, uh, the, over, the light rail there, friends. But yeah, it's, it's just been an interesting map so far. Florida having their way with the Huntsman right now. 128 and 80. The numbers are going certainly in the favor of the engineers. Time ticks away, man. He's only getting more punishing for them. But as Skies locks down the Lords, Lords top L may be the Lord right now, is the way he's playing. It's a very hard warehouse to break in. There's trophies, there's gunfire. It all seems a little too much, and the kill feed once again go into Mutineers. Skies is 21 and 10. Pharaoh 21 and 14. It's a struggle bus here for Huntsman. And I tell you what, I don't know which direction that bus needs to go to change this one around. <laughs> now this is starting to get, this is starting to get ugly. Oh, this is, uh, it's not quite Quasimodo. It's more like the the big dude from the Goonies have already got Hopefully, A and B still in the hands of Huntsman now. But look at that Florida push into the line. They've got no. Morse cut these players coming out of A, and I don't know how much longer he can keep this up. Knife's out. Coming from behind on Boy. Gonna cut him down. That's gonna make A a little more safer for the Huntsman. They did not lose the f they did not win the fight over towards B. My apologies. So now we're gonna be seeing the struggle bus turning around, Phil. I'm not sure if they can. A play towards C right now from Formal actually maybe what the floor what maybe what the Huntsman need right now. Two minutes on the clock though. This is a big, big score line to be working with for the Huntsman. We need a trip cap and we need it now. Yeah, they, exactly that. They need a trip cap. They need to do it now. There's two minutes on the clock. 36 points per minute. They're down by nearly 60. It needs to be 
almost perfect play from the Huntsman. And the way that the Mutineers are playing right now, I'm just going to say, it ain't going to happen. The Mutineers just seem to be able to lock down one flag at least, let alone two. They've been doing it for the past eight minutes or so as A is going to change hands once more. Look at that minimap. A is under full control. They're battling back and forth for B as well. But I will say the Mutineers have put on a showcase for us here how to play Domination. We talked about the KDs of our season gunless top two in the league right now for this weekend and this weekend alone at 1.72 and 1.38. But really, it's been a team effort from the Mutineers and this Domination with just 72 seconds left. It's looking very, very solid. Yeah, I mean, they've really played this well. I mean, they've kept that A control. They've stacked their numbers heavily for the the plays coming out of this round. As and when they've happened, and they've cut the plays off really, really well. So they've managed to keep the the heat off the important areas, of the map, doing the best job they possibly can at making sure that any disaster is going to the Florida. This has worked out in a big, big way. Now the Huntsman knows he's taking a breath, a bunch of kills here and there. You can drain hot, and you just think, "Give me that hot, give me map four right now. I'm ready to go. This is a tough one for us. Shake it off." get into the next map, and that's exactly what they were doing in about 30 or seconds time. But still, major props there to the Mutineers. Ferro, once again, 30 kills, 20 deaths to his name. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. They certainly had slowed down the Huntsman, Phil. The final 20 now, and we're going to be seeing the trip caps come through. They're just making the stats look, just making the <laughs> stats look better. This is what happens. Every, every flag is changing hands right now, but yeah, it's time to sit, sit back and just go, you know, what, what have we just seen here? We've seen a very convincing victory. Mutineers again, 25 and 14 for Mort. Sky's 28th kill of the game. He just seems so, so comfortable. Uh, I know there were rumors of, uh, of Maniac subbing in for Skies this morning. Of course, okay. I'm only joking. That is why it is never going to happen because Skies is an absolute machine. Your pick was on board. My pick was tight. And I tell you what, what I am glad about is both of them kind of showing how good they are in individual maps and local. Miles, we currently sit 2 1 to the Mutineers. They're one map away from going all the way. They're going to keep that record against the Huntsman clean so far. You can't be disappointed as a Florida fan. I will say it's uh, it's a bit of an upset for me. I'm not going to lie. The way the Huntsman have looked so far, especially here in the Dallas Home Series, has been pretty sweet, if you ask me. But hey, man, this is the way this is the way the cookie crumbles. Right now, Chicago have just got to bounce back. There's a few more maps in the series that they can possibly take. Again, the hard point, the first one was a bit of a blowout. It wasn't like with anyone on Florida really sort of chance. The breaks again were clean. The rotations may have gone their way, but Chicago had the hard point. Can they repeat that now? They're going to desperately need it in order to force that game five. Where again, the search felt a little closer. 6-4 on Piccadilly, the record that uh, I believe we have so far for Chicago versus Florida, yeah. and they lost in the game five, but they've got a, they're a solid, solid search team. They know what they're doing here. So force the game five for Chicago, and then you'll be looking fine. There's your stats, boys and girls. Give me the hard point. It, it's just wild to me because I think I, I'm one of you know, a formal fan, if you like. And to kind of see the the certain maps and modes just kind of not go his way this weekend, he's undergone a whole different role. You see him rocking the MP5 there and going 12 and 25, uh, dealing the least damage of the Huntsman. What I'm saying is not a, a dig uh, at formal, but he's always the one that you know he's going to drop that damage. You know he's going to be at the top of the kills. And he's been consistently enough over the past, what, three, four, five years or whatever it may be, this is a very different Huntsman with this role change. And uh, it's hard to kind of watch because who doesn't love to see Formal go off? T2P being their best. We'll have to, uh, of course, see whether he can turn it around the hard point. But it's, uh, it's interesting to see this new dynamic for sure, Miles. Indeed, indeed. I'm glad you brought up damage. Uh, we will be taking a look at the PS4 damage dealt leaderboard in just a moment. Uh, I think, well, maybe not the leaderboard, but just the Skies, man. Skies, who has been your favorite player right now, Phil. The guy you picked for your grub up pick of the day. And he really has been nom -nom. the pick right now. Nom nom indeed, as he has just been eating up these players. Uh, again, an interesting, uh, you know, as far as the damage dealt goes, Skies is your boy. Look at that, right up top. One, 1,603 damage? Dude, uh, he's the guy who, uh, he's, a, he's a real, he's an interesting player as well, man. I, for a while, I think he was one of the few ARs running FMJ on his M4 class setup. I'm not sure what he was getting rid of, maybe the grip, uh, the rear grip for that one. But yeah. the man's got some intel. He knows things that some of us don't. So I'm going to be picking that brain on Twitter a little bit later on after I get through the TikTok videos. But hey, man, not a bad run so far for Florida, Phil. Now we go into another hard point. Do you see Chicago bouncing back and forcing the game five here? I really do, and, and I don't want to just use this as an excuse kind of going back to them play previously playing this head-to-head -head. because last time they played this, this was the only map and mode combination that was repeated from the series in Atlanta. This one ended 250 to 241. Like, we're talking nine points. You can't really pick that as a 
oh, they won it last time, they're going to win it again here. But I think this is a map where uh, Formal can use the M4. And I don't know whether there's a, a long-term change. You know, I'm just excited to see how this Huntsman team are adapting and go forward. I do want to just see quickly what Formal is using. I know we've got an awesome, wonderful team of observers who are bringing us all the action. Shout out to those guys as well. Uh, hopefully, you know, we see Formal with the M4. And if he's rocking that, they don't really uh, lose many hours. This is something we're seeing quite a lot now on Azir Cave. Maybe a two, maybe even three M4s being put Long line of sight. The assault rifle players certainly have a very, very good time. It looks like Mork Sky's Ferret all running M4s as well when it comes to the other side of Florida. They're to fight for the center of the map here. Formal is not losing any of those gunfights down low. Big shots. Frosty just doubled in. Man, it's normally bad manners, but right there, he got a mouthful. Brilliant stuff from Frosty to get that cover down low. Now you have to watch that cave rotation as well. So what we're doing now is we're fighting for control of this cave. Of course, Cave West. Sorry, Cave East. Excuse me. I have compasses. I forget how they work. I'm not going to use that often in Britain. Uh, but Cave East, that right-hand side of the map, that's what we're going to be fighting over right now in Chicago. With a solid amount of control, the inside of the cave, but what they need to be doing is worrying about that player, number nine, Ferro, making that rotation far to the right-hand side of the cave. That's where the horns are. So, got to watch out. This kill is huge. RCTs knows it, and he wins that one in a big way. Got to keep that space open while they keep racking up that hard work. Good stuff here from the Huntsman. Huntsman, of course, in 10 and 1 in their series score. However, that one is, of course, to Florida. Pushing on forward, 25 to 21 as we see the cave hard point pop. This is going to be a hard one to actually break on through for the Huntsman. But if it's anything like Gunrunner, it may break into easier points. However, Envoy with the double. Gunless finds one. Sky to have it trading things out. It's going to be the Huntsman pushing them back though. We haven't seen Mutineers still have this spawn, but is it going to be enough? Mutineers on the push. Let's have a very quick Astro Gaming listen in with the Florida Mutineers. Nice, one front and one's under pass. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Nice, good job. 16, get up. Keep us, keep us, keep us. Get us, get us, get us. 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 Get us, I don't see anything fence. Watch the fence. Right One's dead. Oh. Watch out, yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. 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 Yellow,
Ferret overwatching the entire line of sight. That goes towards the half point. It's on Ferret to keep those players back. 109 plays 81 with five points here and 45 as well. Because it's different when you play Cave as well. The, the start of the very half point map is very scrappy towards the middle. However, the middle of the half point or the, the first half point of the is uh, one you can actually lock down on the second and the third rotation because of the spawns. So keep your eyes on that. You'll start to see these green arrows now rotate around and try and pin back the mutineers in the cave. It's obviously doable, but they are going to sacrifice the last couple of seconds. We're going to see 129 for the mutineers. Are we going to see this pin in cave though? Are they going to be able to break on out? Here we go. Pharaoh on your screen. These teammates are falling on flies. He ain't going to join him just yet though. RCs will drop. <laughs> He's not going to join him yet. No, RCs. Everyone there. Sky's playing three. Envoy through the smoke. The quick fire gets it done. 10 and 17 for Envoy. A little slow for him. The hard point hasn't exactly been his friend either, but here we go. The first hard point once again the second set of rotations we go. Holding on to this for as long as we possibly can. Nice pick there on the Envoy. He chooses the gunfight he wants to have, not the one that he's going to straight away. Again, we are Slowly but surely claw their way back as the Huntsmen do what they can. The final 15 seconds of this first film. That rotation. Over towards the next cave, still in the hands of the mutineers. Plenty of time still to go. And as you start to see this rotation here, we saw it on the first side. The mutineers had it. They had the spawns. Formal. Arsties were pushing them back. But again, caught from the same spot. It's Havoc again, I think. In fact, correct me. It was Morks there, sat in that sneaky corner. You've got to check your corners here when you're pushing round. Um, but going back to the original point, I was trying to make mutineers for the second time now. Had cave, and this can be a bit of a money hill. There's 45 seconds left, Miles. If Huntsmen don't break this, they could be down by a deficit of around 80 points. It's a troubling time here for the Huntsmen. They're already 2 1 down. This is a semi final. Is this a time to be worried if you're a Huntsman fan? I think you're going to be worried for us. Uh, uh, at this point in time, I mean, they're, the whole team is going to break that setup here on KV. Whatsoever, they'll be too many sort of guns. The other two are in rotation for the next hard point. Look at number six. Walks. He's gone. He's on the minimap. Far left hand side. He's ready to rock and roll for the for the soccer field. He's ready to rock and roll for the for Cave West. Like he's nowhere involved in this gunfight whatsoever. The huntsmen have been kept back. They have been held at bay by Florida here. 171 leading 119. This is a, a difficult situation to be in right now for the Huntsman. You have to see those ARs start popping off. Clean out the soccer field. Go for that two-footed tackle. Get the red card. Nobody cares right now. You've got to make something special happen. And this is what we want to be seeing. Envoy first line of defense. Going for the cleanup. Does get it there right on a ferry. Do they can to keep Florida out of the point? Uh, it's also like a same place for the deficit. They keep it down to just 50 and they're closing that gap. They have control here. Smoke's the ball going down though. Jumping from above, Frosty. Good luck. Respawn and try again here because Sub Stumps on your screen. He's found two. He's Ooh. trying to find a third. He's a maniac on a mission here. And the Dead Silence still popping. He's still going. This man is on a mission. What? No, you've run out of bullets, Scump. I tell you what, that would have been probably six or seven in a row. A Scump trying to dead get back Huntsman into this game as we rotate once again to Cave. But rotation, rotation. Rotation, rotation, it is all what half point is about. The mutineers, they're there first again. And it's going to be played like right that. Keep the Huntsman in this alive and kicking. Stunt may have the record right now for kills in a half point. 25 and 21. He's just starting to build steam. Havoc holding down that same position he had in the se first set of the Cave West hard point you saw. And this was a very, very strong hard point there for the mutineers. You can see them lined up already on both sides. The back now is open for the Huntsman. They can now hit the back of the cave for Envoy. Punches his way right through the front, finds himself too. Watch the play on the back now from Gunless. It's a pair for him as well. The Huntsmen have ripped the door wide open. The cave is theirs. Got to hold the back line now though. 35 seconds to be had and this is a great chunk of time. They can do this here. They can pull this game back. And the important thing, Miles, is they're getting only the scrap time, but also look at those two players rotating back. This could be back-to-back -back hills, which they can really soak up. And the 80-point deficit I talked about, it ain't even in question anymore. We're about to have a lead change with the three players. Havoc pushing on forward. Morgz is going to find himself a wild Arsies. Arsies is going to go down. And as chaos is looming, Havoc, the only one in and amongst the enemy, he's found one. I believe he's going to stun the second, but Formal still alive, still kicking. And he's going to do a great job here for the Huntsman of keeping those back spawns or even just Testing the mutineers, trying to find him. Oh, Frosty, just about time. 
as you saw that formal rising up there, that M4, the barrel facing towards him, and it would have been curtains for him. This is it. Florida, you got to bounce back here in a big way. Sky's uh -oh. in that power position up high. Will be taken down there by Paul. Watch that hard point still in the hands of Florida. Once again, on the first set, they had the run. Here we go. The sky cam showing the advance now from the Florida from the Huntsman, rather, onto Florida. And they're going to be cut down. Envoy gets in close, finds one. Very difficult to trade out there. But Gunless on his belly, making his way forward. We're in the business end of the game now. But can we see a break from the Huntsman? This would be huge for them. Yeah, it certainly would be. Envoy somehow stuck through, wiggled his way, found two, but talking to two, it's Havoc on your screen, and he's going to find himself a cheeky double here, as does Skies, and 201 to 224, we're going back to the middle, we're going back to a position which we've seen go back and forth, and this is going to be an important one, to say the least, New Year's and Florida are in a potential of ending it right here, but Scum has other ideas. He's got 28 kills to his name and a rotation round. He might be going through the dodgy door on the side of his teams at this moment in time. But the Mutineers, they're almost setting up for the one after this. A very smart play here, but someone needs to get the time. I mean, everyone knows that this is the hard point you can win it on. I mean, both teams can put themselves in great spots right now. Florida, obviously, with a 25 points for the win here. This is to knock Chicago out of the tournament. This is Dallas home series. Good night for them. If they don't turn this around, they can test now from Frosty on point. Watch those arrows now circulate. Try to find the angle. Play this one slow. Go for the opening kill. It's going to be formal. The trade there is immediate. But again, keep that pressure on. Make sure the contest is still there. This is working out in favor right now for the Mutineers. They have the lead. They have the hard point. And number zero, Havoc. He's got oh. spawns for next as well. I don't know whether Havoc spawned there or he rotated around with just one of his spawns, but that is the game changer right here. Arsatis, though, he recognizes it. That assault rifle. You're the AR player that you've been called upon. We are going to be going to the cave. A five kill streak now for Scum. They need to break this. They need to do it now. Put Havoc on your screen. MP5 in hand. Again, Mutineers for the third time in a row. They have the spawns for Cave East. Crazy right now for Havoc. The play is right. 10 seconds now for the win. This is for Florida to find themselves in the spot in the grand final. To keep the slate clean against the Huntsman. 28 and 27 now for Skies. He makes his way forward. Frosty has been the man of the map right now. He's got himself 38 kills and they've still got the time. Mork's trying to find something here. But again, the Huntsman have pushed no them way. out. They've managed to break the hard point for now. But you've got to keep those spawners out from the back. Scumpy with the kills. They just keep on coming. Now the push from Florida. Envoy in the back. The shots are there, but they've got onto the point with that one. The Florida Mutineers have done it. 3-1. And they find themselves a spot in the grand final here of the Dallas Home Series. Oh, boy. Man, that is a stinger. Prestini or no Prestini right now. The Mutineers have one over, make it two over on the Huntsman. And semi-finals seems to be when they're starting to flourish. They're going to book themselves a spot in that grand final at Huntsman again. It's, a frust it's just got to be frustrating at this point to go through what you've just gone through, to kind of be battled back and pushed back in the domination in that kind of fashion and then go to that half point. They had the lead for a little bit as well, but it just got a little out of hand and three rotations in a row onto Cave was where it was really lost, Miles. It's so hard, man. The rotations on Cave are so, so difficult. I just wanted to bring up there the, the stats board. I mean, Frosty had 38 kills. Two of the players on his team also dropping 30 bombs. I mean, this is an incredibly yeah. high-killed game for the Florida Mutineers. Whoa, unreal scenes. And again, what? it was the, the assault rifles we had to talk about. We spoke at the start where, yes, Formal can use an AR. But for the Mutineers, you actually touched base on it. We had a three AR setup. It was Monk, Skies, and Pharaoh rocking yep. those ARs. Pharaoh with a plus two. Skies with a plus two. And KD isn't everything. But these guys were putting big numbers up. Ironically, it was Frosty with that MP5. 38 kills, seven assists. This guy was uh, a bit of a mad one. On a yeah. loose one, shall we say. The bad boy As, yeah, Bad Boy Bergstrom, I like that a lot. Frosty, though, will be finding himself in his second grand final. The CDL Dallas homestand, of course. We say goodbye to the Huntsman in a, in a wild fashion, uh, but an incredible semi-final, Miles, and I believe that does it for myself and for you. What a, what a game. Crazy game. Now we get to jump in the chat and be fans for the rest of the day. Unbelievable scenes. The Florida Mutineers will be in the grand final. Who will they play? We'll find out after this break. Can you capture the W? That is the big question. And, and Maven, the first map of 
this series is getting loaded in. Home series final for Dallas, baby. We're gonna have a new winner. This team, in my opinion, submitting themselves as the fourth best team in the game, or at least in the top four conversation as we go forward. Rocker, Mutineers, Cave Map 1. A reminder, Rocker, six and two on this map and mode. Mutineers, four and two on this map and mode. It is their best hard point. You've got strong ARs, and we're starting off with the new guy, Pharaoh. Well, I'm sure we'll see a lot of F3s, F3s in the chat as Pharaoh's starting to work his way up. Havoc, Frosty, and Skies were all able to get some opening kills. He's just trying to shoot the big toe of Sally right now, or Silly. Sally! he gets taken down. So, yeah, I'm so used to saying Sally, but anyways, to Silly. <laughs> uh, he's but a contest is going down in Florida. Yeah, I know. I know he is. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> well, Florida right now, just making sure they rotate on over and hold those spawns. That's why that's what Joe's super sucks. He's, uh, he's a big supporter. Of the Merc Militia. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but Pharaoh just on his belly as everyone from Rocker starts to work through Cave. They want to work on this flip. And pinching from back outpost is going to be silly as well. Everyone vying for position to rack up this time in our next money hill. The trades seem to be going the way of Rocker and who else? But if God Rex and the Cult have been the dynamic duo leading the way thus far, a seam swarms into the mix as well. And the spawns right now look good for Rocker. There is a pinch opportunity though, but a few between Havoc. And Pharaoh to maybe make a play. But Havoc's going to get picked up by a scene of the map. Yeah, we talked about Havoc, what he was able to do last year. Is he was trying to sneak his way through. Silly, though. He's the man for the rocker that were able to flip those spawns for KV. Now he's inside of hill, the hill. But Trail mocks Havoc already there. But Alex, as he takes down two, this should be more time for the Minnesota rocker. They're still spawning in the back. They haven't been able to get in just yet. No, it's been good for me. Yeah, Florida, Florida has done great. Messy. Didn't allow Rocker to get set up and get comfortable. Four are going to fall for Rocker. Assault the last man here in a position to do anything. And the final 15 or so seconds going to go to Mutineers. That'll prompt the rotation from Rocker. But that was... I mean, that's some of the fewest points you're going to see tallied on KV. It's like, no one really got we, we've a We've seen that a lot this weekend, though, right? Like, we've seen teams just be able to, to sort of handle that rotation, not allow those teams to get that much time. And I just think it comes with that first set of kills yeah. as soon as that hill and, pops. And it's like, even if you have the quote-unquote position in the early rotation, if you're there early to make it messy, like, it's not a big deal. It's, it's like, it's only when, like, all five get set up, there's clearance across the map, and they've got a position. They have time to get in all power positions, but they never got a chance to get comfortable. But as we look at it, got our X now 11 and 6 on a 4 spree, 3 spree. I think coming in from a seam as well before he drops, but Frosty, Havoc, Pharaoh all burst on through. It's two for Havoc. With 30 seconds remaining on the hard point, they're trying to soak up some time. Unfortunately for them, it's old Silly Sally. He gets through. Yeah, Silly answers that up. Mox up top does get taken down. Onto this rotation assault, he is going to have his hands full, and he gets taken down by Pharaoh. So there's four players from Florida inside. Back at the old hill. Alex was able to take down Frosty, gets that scrap time. He will set up the pinch. You see a seam coming down the well right now. He gets covered. So the Florida setup right now, they are not allowing anybody in. So far, so good. Off out the third person cam as they look to get the push on in. It's Alex and Goddard X, they get the picks. Havoc's just laying prone inside the hard point. Asim knows he's there, but hasn't been able to get the angle. So Havoc's going to continue to take out players. Finally, as he beats, Asim takes him down. Another cave hard point where it's still tough for somebody to actually get into the point once the madness ensues. Nice job by Farrell Papagetti to try and get into position to get inside. It's Goddard X looking over it. He's trying to hold him out of the point. Smoke, yeah, great I chaos. I I mean, obviously, Minnesota, they would love to earn some time, but what's the next best thing to do what they're doing right now? Keeping Florida off it and containing them, because you see on that mini-map, when we're going to rotate to our next till it put path, you already have Alex and Assault all the way in the back. Silly able to find another three kills, and that is going to delay their push to the new hill for so long. That's going to be all dead as the seam and Alex... They take care of those who are working up this side of the map. And look at your mini-map. Look how far away Florida is right now. Yeah, this is a stronger setup. Almost what I was trying to refer to at KV. So they have time to get these power spots. You got back out post control. You have eyes over Cliff's side with Alex waiting inside the point. Now it's going to be a five-man hit from Cliff. They're going to swarm on through. Can anyone hit shots on the cross? It seems the guy that tries to make a play as Assault continues to attempt the Lagobra. 
But Mutiers, once again, like, pretty quickly at least, they're able to get them out of the point, but it's enough time for Rocker to tie up this game. Yeah, Silly was just on another five spree, so I feel like he's having a big game. Well, we've seen a few triples out of him, then picks up the, the five spree. As you said, it's just so back and forth. Not a lot of time accrued for either side. Yeah. We, I mean, with two minutes off the clock, with, I, I mean, is this going to be one of the first games that maybe goes to that clock throughout this year? It, it may be. We'll have to keep our eyes on it. Do you think it's the sale comes in? Lackluster setups or more props to the team from the break? I guess props to the team on the breaks. I mean, I, I just think it comes down to those rotation young fights. But even right there where Minnesota, they get five dead. They weren't able to accrue a, a ton of time. It wasn't like it was a clean 50, 60 points. That was close, yeah. They got the first 20, 20 or so clean. And then New Gears, once again, able to get in. Just taking a look at the scoreboard. Got our X, 19 and 13. It's just what we expect from him at this point. But Assault right behind him. He continues to have a great day. For the Florida side, I mean... Not a ton of slaying, but you're, you're keeping the, the game close. I mean, you, you have the lead. You, you have the lead. And like I said, we are down at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. So we will have to keep our eye on that. Yep. It was such a common theme. Back in Call of Duty World War II, we were always keeping the eye on the clock on certain maps. Not really been a theme this year, but we'll keep watching it through this as we're through our first hard point and second set of locations. If you're new to hard point, it's predetermined points on the map. Cycle through all five. We're into the second set now, and over to KV's Rocker. He's gonna be there first again. Can I do a better time, better job this time? Yeah, you see, Asim, he's pushed out Cave, so this will funnel Florida through the back and through this middle cave, which is typically what you want. This middle tunnel is so tough to push through, and there you see in the time starting to accrue for Minnesota Skies. He's just waiting for his teammates to push on through, watching over him, and here they come. We're going to see Alex. He's just going to go rotate towards field for next hill. But a much better hold so far as four go down for Florida. <laughs> that's going to make it all five. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. But I think it was just due to a team's position early on. The fact that he's able to control the front of the hill, they know exactly where they're going to flood on through. Well, that and like they, they were using the smoke to try and just continue to funnel through there. But yeah, the smoke kind of helps you get in, but it just creates chaos. And one time, a seam comes in. You got to run out of it. But yeah, the next time, <laughs> Silly silly just runs into the smoke as well. I think he like chest bumps three players, gets a kill with a pistol. He just said, all right, you're going to throw the smoke. I'll use it as well. Solid hope, hope from Rocker. Now going to be a 30-point lead for them. The Mutineers have the position out in the field. I mean, this is a, a very good hold. We talk about a setup. This is a setup and a half right now. Nobody from Minnesota has even gotten close. And Frosty, he's starting to heat up on a three-spree right now. Snapping onto a team. Going to take him down. There is a train. But like I said, we are 30 seconds off of this hill. And it's been 30 flawless seconds for Florida and another lead change may come through and think about what you said about the play clock you called it out at 2 minutes and 30 seconds only 7 seconds have bleeded off of that because it hasn't been a contest fest it hasn't been people getting cleared out of the hard point now people finally getting solid holds and once Rocker finally get one an immediate answer there from Mutineers at field yeah, and they, they needed it, right? They, they needed that. I felt like Minnesota, their, their guns were starting to heat up. A couple of players going on, on a few sprees. But we'll see how will Florida attack this one. Havoc with nice shots onto a scene. It looks like they want to hit it from the east side of Cave. That's going to be three that go down. That's what I'm talking about. If one or two of those kills come in from Minnesota, that slows things down. But you see what happens. One player of the setup, they have to get off the hill. They have to, you know, try to catch a timing. They don't catch those timings. And now, guess what? Florida is here. Florida gets them off the hill. What is Florida doing so well that these entries seem so easy? It's not one kill. It's two, three, four that they get before Rocker gets on the board. I mean, they're just winning their one-on-ones. It's plain and simple. That's what it comes down to. And those one-on-ones are keeping them in the game. They're hanging on to this lead. Look at the bottom side of your mini-map. Yeah, you see a seam. Great job, OBS team. Able to catch this. Havoc versus a seam. The route man gets paid once again. Able to win that one-on-one. -on -one. And now it is Florida's turn to try to hold Cliff. Yeah, you saw that key rotation he had against Huntsman in a similar spot to close out the game. He's able to do it again there. Now, Rocker, last time through, the cliffside setup looked good. They got broken so quickly. What can Mutineers do? Can they get a solid setup? It's Havoc that's pushed up prone, tucked away in a corner. You have back outpost control as well. Silly and Alex 
trying to hit in through mid, but Frosty with the triple shuts down that entire push in through caves. Five go down for Rocker, and this is a wondrous hold yet again from you here. Well, what was the difference between the pushes, right? For Florida, they just went up cliff. They smoked it out, and they just flooded their way through. I think Minnesota, they try to three-hit the back. Frosty takes them all down, and it's almost a bit of a split push. And when you're splitting that way, you're staggering. You're slowing down. So that that's why this great holder comes through. Obviously, you have to have those big individual plays that Frosty was able to make. But now Florida just 27 seconds away from winning map one. It feels like Frosty by himself just earned them 30, 40 points. Like that, that yeah, triple he did. was well, so he did. Yes. That triple was so huge from Frosty. Who in a new title in Call of Duty, trying to continue to make a name for himself over these last couple of years. He is an absolute unreal talent. 27 points away now our Mutineers, 60 needed for Rocker. Into our third set of rotations now as the seam lights up the scoreboard. Yeah, seam's gonna find three. This is a good time for Rocker, but we know what Florida wants to do. They want to hang on to these spawns for Cave East. Frosty's gonna get taken down by Alex. That's gonna force number seven to back up. That skies with an M4. Alex just trying to stay alive. It wins another one. So guess what? Another player has to wrap back. So what Alex is doing right now, is this position great? Yes. But Florida, they have to worry about him. That opens up the time for Minnesota. So they could potentially tie this game up. And you still have Alex's position in the back. Alex found an M4, which will probably help him in his spot. Stunned up, but still up. Simtex hits him as well. He actually gets double aided, I think, by Skies and his teammate to pick him out from the back. It's chaos around the hard point. It's silly trying to snap two. He can to pick up two. Not quite able to finish the second. From POV to POV to POV is no one able to get the hard point quickly. Now it's Alex that is able to get in. There's a team kill through for Rocker as well. Five point lead for Rocker. They have the control, but the close spawn that's still there for Mutineers. Either team still able to win it on this point. Florida's got to go. They have to go. By the way, that was Scott Rice's 40th kill he was able to find. Here comes Ooh. the push from Florida. Assault and a seam are here. Assault's going to find his second. Trying to stay alive with the pistol. Not able to snap on the skies. The big deal, though, they keep them trapped back there. Florida cannot win off of this scrap time. Now we're going to have a rotation over the field. And all of Minnesota is set up as a seam with the headshot on the Pharaoh. Just nine more seconds needed for Minnesota. And you see as we look over this Here next hard point, it is Here all purple. Go. Here they go. This is everything. Tie game. Each team needs nine seconds. The hard point pops. Alex comes in position inside yellow to make the play. He's going to take down two and nearly a third. And there's the final point rocker. Clutch up between Cave East and Field to get the map one win. But what a thriller to start this home series final. Just a couple of huge individual plays. When we go back to the middle of Village, that first hill, it was Asim who opened things up with three, but then it was Alex. Alex's continued pressure on the cliff path forced Florida towards the back. That allows Minnesota to earn some time. Then they can get together. They're able to get control of the hill. They slay out. They trap Florida in the back. That makes that rotation of soccer field so easy. Florida was nowhere close. They were, what, 20, 25 points away from closing that one out. But we talk about how fundamentally sound Minnesota is. You saw another example at the end of that hard point. The biggest standout in the stats for me when you take a look at this, guys at home, is the fact that leading the way on a map like Cave, you have your two ARs going off on the side of Minnesota. On the other mm -hmm. side, your subs are leading the way. You've got Frosty and Havoc with 30 plus. Skies, Mox, you have 26 and 23 kills respectively. Assault and God RX, 42 and 32. Like they put up big games, massively positive. Plus nine for Assault, plus 13 for God RX. The Assault Rifles dictated the map, but that was a tale of two halves. Like the first half was so scrappy. Yeah. You kept pointing at the clock. No one able to really get a foothold. The clock barely moved in that second half as teams got more comfortable and got the setups they desire. But what a map one, man. Nine point difference between these two squads is both fighting to get their first well, win. And I think you asked me, right? You asked me, like, what is making this so scrappy? And I think if you talk about Havoc and, and Frosty's performance, that's the answer. Because they were winning so many opening duels, right? That's what made Minnesota's rotations basically not turn into anything. So the subs going off, that's what happens when they do. But as you said, you need your ARs to step up. Got Rex and Assault on the other side, shut them down.
Well, God Rx was a beast. He drops 42 in the map. The scuff play of the game. Guess what? It's God Rx. He has been lights out all year long, making a statement as one of the top players in the game from that flex position. He can do it with an MP5. He can do it with the M4. He's a special talent. Now, let's take a look at this scuff play of the game. And uh, yeah, it just comes in that first rotation. So he's able to make plays. You just talk about how good he is with any weapon in his hands. And I mean, I know we touch a lot on this guy, but it just feels like you have to. He just always puts up numbers. He's always in the right spot to make those plays, and he does it again. But again, you know, the stats are on everything in the sense of how many times did we see a seam with big multi kills? A seam was negative yep. 10. He was 22 and 32, barely any objective time. But in transition, when he needed some big ones, he had them. Like, you saw the triples, you saw the doubles, and sometimes those multi kills, especially with the close spawns, they're everything. That is what gives you a chance to get that big break, get that big hold, get the setup you like. Maybe not uh, the prettiest game from a stats perspective, but he had some big moments for sure. It has been a team effort for Minnesota, despite the fact that we are highlighting the two statistical studs from that map one. And I think the big thing when you look at Piccadilly, right? Both of these teams played it in the semifinal, but it was two different stories. And Florida was able to watch what Dallas was doing so well to shut Minnesota down. Florida was able to win a round 11 versus Chicago, and they threw some 2v4s away. So they had the advantage throughout that entire game. Where the other side, Minnesota, they just got smoked. So if you imagine Florida was watching this, maybe you can mimic some strats from Dallas and figure them out. I talked to Rep as a coach of Rocker, and they are comfortable anywhere. Search to destroy that God RX can make an impact with the sniper rifle, and this is a map that he is going to be able to do that. But as 30 seconds are off the clock, it's four versus four now. Half of the lovely shots are going to come, come off. The free aim comes in as well. Skies takes a fight on the other side. Copper is fired He's up, twisted, baby. bro. He is twisted. He knows it's home series final time. See, so got our X and Silly in a two versus three. Bomb not yet planted. And Florida, they're, they're going to have to push in the bookstore. They're going to find got our X. Silly able to take down Mox, though, with that car explosion. He's able to find another one, but does get taken down. In Florida, they find those early kills. They take position. They don't need to plant the bomb. The final kill from Havoc as he ends it. He had a nice pick earlier in the round as well. As they look to answer back and tie up this series 1-1. They can pull out the W, but it's a nice start there. At least through the first round. Now they'll get... Over to offense. Let's see what the Mutineer setup looks like. And again, because Florida was 0-0 zero and zero on this map prior to today, there was not a lot for Minnesota to prep for. You know, what are their go-to strategies? We're, we're not exactly well, sure, and neither are they. And I think that's huge. Like, what have we talked about a lot with this Rocker team? Yeah, Preparation prep. and coaching yeah. staff. And yes, you did not have much time to do that at all. That, that's a good point, Joe. Early on, though, it's Minnesota. We're going to find that first blood. Force a 3v5. Skies out towards this B site. Going to back away. But as soon as you give up that position, that's going to open up the B site. Got a Rex with that sniper. Not able to hit that shot. But here comes the push, and Skies, he follows up that sm smoke and has Frosty's help. I mean, it's big that he's able to get a kill. He looks like he was in such a tough spot and then beams the on to Alex from a 3v5 to a 3v3, but Assault gives the numbers to Rocker yet again. Right back to an even battle, though, with the nice shots from Frosty. Two versus two. 30 seconds to go. Silly finds the pick, and now Skies, who made this around, is now the last alive at a 1v2. 20 seconds to go. The pistol in hands. He's just looking probably out of ammo, trying to find any kind of gun that he can use. Bomb picked up by Rocker is they'll work the plant. He has three bullets. Yeah, that's the issue. How do you how do you play this? Oh, you just hear oh. the alarms going off after <laughs> he's just trying to like play his life yeah. and sneak around, yeah. but he's he's stealing. He is stealing from the bookstore, well, and they know yeah, it. He tried to steal the round as well, but yeah, I wish he had more ammo. I mean, maybe maybe he makes that play if he did. But he is the only reason Mutineers had a chance to win that. Just couldn't seal it with the secondary in hand. But that, again, it was a 3v5. Uh, in Minnesota, it, just, it felt like they were they were staggered in their pushes. They were not together. The trades weren't there. But 
They're able to seal the round. Oh, got... Silly, a big start, five and one from him. Bailed him out of the mid and late game. Havoc was out of the first blood. The insta snap and melt onto Silly. Lovely a bit of playmaking ability from Havoc there. As Frosty just finishes the weak player on the cross, and you see why these guys are in a final. It's just beams after beams. Now Goddard X with his chance in a 1v2, still with the sniper in hand. Tons of time to work with, but he's been spotted and tagged up. Gets out with his life. He's trying to stay alive. But we saw one of those middle pushes. Typically, those don't pay off, right? We always talk about how hard it is to win an offense on this map. But both teams finding some su success early on. Got our X now in a 1v2. As dead silence. It's about to run out, though. Can he reset it? Can he find a kill? I don't think so, but he's going to find Moss. This should be an easy shot. Able to line it up. Spot Pharaoh as well. Spot Pharaoh with a pistol. Oh. Can he finish it? No, not able to connect the shots. Oh, and now in the last round, Skies, you wish you had ammo for the 1v2. Here for Goddard X, you wish maybe you had him 4 for the 1v2. As the pistol simply not enough to take down Pharaoh. He hit the first shot. He got the first bit of damage in, but Pharaoh, ice in his veins, wins the one on one. Another round. The Mutineers. Yeah, I, I just think he missed a few. I think that was it. I mean, we've seen players be pretty nasty with that pistol, but I don't think a few of those connect and gets well, taken down. Almost clutches that round. Goddard X rarely has to use it because he hits all his time. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> Havoc now with a sniper. The Able to connect one onto a C. I think he just shot it through the smoke as well. We saw him lining up. Mox is going to take down Silly. That's why we usually talk about those middle pushes Smash. being so difficult. Woo! One player is just ready for it. Havoc continues. C finds his second of the round. Seven and two now. And we saw, I mean, it was Pharaoh that did it. What a Ramazo, where it's like, it's like round nine. No sniping going down. Then suddenly Pharaoh pulls it out and gets two kills. They haven't been relying on the sniper here. Havoc pulls it out and gets two kills. Mixing it up if you're the Mutineers. And so far, it's paying off. Got our ex in a tough spot again, and he will drop. Mutineers looking so good against Rocker on what I think many would say is Rocker's strongest SP, or at least one of them. Yeah, one of them. Absolutely. I mean, we, we've seen them time and time again on this map. What did you say? What, three and one, I believe they were? That's what you said. Yeah, I believe uh, you said one, that. Yeah. Three and one, yes. Havoc has well, probably, two first bloods yeah? now. Yeah, okay. See, I don't know if that accounts for their loss today against Dallas, but... Oh, that's true. It might not. It might not, yeah. Still, a stronger search and destroy map for them. Well, Havoc the Playmaker throws the smoke out, trying to make the play right through. It just does not care. He's going to spot a scene. Can't finish the kill. I think a few of those go through that wood post. And let me tell you, wood posts and are not your best friends sometimes. Well, instead of a third first blood for Havoc, it's a second on the board now for a seam as the entry players on both teams making the early impact. 5v3 for Rocker and a desperation round. They, they need a win massively here to make sure mutineers don't run away with this last time they were in this spot it was quickly a 3v3 because of skies he does he i don't think he knows that's a player he's trying to spot alex under the car he knows there could be someone in that position lots of steam that's when alex is gonna pop up skies is ready for it though he reads it so well read him like a book like right that. outside of the bookstore Trophy, trophy out to make sure he can't get finished as he's weak. Now Skies is going to get dropped. Mox, 1v3. Still a little time on the clock. He tries to soar out. Alex has his number. Rocker, get the round behind the 5v3 start. Yeah, nice little nice little play here out of a seam. You know, typically we, we see him with the MP5. On this map, he's rocking the M4. He finds the final three kills. But once again, it's just the number advantage. Just a little bit too much for Florida. That's the only way Rocker's been able to win rounds so far. They get the first two kills, and they close it out. I don't know if that's going to be a recipe for success throughout this map, too, but yeah, yeah, you'll take it. Seven and four now from Asim. Seven and four from Havoc on the other side. He's away for their squad, respectively. Rocker, an all-out hit to A. Mox and Pharaoh, the two here to deal with this. 
Alex goes up top, gets caught manfully. There's a team kill, but it's not going to matter because they also take out three Rocker members as well. Yeah, I thought Minnesota was going to get the bomb down because you saw when Havoc was throwing nades. The trophy was just gobbling them up, but I think one of the players dealt with it. That smoke, it evaporates in. That's what happens with this bomb site. It's just so open where the defense, they just rotate over. Assault going to go for the plant, but that's going to be a 2v4. Farrell probably going to catch a timing. He will. It's all up to God RX, and <laughs> he's going to have to hit a lot of snipes yeah, if he wants to make this one happen. I think it's the third round. Well, that's a wall. Last alive. Yeah. It's not a door. I'm not alive anymore. Pharaoh on the defuse. An easy retake for the mutineers, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, everybody just drops. You see Alex try to mantle up to the top window. Maybe get a pick. He gets there a second earlier. A second. And I think he might line up, too, as they're coming up the steps. But the timing is off. He gets caught mid-mantle. No, I, I mean, it was a nice switch-up strategy for Minnesota, right? It's what we want to see. They go for that hit. It almost pays off. I think, yeah, you talked about Alex. If he gets into that spot and if the bomb gets planted, that's two big things that if they go the Minnesota way, maybe they win that round. Yeah, maybe he's thinking I'm, I'm going to beat the one player there. We spotted, doesn't realize there's two. I'm not sure, but he falls. Pharaoh right up mid, and Pharaoh with the gunny. Silly. Out of this round. Havoc on the flank. A nice pick as well. That's not even through the flank. That's right through the front door. He's able to find Alex with the headshot. Hip fire takes him down. Another four versus two. I tell you what, Florida has just been flawless on offense. They really have. Again, how many times do we watch this and it feels Ooh. just like back and forth at previous events? Who's going to win the first offense? That's what we always talk about. Who's going to drop a D? So far throughout this game, Florida has won multiple offenses. It goes back to how they're breaking hard points. Just winning their early ones. <laughs> Even more impactful in a game mode like Search and Destroy. As they dominate the first bloods. One more round now for Mutineers. They're all square at one apiece in this final best of five in the Dallas Game Series final. Alex putting up a dud as of now. One in seven. Yeah, not having a great map, but I mean, Minnesota just overall isn't. Trying to work this B side, and here's the switch up. You do not see God Rex with that sniper rifle. Maybe just felt like he was out of the play. How did the team play on offense? 100%. Wants to get into it a little bit more. Uh, we've seen so many first plays in the action with that sniper on crosses. All of his kills have been like garbage kills or are close to it. Like they've come when he's in this like 1v3, 1v3, the situation that seems unwinnable. He hasn't really been an impact or a force on the map whatsoever. And I think that's props to me here. They've taken him out of the game. Guys, once again, playing that position, back pillars, puts a trophy on himself, Assault trying to stay alive, but guess what, it's Havoc. Havoc, Mr. Mid-Map, able to take him down. Now just waiting for his time to pounce. Frosty's going to spot that cross, and I like that. Just play the clock. Minnesota has to go. Mox able to find that. Silly does make this a 2v2. But he has to get the plant now, and this is just so difficult. It's looking like Florida is going to tie this one up one to one. Pharaoh knows he has no time. He runs away. Pharaoh just tucked away. No way he's going to find him. A flawless, well, not flawless, but a very, very good win very from mutant uh, yeah. Mutineers. And so, so good on the offensive side of things. And Havoc, the entry man, 11 and 5. First bloods all over the place throughout that map, too. That's a convincing victory. Uh, Alex couldn't get anything going for Rocker. He was 1-8. and eight. Got our X. Nothing, really, from a sniper standpoint. We saw him hit, what, two snipes, I think? One was in a position it didn't really matter when he was trying to clutch up in the 1v3. And maybe one in an early round situation, for the most part, their bread and butter. Got our X with the sniper and search and destroy. Didn't matter. Yeah, and I, I think maybe this is one of those things where the, the teams were prepared for minnesota right i mean we talked about a strong map today but dallas is able to beat them and in a pretty dominant fashion and now florida does the same thing so maybe this is just one of those maps that minnesota is gonna have to look at watch these two vod's and try to switch some things up
Yeah, and they, they tried to switch it up with him taking off of the sniper, but it, it seemed to be too late, right? It's already 2-5, two, 2-4 two, when that starts to happen. And when you, you're so used to doing what you do that works well, like you stick with what works, but at some point in that map, they had to make the decision to try something else, and it just seems like it was too little too late. But as it sits, home series final here for Dallas. It is 1-1 one, one, Florida, Minnesota. It's domination coming up after this quick break. Before we get into the map three domination, we're going to take a look at the U.S. Army tactical play. And Joe, it was Havoc making the play with a sniper. Yeah, I mean, this guy was sort of doing it all on this map, right? Just switching it up. This round, he brings out the snipe. Other rounds, he's running in map behind his smokes. Beautifully done from Havoc. We, we've known this is the type of player that he can be. And it feels like he's hitting it right now. How tough is that to deal with, uh, you know, as as the opposition when you just you have no idea what a particular player like Havoc's going to be doing? Yeah, I think it just makes it tough when he's in the form that he is right now, right? Like you just have to play patiently, try to shut him down, use your nades, use your tacticals. But yeah, it's one of those things like, how do you deal with a sniper that's not missing, right? Like, how do you? you, you there's nothing really you can do besides use your nades and force him to take those shots because you know, we saw it with like God or X, even after he is hitting the shots, if he's in a tough situation, they're able to handle it. So yeah, I mean, Havoc, he, we, we know he can kind of do it all. We saw it there. Yeah, yeah, you have to use your teamwork, use those nades. It's it's uh, it's tough to deal with them when he's shooting like that. All right. Well, I, another question for you, though, with, with regards to Pharaoh, right? Like we know Bristini mm -hmm. out, Pharaoh in. Uh, Pharaoh's been an MVP at an event. We know he's capable of, but like how important do you think he is right now to this team? What's he doing for them? Well, I, I think you heard it in the interview between Lottie and Mox. Like Mox just said, he's making this game fun to play. He's bringing a certain energy, a certain motivation to this team. And I just think that's because, like like we talked about, Pharaoh was on a pro team, was on one of the better pro teams, was winning championships. Then he had a bit of a rough patch. So for him to get back into this position, I think he's just motivated. Something, and I think something. he's bringing that motivation to the rest of his team. Well, I would think, and this isn't Nox Brissini at all, but they're coming from very different things. Like, Brissini's coming off a world championship, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Farrell could not be coming from a different situation. So, yeah, there's got to be a different kind of fire there, I would think. In terms of, like, I'm sure, like, effort, like, he's probably bringing, who, like, so much to scrims and to practice, like, just trying to get these guys on point. Well, Farrell's POV now. As he finds one outside a restaurant. Everyone dying for B-side control. It's a mess around the point, but it's Pharaoh still standing. Yeah, he goes for the knife! And Silly not able to hit the shots. Pharaoh couldn't hit the reload, so just goes up, gives him the butter knife. Able to give him the knife. Mox, Skies, Frosty, they're trying to flip it. They want control of Charlie, and they're able to get it. And now Minnesota, they have no flag right now. This guy's just protecting the middle of the street. He knows where they can spawn. Havoc inside a restaurant. He's just going to go up top. I think one player did spot him. That was a team from Minnesota trying to work his way towards the Florida base. But Havoc just getting naded out. Alex is able to deal with him. But a nice flip from Florida and just so many kills in a row. Just like we were sawing in that hard point. Yeah, they've had uh, their fair share of crazy maps here as well. That's not the same time, right? That this yeah. <laughs> with the, the one point win. Who's that against Optic, right? Optic, yep. Yeah. So, no strangers to this map. Uh, let me just pull up this map. Uh, what were they on map three? So, when you talk about domination on Petro, it's 2 1 for Minnesota. Florida, okay. 5 2. Oh, he plays a lot. A lot of repetitions. <laughs> a lot of reps. And. I mean, we talk a lot about domination, and you just sort of all have to be on point. What is the team's strategy? What are we going to do when we spawn here? And I think if you've played it seven times in official matches, you, you know kind of exactly how you want to play it. Minnesota couldn't get anything rolling on the map to search and destroy. They're getting throttled early in this domination. But the cops got to be on point. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listen in with your Minnesota Rocker. Yeah. Uh, he pushed in, he pushed in, he went back up to line, Pharaoh right now. Get wall, get wall. Get kit, yo, listen, get kit, get kit. Nice. I'm back to the I'm water. Water arch, water arch. Water arch, water arch on me. Line, line. Line really weak. Nice. Stop hazard, I'm back. Stop hazard, one deep water, one deep water, one deep water me. Nate, it has a fuck. Deep water, deep water, deep water. 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 De
Yo, make sure you stay alive, Water, got me, water, got me. He's sitting, uh, boot in, boot in. Water, boot in, water, boot in. I'm gonna go, eh? That's the water side. Top, top, Alex, top, Alex. I need water, I need water. Hey, it's okay. Alex, top, Alex, water, I water. No, uh, don't go. Go on top of the loop, one more top of the loop. Back up, he backed up. Is that top of the belt? I got him. Yeah, one one, 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 yeah, I think we might do a lot of here. Lion, one shot. Oh, yeah. Take a time. Chill, chill, chill. Make sure you hold A. Nice. Barrel's still in kitchen. What's up, kitchen? There's two bodies. I spawn a farm. They're hitting right. One is on your blue van. He pushed up. He pushed up a court. 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 He Frustration? Yeah! Yeah! Mutineers absolutely have them frustrated. Uh, also, Mox is four and two with four minutes of gameplay. Yeah, he's just defending C. Yeah, he's no, I know, I know, it's just a wild, it's a wild he's stat line, right? Out, he's just hanging out. Yeah, yeah, he's wondering you're frustrated. He's like, you guys are doing great. Assault. Hey, you guys hear me from back there? Yeah, he's a, he's a cheerleader right now, just cheering on the squad. But uh, yeah, assault three and nine. It seems four and eleven. So you have like your main AR and your main entry guy not really finding much success. Like they are getting hammered. Like this is one of those score lines where it feels like it might be over in the first half. That was well, sucks. I mean, it was that flip right away here. that that we watched when you know with the Pharaoh knife. Right after that, they get three, four dead, and they just go. They fly to see. They're able to flip them out. And then since that point, this has been the only time Minnesota has been able to work their way up mid map. They finally got some kills. It's five dead. But guess what, Clint? It's just way too late. And we're about to go to halftime, and this is a dominant. First round yeah. for the Florida Mutineers. Some days, or sometimes, Joe, uh, five dead with five seconds to go in a game could be a very big thing. Uh, they're not the game. <laughs> it's just, it, uh, you finally make the play when it doesn't even matter. Maybe it's a difference of a point or two, but that is a 90 to 59 half. They're up 31. Uh, that was just truly, truly spectacular from the Mutineers. They look so strong here, and it's their most played dom. Yeah, and I, I mean, how many times have you and I watched this match, right? Like, typically it is chaos, but it just felt like Florida, I mean, they didn't allow Minnesota to give up middle of the map. Like, they had them trapped that game for so long. They were able to get that neutral. Their BC hold was so strong, and guess who's spawning on the C side? It's Florida Mutineers once again. Three, yo, down for the Minnesota Rocker. God, our ex is trying to stay up after he finds a double, but... We talked about it yesterday. <laughs> we talked about it every day. Havi's playing with the knife, trying to find the second one. You think he's having some fun? Come on in to restaurant to the butcher of Petrograd. It's Havoc. <laughs> Just looking to turn a rocker into some type of meat. He keeps it going. A five spree off the get go. B now secured by Mox. A good opening yet again from Mutineers. And Pharaoh, it, we talked about coming into this 19 and 10. It, and I just love what they did off the start. Even after they get three dead, Havoc, he's just getting restaurant control. They don't they don't need the B flag. They still have the lead. It, they can let it be neutral. They just require map position. Then after that, Mox works his way up. They're able to find that kill. Minnesota, they do get the neutral. Can they find a cap? They can. And Assault. Finally starting to heat up, but guess who's protecting C? It's Mr. Mox. Is this the same thing we saw in the Dom yesterday, right? Where Mox kind of playing that main AR role and Sky's flying around with the MP5? Well, we'll, we'll have to check Sky's what, what he's rocking with uh, when we can. Pretty sure Frosty at least right the last now. time I saw him, he had yeah, MP5 so MP5. Hand. Yeah, so maybe this is just something they're doing on Dom, right? They just want Mox to protect one flag like he's doing with C. Florida, they're going to take A. Now they're trying to get the neutral at B. One positive from Rocker is they have one that get out to much more than it was, but now it's terrifying. Because now it's about to be a three cap, all five drop, and this is the perfect situation you want if you're Look at this here. trap. Look at the minimap. This is exactly what you want if you're learning to play this. You want a team spawning bottom like that and three cap control. They put the game away here. Every 
five seconds to go by just deeper buried underground go the rocker they're getting rocked joe in map three yeah this was just a beautiful petrograd by the florida mutineers i, I think pro teams should should watch this one just the way they played it the way they worked around the map and yeah that's why they have a 50 point lead in minnesota they were able to take us to a game five in our last home series final in Los Angeles. Can they do it again here in our Dallas home series final? We'll have to wait and find out. But what is map four? I know you know you sent me the first three games, but uh, I forget what it was off the top of my head. I believe it's Gunrunner. So we'll gun, gun Gunrunner. Gun uh, I think Gunrunner map four, I believe. Oh uh, yeah, so Gunrunner. So you're looking at Minnesota, who's one in three, but a few, three of those losses are to Atlanta and Chicago. In Paris, so three very solid teams, and Florida one and one, and the only team they've beaten is Gorillas, and lost once to Chicago. So, so not the most telling. You gotta feel good. Not the most telling. Yeah, not the most telling, but I think you gotta feel pretty good if you're a Mutineers fan. Well, Joe, we're gonna hang out for ninety seconds because this is done. Well, that's what I was asking you to just let's you know talk about Gun Runner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that is just that is done. I'll try to see it from our uh, our, our buddy our Tesla Tyler about the next map uh, anything additional maybe or some kind of hard point stats for the additional players just now it is just a matter of time before we get to that map for what textbook map it has been for mutineers it's not a crazy draw scenario which they get one point win it's not a crazy comeback it is domination from the get-go as frosty continues to push through he's going to go ahead and try to neutral a just add his oh, this entry. Is yeah, no, this is the best part, you know, when you're a pro player in a pro match, you can just sort of hang out, maybe stab pad a little bit, you know. To take a look, Farrow is 35 and 15. What? 35. Can we just hang out with Farrow's point of view? I want to see how twisted my man is. I I F3, feel, F3. I feel like, uh, I mean, the only person I can think about in this map, in this mode, that's had a dom like that is like Inboy. Like, he's had some crazy performances from that standpoint. On this map and mode. Pharaoh, though, putting up one of the better ones we've seen all year. 35 and 15. Pharaoh is twisted. I thought he was about to get that second win, too, against Connor X to it at the high ground. Yeah, I did, too. Moss is sitting at a cool 15 and 7. He had 22 in a ride. That was one of the easiest maps in the world, I think, for him. He was just hanging out. Pharaoh basically has more kills than, like, any two players of Rocker combined. Not quite. Just about like that is the impact he made from a slang standpoint 194 117 after rocker win map one it's back to back for the mutineers now one map away from their first win man who i, I mean I, they did in atlanta right so at this point it should be no surprise the level that this team can play on it. It just feels like it is a surprise, though, right? Just, I we didn't expect this whatsoever coming into this. You had what? You had Dallas. You had Minnesota. You had Chicago. Everyone thought it was to be one of those three teams, and it still could be Minnesota. Yeah. Just feels like the way Florida's playing right now with the way they're slaying. I, I just don't know if Minnesota's gonna be able to do well, it. You know me. I'm a I'm a big advocate of uh, talent over all else, and I know that's not always true and i know it's not everything yeah. but i've always been that way like i just want to see a stack squad whether it's in a, any esport any sport like put the talent together and just make that work and you have you have the talent with skies and now the way frosty is playing pharaoh's an unreal talent havoc's playing some of the best call of duty of his life and mox i mean if he's the one guy that can get comfortable on this team which we haven't seen much all year they are a force to be reckoned with. Like they are a stack, stack squad. And yes, it's not necessarily household names. Like when you think of, you know, top 10 players and top 10 talents, like I know it's not household names, but they are good, man. They are good, good players. And I hope this becomes more, more the norm and not the outlier. Yeah, I think that there was an interesting stat. I, I gotta read it. It was the like their, their records with Pharaoh. So with the Pharaoh proceeds, which they're seven and three in hard point, one in six in search and three and three in Dom. So their hard point's been their best game mode ever since this switch uh, and that's where we're going it's funny though because if you told me like what where i would expect Pharaoh to make an impact it'd probably be search but so well <laughs> and you, we saw they were able to win it right yeah, like yeah, they've yeah. won a few today uh and i just think search takes a little bit more time hard point is something they're scrimming all this and we always talk about that what's the first game mode teams you typically figure out is that hard point and they've done that oh. so 
We'll see if they close it. Yeah, and usually, I, I mean, if you are a good hardpoint team, which seven, seven and three is a very good hardpoint team, if you're winning at that rate, you're going to make some runs in tournaments. Like you're, you're going to. It's yeah. maps one and four. More often than not, you're going to see two. If you're playing lights out in that mode, you've got a chance in basically every single series. You can't say that about a strong dom team. You can't say that about a strong search team with it being the map five. But hardpoint, like a strong hardpoint team can and do just about anything and uh that's what they're doing right now and when the search is clicking as well like it has been today you got a chance to win joe well piccadilly search has been has been wrong we'll, yeah. we'll see if when we <laughs> get to the petro if that's wrong but minnesota has to get us there but they they felt the pressure before they they were just in a grand they were just in a final a home series final they were down to one that's when that epic hack the yard uh map happened so these guys know it's time to step up. They want to win so, so bad. We know that. How important do you think it is? And I know it's very different versus being on an actual main stage and the, you know, the quote unquote online main stage that we have right now due to the current issues going on around the world. But how, how important is it that they've been to a final? Uh, Florida have seen a final. I think it's important. right? I, I just think they're all battle tested. Um, I, I mean, but you would probably say that they've all been to a final before that as well they all know what it feels like i mean you talk about mox in, in havoc last year you know with genji what they get to two finals they weren't able to capture it they get to another one this year they weren't able to capture it so the same thing with minnesota you know skies and mox they want this so so bad they absolutely do yeah there's there's no lack of uh desperation or need for this win as we get right into Gunrunner, I've loved it today. This is what, this has been, I know, guys, I know there's been some bumps in the road Friday and Saturday. I know there were delays. I know we were struggling to get into things, working through, smooth. working through the new tech, working through some, uh, you know, in-game stuff, just get everything rolling smoothly. But today has been so smooth, and I hope you've been enjoying uh, the CDL Sunday broadcast, because this has been, this has been fun to cast. This has been two fantastic teams showing what they're made of. And now the only question for me, can Minnesota get us to the map five? Off we go. Yeah, okay, yeah, you look at a map like Gunrunner. I think this is when you look at the your your double A's, right? This is when you look at Alex and the team. Can they step up? Those submachine gun players. Can they slow down Havoc? Can they slow down Pharaoh? And, uh, off that start, <laughs> I don't know if they can. <laughs> not the best start uh, to my question. Not the best start, but Rocker really putting a lot of emphasis into these right side spawns for next. You still have Havoc sort of in a sneaky position to maybe make some kind of play, but he's going to be in a 1v2 as he pushes through. But right now, if you're being here, you have to get all this time. Rocker puts so much emphasis into getting the back. They wrap three players back and think to try and find Havoc that it was a lot of free time, at least for a moment there, for you here. So they put 18 up on the board before they are cleared out. Now with 20 seconds remaining, you think they're going to start to think about pushing through. And it's Route Man himself trying to hit the routes. Did he find yeah, his he timing? Found it. He, he found it. Yeah, through. he found the timing. I don't think it seems spotted him. He got it. They flipped the spawns again. Frosty spawns right there. He's able to do it again. Havoc. Havoc. He pops dead silence and able to sneak through the waters. And now Minnesota has to try to wrap back. And now they know as Frosty's able to find that kill. Pharaoh set up up top. Silly's the last member on this side of the map, and there is the break. If I made a list of 50 players coming into this weekend that I thought would make this sneaky play on rotation, the patience to set it up, I don't know if Havoc's on it <laughs> right now. He's he, by the bottom of the list. Yeah. <laughs> but he is doing it over and over again, the heads-up plays. And I don't know if it's just all on him or if it's a shot caller on the team that's pushing it through, but whatever it is, it's working great, unfortunately, well, though. That is uh, 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 for well, them. Just, yeah. They just get smoked off the point as Rocker get all five and they get in. So everything we just hyped up about the early rotation for Mutineers and the great play pretty much evaporated. Yeah, great play by Havoc, but a uh, better play by the entire team of Minnesota to just break right in. I, I guess the one good thing for Florida, you didn't start on that side, right? You still have a lead when we're we're rotating over to Minecart. So you, you'll take the small W, but we'll see how that imp impacts the game later on. As Mosh trying to get his team set up. Well, I mentioned just a little bit ago, I'm kind of curious if there's a shot caller that's kind of helping Havoc with these rotations or if he's leading the way and making these heads up plays. We already heard the comps from the Rocker side. Let's go to an Astro Gaming listening with the floor. Oh, 
Alright, keep going, keep talking, keep talking. Pinch, 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 pinch on. In hell, guys. Nice. Damn, him on top. Nice, I'm pushing up front. I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do. He could have got far, but I don't think he could have. Actually, the one's a new, one's a new. He just flashed me. I'm pushing out, I'm pushing out, I'm pushing out. No, I got it, I got it. Not boulder. He didn't go boulder. Still left, still left. Yeah, they're definitely on new. I'm dead. I got double, I got double, I got double, guys. One's on new, I think. There's going to be eight on this. Hold Aiden. One's old, 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 one's Top open, top right. Top 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 Watch it half ball. Half ball. Shoot, 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 I think all the calls I heard that were kind of telling the team what to do and what to focus on came from Havoc. At least I asked what I heard in that listening. So, uh, impressive stuff from Havoc in this final. As they're looking to put away Rocker, Rocker have to muster up something in these next couple of minutes. Mutineers looking to blow this game wide open. It's another knife kill for the Mutineers. They found two or three in the last map as well. Frosty continues. Keeps on cutting. He's just trying to make the play inside water, put the pressure on. But as you said, you see Minnesota, they're controlling this side of the map. And you have to feel like the next two hills just have to be big for them if they want to claw their way back into this one. They have to try to earn some time. They have to try to rotate towards the depot side. They're doing a good job right now. But can they do it for another two minutes? That's the big question. They get taken down off hill, but you see the spawns coming in. Keep him out, and they, and they continue to hold that right side. They still have the right side, but Mutineers are the ones racking up the time and every second. You gotta feel like a bit of a dagger just getting deeper into the heart of Rocker. Now they clear him out of the hard point. They'll stop them at 145 for now as we take a look at the overall stats. Silly, struggling a bit. This one, 11 to 19. We'll see if he can turn it around over the rest of the I mean, you're gonna, someone's going to be struggling, right, if you're down 90 points. Yeah, that was just the only but stat that kind of stood out, I guess, that you know, everyone else kind of around even. But this has to be the hold. I think Minnesota, they want to get back into this one. This has to be a 40, 50 point addition well, that inside time, Havoc, this depot. Havoc tried to sneak through again. That time he got picked up. Alex was able to cut him down. Inside the point will be Assault. Rocker looking to rally this back. They get all this time, and they're still down 50 or 60 points. But now comes the pinch but to it's the glass. Better. Yeah, no, yeah, it's, it's much better. better. Than, it's better, better than 100. Barrow through the Barrow. back. The rest of the team up through the front. Front. He'll get picked up. It's a four-man swarm through the front side of the point. Rockers seem to still be able to hold on to this gel. A bit of a contest for Mutineers for a moment, but there's the hold. Rocker get it done. Yeah, I guess a good thing for, like, Skies and Pharaoh, because they're able to find a few kills, you'll see the contest at least come in, right? So it doesn't allow Minnesota to work up those trains and get a lot of map position because those kills came in. But when it's all said and done... They should get up to about 105, 110 points. This guy's is still putting pressure on, and he actually may disrupt that a bit. So, solid job by Skies, but will that hurt them on rotation? Mox trying to stay up, but he's going to have a few Minnesota players to deal with, and one's pinching him. That's silly. Number five going all the way around. He's around that eight down flag right now. And I don't know if he's there. Okay, so he just gets taken down. All the kills go through for the Mutineers. Unfortunately, some friendly fire in that mix as well. Who's not waiting on the pinch? I think it's Frosty that's waiting to try and make the play. Try and collapse. He's just lurking around mid-map, trying to make sure they can't continue to reinforce that easily. And he's just, you know, 
know, let the air know that he can punch things. Now, so sometimes you're just mashing that melee button. There's the pinch. Right dude. Well. There's the pinch. He's able to go on that pinch, able to lock things down, and Minecart has been great so far for Florida. They've already, what, got 30 points. There's still 20 seconds yeah, left. And, and Frosty, I mean, he gets three kills throughout that sequence, but he stayed alive for, what, the first 30, 35 seconds of that point. And while he's yep. there mid-mapper towards Ventrum, they have to worry about him. They can't just focus on headbutting the hard point because they never know when he's going to pounce. He finds a good timing. He pounces, and now it's a 100-point lead for Florida. They are lights out, Joe. Yeah, it's just difficult when we talk about this map. Like, you talk about... I know a lot of our main focus is on Warehouse and Depot, Hills 2 and 5. But when you talk about you only need 47 points, that first hill center platform, and this one here at Crates, you can fight for the garbage time. You don't have to worry about rotations because you have that 100-point lead. So you see Florida, they're just going to put all their pressure on the hill right now. Like, why not force Minnesota to have to make a tough decision? Plus, they're slaying out the way they are. Just dominating, and it's Pharaoh again. It was 35 and 15 in the last map. Went off in the map one. A solid map here on plus five. He's got over a minute to go in the hard point as well. Objectively, Mox has been doing it. 90 seconds for him. Mox has been great in this series. I mean, we've been on him a little bit for his stats, maybe throughout the course of the weekend or the course of the year, but Mox has been great within this well, series. Yeah, I mean, what was one of the keys to victory? He had to play well on the, the, the SMG factor, maps, right? and the he is. Factor. Yeah, 23 and 16 with 90 seconds in the hill. Please on rotation with Havoc. They are set up. This could be the game, the match, the weekend right here. Florida Mutineers looking to get their first home series win on the year just 10 points away. The last time they were here, they fell short. They had to go through Chicago both times to get here, and this time they might seal the deal right as they go to do it. The contest comes in, but now the victory lap. Florida Mutineers, your Dallas home series victors. They get it done, and what a performance it was from Florida, Joe. Nobody saw this coming. Hell no. I mean, the addition of Pharaoh. You see these guys getting fired up. Skies is out of his chair. Pharaoh's They're losing just so it. So excited to capture that W. What a win. <laughs> and it. they just dominate that. The new guy, Pharaoh, played so, so well. Everybody, everybody had their moments. That is a convincing win. And now you just have to ask yourselves. Are they now the top four team in the world? I think you have to say they're in that mix I mean, of the top four. How do you four. say no? You have to. They how have do you say no? Yeah. They have a win. And for this team, how much better can they get? Like, do they have a chance to continually battle against the top dogs in this league as a special well, I, win, an impressive win? And you got to love to see it as a Florida fan. And I know we touch a lot on like Pristini and Pharaoh, the different play styles they are. But the fact is, is when you get a second and a first with two different teammates, the core of this roster. They know how they want to play. They know what they want to do. And I know we touch on it a lot with Minnesota, but they just stick to their game plan. It paid off this weekend. Yeah, I think on the other side of this, if you're Rocker, I mean, don't get down. Like This is that first step, right? This is your first final. You've been consistent. You keep improving. And you can look right over to Florida. They did it step by step as well. They fall short in their first final. The next yeah. one they get to, they're able to take. I think you can take a lot away from this weekend. If you're Rocker, you still look like a top team in the game. But here... Florida had your number, and uh, man, that was a that was a that was a great final. It it was like there were some close maps and some great moments, but it was a little bit more, maybe a little more lopsided than I expected it to be. When you take a look at maps three and four, like Florida yeah, just three and destroyed four. them. Like, I, and, and have we seen Rocker get smoked? Yes, in LA, Optic 3-0 stopped them. Mm -hmm. Like Rocker never played the game before, so this isn't the first time we've seen Rocker kind of just fall apart and get stomped on. But I didn't think it was going to happen in the final, Joe. I didn't. And I know a lot of the times when we touch about Minnesota, it's around map vetoes. And I think Florida, I, I'm going to give props to Atura, their coach, uh, the way they play these map vetoes, right? Because you bring in that Piccadilly, you, you just saw Minnesota lose it. You just won it, right? So that that's that's a good map for you today. Petro, obviously they are very comfortable on it, how many times they've played it. And then you force Minnesota on that gunrunner hard point and... Yeah, they're they're able to take care of business. So great vetoes out of out of Florida. Well, Joe, it's uh, it, it's been a pleasure, man. It's exciting to be back, Cassidy, again. We we'll had see you that, in a few we weeks, had that baby. Break. We've got so many uh, you know, more tournaments to come. But I just want to say to the fans and everybody, we're excited to be back. Like the CDL, the CDL's back. It's it's been a blast. But we still have our desk to break stuff down and kind of talk about the future of what's going to be going on with the CDL. But what a home series final it was.
We're happy to be back, man. We love this stuff. Call of Duty is the best. We'll be right back.